Section 38 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Kristen Hand. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 8. Cases Illustrating the Phenomena of Association in Hysteria. Part 3. Sixth case. Bertha Sch. This patient, 28 years of age, has suffered for the last three years from hysteroepileptic attacks. Her sister has suffered likewise for the last seven years. Before her marriage, patient had sexual connection for about a year with her present husband, a drunkard. When a neighbor in a dispute accused her of this, she got a brief aphonia. The words stuck in her mouth. She had her first attack when the marriage was definitely settled. She would rather not have married the drunkard, but dare not go back. During the attack, gestures of repugnance and abhorrence played an important role. The marriage was unhappy. The patient separated from her brutal husband and went back with her rather delicate and nervous child to her family. Her husband frequently annoyed her again. Owing to these causes, attacks took place from time to time. After hypnotic treatment, the woman remained for six months without any attack and was vigorous and able to work. After having been again waylaid by her husband, some isolated attacks took place after violent scenes. In the associations, we find at least 35% that certainly belong to the hysterogenic complex, husband, unhappy marriage and its consequences, poverty, hard work, worry about the child, the patient is one of those persons who react, on the average, pretty quickly, and not in sentence form. With them, the accent is on the more or less abrupt, long prolongations of the reaction time and on the faults. In the latter, the stimulus word strikes the complex and no verbal reaction follows at all. In this case, as in many cases of hysteria, the patient is quite unable to say why she cannot answer whilst in hypnosis she gives a correct answer. In many normals, no verbal reaction is produced in quite analogous places. We register a fault, and finally we can, in the waking state, get information as to the correct grounds of the fault. There are faults of different intensity. In both cases, we have a fault due to the complex. The mechanism of its occurrence, whether conscious or unconscious, is the same, only the degree of dissociation of the complex is much stronger in the first case. The complex is removed from consciousness. Examples. Journey. Fault. Cannot give the reason for the fault. In hypnosis, honeymoon journey. Proud. Fault. Subsequently, bag. In hypnosis, purse proud, thinking of her brother's wife with whom she is now living. Strange. Fault. No reason found in waking state. In hypnosis, after the separation, I wanted at first to go to some strangers, not to my brother's wife, but I finally did so. She complains, however, that she has to eat humble pie there. Mix, fault, cannot state the reason. In hypnosis, sexual connection with her husband. The stimulus word mix is often taken in this sense. Cross-reference the stimulus word mix and blood in case four, Mrs. M. C. Forget, fault, in hypnosis, misery, my husband. Her husband worries her all the time. Gleich, similar, fault, laughs. She cannot explain why nothing occurs to her, that she cannot say anything. In hypnosis, with a great deal of resistance, she thought of a part of the body. The dialect word gleich is a slang word for limb or penis. Her husband is again persecuting her, wishing to renew sexual life. Stalk, fault. In the waking state, patient cannot give the meaning of the fault. In hypnosis, she states that her husband is a withered stalk. Is that the final explanation? We have seen that in many cases, stalk arouses the presentation of penis and causes a long reaction time. Our case is to some extent an answer to the question how far complex reactions influence the succeeding indifferent associations. Cross-reference, Chapter 4. The series. Disteem, esteem, 1.6 seconds. Tooth, 
mouth, 3.6 seconds. Just, unjust, 7.2 seconds. Folk, right, 19.6 seconds. Stink, smell, 1.4 seconds. Shows a gradual increase of the reaction times up to folk, right. The next reaction is short and seems to be independent of the previous ones. It could not be definitely proved whether the first ones are independent of one another. In just, unjust, 7.2 seconds, folk, right, 19.6 seconds, that is certainly not so. The first influences the second. We have a kind of perseveration. In just, unjust, 7.2 seconds, we get the explanation in hypnosis. Latterly, her husband is again pursuing her. That is unjust. Folk, volk, right, wrecked, is a form of perseveration to unjust. Perhaps there is a slang association to volkrecht, the title of a newspaper which circulates among the patient's friends and neighbors. Hypnosis shows she was thinking about her husband. We find, moreover, in the associations the following. Unjust treatment, 7 seconds. Frog, toad, 9 seconds. Both associations refer to her husband. The first, obviously, as was confirmed in hypnosis. To the second, the hypnotized patient said frog gave her a feeling of nausea, immediately adding, so does my husband. We find a similar after effect in the reactions. White, black, 3.6 seconds. Ring, finger, 6.8 6.8 seconds. Her husband's name is Black, hence the delayed time. To ring, the immediate association was wedding ring. A few other typical complex reactions require notice. There is a complex child, which means an increase of the attacks. The patient complains that she can no longer sleep or rest. Since her separation, she must keep herself and look after her restless child. Angel, child, 5 seconds. Quiet, Noise, 2.4 seconds, refers to the child. Sleep, get up, 3.4 seconds, refers to the child. Tired, courage, 3.2 seconds, refers to the child. Modest, child, 8.8 seconds. Wake, child, no delay. Bed, sleep, 1.4 seconds. The reaction sleep is frequently repeated. She generally uses such repetitions when there is a complex, in this case about the child. Separate, come, 1.6 seconds. Meet, come, 1 second. Certain, come, 9.2 seconds. A repetition of the reaction referring to the last invitations and plotting of her husband. To a reaction, wild, hunter, 12.2 seconds, the patient explains that her brother is a hunter. Then, I thought of myself. I'm often wild with rage. My husband often came home wild. Seventh case. Julius SCHW, a clerk, 23 years. Many tests were tried with this patient. On 23rd, 1st, 7th, 11th, 14th. 11 without time measurements. On 15th with time measurements. 690 associations altogether. The patient had perpetrated 11 arsons within six weeks in a hysterical twilight state with amnesia and under the influence of drink. We will limit ourselves to repeating peculiar manifestations of perseverations which were strongly marked in this case. From the first test, light, fire, star, red, thought of fire, strike, a match. This short series shows a peculiar form of perseveration of the content in three successive reactions. In the reaction, strike a match, it comes out very clearly. That this phenomenon of perseveration began at the stimulus word light explains itself. In the second test, we meet this phenomenon more and more. Stimulus words set up far-reaching series of presentations, the stimulus word being forgotten. We find a beginning in the following places. Head, red, ink, black, needle, pointed, bread, bath, what was the stimulus word? Ink, a little later. Mountain, book, hair, beard, stimulus word, 
Pat Bear. Salt, water, stimulus word, old. Or was it old salt? Dream, foam, copybook, skittle. Stimulus word? Patient, dazed and laughing, says, here's copybook. Laughing more and more, obviously in hallucination. After a while, he points with astonishment to the examiner and says, I thought I saw someone else. I have played Skittles somewhere in W, surely. The patient suddenly thinks the examiner has given another stimulus word. This dream state was certainly set up by the stimulus word dream. The patient is frequently concerned with a dream of playing Skittles in W. What is connected with this could not, unfortunately, be found out. The ten reactions that followed had nothing noteworthy. The patient seemed clear-headed. Then the following series came. The vertical lines denote the length of the perseveration. Frog, dog. Flower, good. Perseveration starts. Patient gets a staring look, gradually increasing but still reacts regularly. Cherry, sun, long reaction time. Asylum, star. Warder, flower, long reaction time. Perseveration ends. Piano, music, beats with the hand upon the table as if lost in thought. Perseveration starts. Fern, mignon. Stove, mirror. Walk, orange. Cook, lemon. The head sinking more and more upon the table. Water, Mozart, long reaction time. Dance, Feline, long reaction time. Cat, Laertes, long reaction time. Dozen, no answer. What word did I say? Italian, and perseveration. Dark, light, patient awakes. Heart, hand. Bird, air, begin perseveration. Swim, fly, perseveration ends, white, blue, etc. It then occurs to the patient himself that he is always falling asleep. He often dreams in the same way, calling up melodies. In the second test, similar phenomena occur. Wonderful, beautiful, perseveration starts. Child, blue, dark red, fire, sweet, cry, ride, jump, perseveration ends. Shortly after, crown, trumpeter, you, room, does not know stimulus word or reaction immediately afterwards, greenish, red, against, again, raw, brilliance, perseveration starts, smell, fortune, bright, count, sweet, duke, Love, veranda, prison, carpet, separate, Wahlberg, Walperg, ill, orchestra, perseveration ends. We see that states arise set up by certain stimulus words. When the stimulus words are not followed by any reaction, that makes sense, but serve as sparks for a reaction. The reactions that follow correspond to a circle of ideas aroused by the first stimulus word, remaining active for some time. Careful examination of the patient at such moments shows him to be in temporary twilight states, which are produced by the particular stimulus word. A definite circle of ideas is aroused. The patient forms it while subject to complete hallucination, ignores the sense presentations, is untroubled about his surroundings, and lives in a quite other milieu. Passion for fire, skittles, a bit out of mignon at the play. On the particular day when the above tests were given, the patient was much inclined toward twilight states, but in the other tests, much the same thing occurred. The tendency to twilight states was very common and was so far under control that it was usually determined by some effect. A visit from his parents, moving books, and especially sentimental love scenes in performances given at the asylum and lyrical music. In the series of perseverations, there is some strong emotional situation. Emotions are often the cause of perseveration in association experiments, where it is not a distraction of attention. 
attention is concentrated for some time upon the critical presentation, hence the subsequent reactions come up shorn of attention. Then the phenomenon of distraction occurs. In well-pronounced cases, this expresses itself by no reaction occurring to the stimulus words, but only to the content of the previous critical reaction. It is in this wise that we are to understand the occurrence of the perseverating series. The situation aroused by the critical stimulus word is so emotionally powerful that it completely chains the interest, so that the patient quite loses consciousness of his surroundings. He passes into a twilight state, Pick's dreamy state. These examples are of theoretical interest because they show how the common complex perseverations are only separated by degree from the hysterical twilight state. Eighth case, Betty S.L. This patient, 19 years old, was an illegitimate child brought up by a foster mother. Her own mother later married somebody else. At the age of 14, Betty returned to her mother, but was soon badly treated. She was driven, after all kinds of dissensions, to take a place as servant in the same town. After taking the situation, she once unexpectedly met her mother, who looked at her with hatred and scorn. The patient staggered home and had her first hysterical attack. The content of the attack corresponded to this origin. The patient had a hallucination, her mother's face with its expression of hate and scorn. The last attacks occurred when the patient got news from home. The associations were taken in French. There are markedly long reaction times. Recalcitrant, aimable, 8 seconds. Malade, convalescent, 7.8 seconds, refers to herself. Menace, caresse, 6 seconds. Méprisé, agréé, 6 seconds. Peculiarly remarkable in this case is the frequent distraction from the surroundings which we have already met with in a more rudimentary form in the associations of normal persons. It is a complex indicator. The correct reaction is blocked. As a cover reaction, some external perception is taken, some object in the room, or something similar. We find the same phenomenon in the associations during states of emotional paralysis, examination paralysis, showing manifestations similar to affective complexes. In this state, faults, repetition of the stimulus word, etc., occur also. In the case under consideration, there are peculiar relationships between the emotional stupidity which expressed itself at the beginning of the experiment, chiefly in her distraction to her surroundings, and the complex to which the associations with the delayed reaction times belong. Tet, Rue, looking through the window. Vert, lamp, in the room. O, fu, two seconds. Pique, on crie, 1.2 seconds, in room. Ange, fenate, 1.4 seconds, in room. Long, lunate, 1.2 seconds, on the table. Bateau, arbre, 2.2 seconds through windows. Labure, fouille, 3 seconds, looking at a tree. Len, Pierre, 3.4 seconds, outside. Amiable, méchant, 1.8 seconds, gives place to laughter. This is an instance of appropriate emotion to which attention was called in case one. Tabla, Couillère, 3.4 seconds. Is the delayed reaction time an aftermath of the previous complex reaction? Porte, tableau, 1.4 seconds, in room. Etat, volé, 2.2 seconds, through window. Recalcitrant, amiable, 8 seconds. Danser, bois, 3.2 seconds. Tige, loop, two seconds. Patient can give no explanation at all of these meaningless reactions. Lach, Riviere, 1.2 seconds. Malade, convalescent, 7.8 seconds, reference to her condition. Augury, 
Simplicité, 1.6 seconds. Cuir, brûlé, 4.8 seconds. Anca, plume, 1.6 seconds. Méchant, sage, 2.4 seconds. Aigri, fil, 2.6 seconds. Nagi, noyi, 2 seconds. Voyage, repose, 7.2 seconds. Journey from her home in Switzerland away from her mother. Menace, caresse, 6.9 seconds. Complex. Lampe, chapeau, 2.2 seconds. Chapeau de lampe. Riche, pauvre, 0.8 seconds. Abri, branché, 4.8 seconds. Chante, pleure, 1.6 seconds, etc. The distraction to the surroundings, the corresponding reactions are in italics, as shown at the beginning, is an expression of the slight emotional stupidity present in this reserved, somewhat frightened girl. We see that these reactions, with the exception of the superficial reaction, o, f, are only interrupted when complex reactions occur and that they quite disappear after the second complex reaction, recalcitrant amiable, eight seconds. In the fifth case, Verena D., it was a complex which set up the continuous reaction in sentence form. Here, the complex breaks down the reactions due to emotional stupidity. We found a similar phenomenon, the liberation, by a definite word, of an almost unbroken series of complex reactions in the associations of normal persons. Subject number seven, educated men. Emotional stupidity is also seen in the associations of many imbeciles and epileptics. In some cases of hysteria, it persists during nearly the entire experiment. These often present a picture similar to certain pictures obtained from persons in a twilight state. In later experiments carried out with the same person, it may quite disappear. Summary In the forefront of the hysterical type of reaction, we find more or less independent and active presentation complexes with much effect, whose expansion seems to be much more powerful than among normals. The reactions are frequently interrupted by complex disturbances. Together with the usual complex indicators, we occasionally find some with amnestic manifestations and phenomena of consciousness. The critical stimulus word is often forgotten, and in its place, the previous one is named. The cause of the fault is unknown to the subject, the distraction to the surroundings, and the misunderstanding of the stimulus word are other complex indicators. A further large group of complex indicators is formed by reactions which do not denote the complex by the stimulus word, but are only associated in the remotest way with the word denoting the complex. This arises in one of two ways. Either the complex excited by the stimulus word is repressed and the reaction is superficially associated with the complex, being so apprehended as not to betray the complex, but to call up instead a seemingly indifferent reaction. Take as examples the cover reactions in cases 4 and 5, Mrs. M.C. and Verena D. Mrs. Verena D. reacts, faithful, servants should be faithful. Behind this innocent sentence lies the fear about her husband's infidelity. The replacement of the complex presentation by a seemingly innocent reaction is a symptom of repression. I interpreted similarly the conversion symptoms of Lena H. The physical conversion symptom is associated to the complex, but is not noticeable to the observer and to the consciousness of the patient, thus guaranteeing the dissociation between the complex and the conscious or the action of the complex is so powerful that its influence reaches out to a distant series of presentations, determining them likewise. Cross-reference a number of the reactions in sentence form in cases 4 and 5. Among the complex indicators, distraction to the surroundings and the non-understanding of the complex excitant stimulus words play a certain role. I have added numerous instances. The stimulus word may be assimilated to the complex. The stimulus word is apprehended as best suits the complex or as best conceals it. 
Distraction to surroundings often appears when it is a question of an affect determined distraction in order to avoid the critical stimulus word. I once had the following experience. A boy of 12 injured his knee one Sunday from a fall. Numerous stitches were required to close the wound. The anesthesia was very light, so that the boy still reacted at each stitch, although faintly and with amnesia after the operation. In this light narcosis, he carried on a conversation, the whole meaning of which was to distract himself from the operation, to repress all thoughts about it. It partly recalled Ganser's answers, partly wish-fulfillment dreams, which have likewise their roots in repression and distraction from a disagreeable complex. He said spontaneously and loudly, Today's Monday. Then come along, Tony. We're leaving off and going for a game. Then, as if in scorn of the intense pain of the operation, he told a friend what Christmas presents he had got, and so on. Not infrequently, we find this occurring. Young quotes the case of a woman who during an operation fell into a twilight state where in hallucination she was walking among flowery fields. The observations in Gonser's twilight states speak partly in favor of these answers and the formation of wish-fulfillment deliria as semi-complex phenomena of a related nature. Partly, however, the observations speak in favor of an unconscious stimulation. The complex can alter the apprehension, remove the stimulus or stimulus word, produce hallucinations favoring the repression or wish fulfillment, so that the contrary of that which is the content of the repressed presentation complex occurs. So far as my observations permit a conclusion, my view already expressed several times in this work has been confirmed, that the complex with its activities is the all-important matter in hysterical psychology, and that all hysterical symptoms can be derived therefrom. End of section 38. Section 39 of Studies in Word Association this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Steve Hazard. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 9. Association, Dream, and Hysterical Symptoms by Dr. C. G. Jung. Part 1. The Associations. The object of this investigation is to support and elucidate the views expressed in chapters 7 and 8 about the nature of the anomalies of association in hysteria. The following is the case. A young woman, aged 24, intelligent and of average education, physically healthy, her mother suffers from osteomalacia, which has entirely crippled her. Otherwise, there is no demonstrable taint. The patient is the youngest child, the only daughter, and has four elder brothers. She was well until school began, was very sensitive at school, but made good progress. In her second year, tremors of the right arm set in, which soon made writing impossible. The tremors became generalized, till finally a hysterical chorea occurred. The patient became the starting point of a small school epidemic of St. Vitus's dance. The chorea expressed itself in tick-like attacks, which sometimes lasted one to two minutes. In these attacks, the patient hid out around her and stamped, occasionally giving vent to a shriek. Consciousness was not disturbed during the attacks. The attacks occurred 15 to 20 times a day. Menstruation began at the age of 15. With the occurrence of the first period, the choreiform attacks ceased as by magic. The patient had two years before consulted a specialist who said that the attacks would leave off with the periods. But in the same week, the patient experienced one day, towards evening, a dull feeling in her head. The feeling gradually took on the character of heat, which became far worse during the periods. The pain increased as the years went on. 
From about ten o'clock in the morning, these hot feelings increased regularly and gradually until they became, quote, insupportable, unquote. For the last three years, the pain had been so bad that she was completely prostrated by these hot feelings in the head, lasting nearly all day long. Innumerable treatments with all kinds of methods had been unavailingly tried. Sometimes the patient could assist a little with the housework in the morning. From ten o'clock onwards, she went about doing nothing, continually complaining about her head. She became gradually misanthropic and withdrew altogether from society. During the summer on hot days, she remained in the cellar. During the winter, she would not be in any heated room. She consulted me in the summer of 1905 when she was getting rapidly worse. She felt she was going out of her mind and had hallucinations of white and black figures. She begged to be admitted to the local asylum. In the autumn of 1905, she was admitted. Condition. Well-nourished, slender person. Her appearance of suffering seemed to be directed towards obtaining pity. Entire absence of energy in her behavior. This is indicated by her extremely fine, frail handwriting. Constant complaints about feelings of heat in her head. The tone of the complaint is pronouncedly elegiacal. She describes her feelings in the following way, quote, The whole head is stopped from the neck up and quite hot. I have at least 40 degrees of fever in my head. It is quite tense, choking. My neck is strangled, hot, dry, withered up. The feeling of dry heat and warmth is most terrible at the back of my neck, the top part. It's always worse after eating. My body is quite cold and my hands blue-black. My feet are like ice. My idea is that if I could but once have a great bleeding of my nose, I would be much better. I am always imagining that I am bleeding from the nose and mouth, a basin full. I am always imagining big clots of fresh blood. I am always dreaming of blood. I often dream that I am wading in blood, that the room is full of blood, or that blood is spurting out of my nose, mouth, eyes, and ears. I likewise often dream of fire. Everything is then in flames. Unquote. On going to sleep, she often has the vision of a black man stretching out his black hand towards her and seizing her arm. Occasionally, she also sees indistinct white figures of women. Her periods have stopped since February 1905. She is very constipated. Meteorism, noticeably distending the lower part of the abdomen, has been present for several months. She has great resistance to sitting down, generally stands up or walks up and down the room. Great repugnance to meet avoids everything which makes heat. If she but hears the steam ascending in the heater, her bad condition increases. She indulges in cold ablutions every day and does gymnastics in her room, attaching great importance to these activities. This is in strange contrast with her repugnance to and fear of any continuous work, which she believes is very injurious to her. She has a morbid love of order and cleanliness. She states that formerly she had for a time an obsession to touch things, which showed itself in an impulse whilst walking about the room to touch any objects. She had no insight into the mental nature of her pain, but is firmly convinced that there is an organic change in her head. But she laughs involuntarily, when telling us that one of her doctors took it to be a case of Bastow's disease. Naturally, she has no more idea what was the cause of her illness than have the doctors who have hitherto treated her. There can be no question but that this is a case of hysteria. The extraordinary chronic nature of the case and the absence of any change in the chief symptoms, rather unusual in hysteria, 
speak in favor of a profound paralysis of energy and complete subjugation of the personality to the disease complex. She has been ill 17 years. In considering the peculiarity of the symptoms, it must be remembered that the, quote, St. Vitus's dance, unquote, Korea form tick, developed by continuity into the present condition. We cannot accept the view that the, quote, St. Vitus's dance, unquote, was healed. On the contrary, everything is in favor of the view that the effect of the first menstrual period was simply to change it suddenly into another form of the fundamental disease. Her completely childlike and asthenic personality show all the signs of the infantile mage Feindel type of Tecure. To make the description of the case quite clear, I will first describe the association experiments which were carried out with the patient, who is under treatment in the asylum from October 1, 1905 till December 21, 1905. The experiments were spread over this period. The treatment had a certain measure of success, which was not without an important influence on the experiment. The tests were at times carried out in a room only moderately warm, 13 degrees, for the patient could not permanently bear more than 11 degrees of heat. The Association Tests First Series July 23rd 10 a.m. with the reproduction test. Stimulus word one, head, time in fifths of a second, six, reaction, ache, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word two, green, time, 33, reaction, stone, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word three, water, time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word four, prick. Time, nine. Reaction, B. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word five, angel. Time, 105. Reaction, hotel. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word six, long. Time, 65. Reaction, knife. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 7, ship. Time, 35. Reaction, steamship. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 8, plow. Time, 21. Reaction, field. Reproduction, garden. Stimulus word nine, wall, time, 75, reaction, knit, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 10, friendly, time, 11, reaction, ness, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 11, table, time, 30, reaction, cloth, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 12, ask, time, blank, reaction, blank, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 13, state, time, blank, reaction, blank, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 14, stubborn, time, 40, reaction, person, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 15, stalk, time, 11, reaction, of flower, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 16, dance, time, 10, reaction, dancing floor, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 17, lake, time, 29, reaction, of Zurich. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 18, ill. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 19, 
proud, time, 19, reaction, haughty, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 20, to cook, time, 13, reaction, cookery school, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 21, ink, time, 9, reaction, ink bottle, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 22, wicked, time, nine, reaction, wickedness, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 23, needle, time, 10, reaction, pincushion, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 24, swim, time, 45. Reaction, swimming school. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 25, travel. Time, 60. Reaction, traveling rug. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 26, blue. Time, 35. Reaction, blue street. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 27, bread, time, 20, reaction, breadless, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 28, threaten, time, 60, reaction, punishment, reproduction, punish. Stimulus word 29, lamp, time, 11, reaction, lampshade. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 30, rich. Time, 21. Reaction, riches. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 31, tree. Time, 23. Reaction, fruit tree. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 32, sing. Time, 16. Reaction, choral society. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 33, pity. Time, 35. Reaction, to regret. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 34, yellow. Time, 25. Reaction, yolk of egg. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 35, mountain, time, 23, reaction, Utley mountain, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 36, play, time, 16, reaction, chess, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 37, salt, time, 12, reaction, salt cellar. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 38, new. Time in fifths of a second, 15. Reaction, Newbury. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 39, custom. Time, 46. Reaction, propriety. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 40, ride. Time, 18. Reaction, writing school. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 41. Wall. Time, 12. Reaction, Spanish wall. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 42. Stupid. Time, 45. Reaction, stupidity. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 43, exercise book, time, 15, reaction, school exercise book, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 44, despise, time, blank, reaction, blank, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 45, tooth, time, 15, reaction, eye tooth. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 46, 
Correct. Time, 25. Reaction, to arrange. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 47. People. Time, 23. Reaction, people's paper. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 48. Smell. Time, 50. Reaction, sink. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 49, book, time, 15, reaction, reading book, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 50, unjust, time, blank, reaction, blank, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 51, frog, time, 25, reaction, tree frog. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 52, separate. Time, 32. Reaction, divorce. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 53, hunger. Time, 19. Reaction, eat. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 54, white. Time, 18. Reaction, Snow. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 55. Cattle. Time. 32. Reaction. Herd of cattle. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 56. To take care. Time. 30. Reaction. Esteem. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 57. Pencil. Time. 31. Reaction, pencil holder. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 58, cloudy. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 59, plum. Time, 66. Reaction, plum jam. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 60, Meet. Time. Blank. Reaction. Blank. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 61. Law. Time. Blank. Reaction. Blank. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 62. Love. Time. 15. Reaction. Loveless. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 63, glass. Time, 8. Reaction, tumbler. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 64, to quarrel. Time, 23. Reaction, dispute. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 65, goat. Time, 12. Reaction, Goat's milk. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 66. Big. Time. 15. Reaction. Generous. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 67. Potato. Time. 20. Reaction. Potato meal. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 68. Paint. Time, 21. Reaction, oil paintings. Reproduction, zero. Stimulus word, 69. Part. Time, 26. Reaction, part payment. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 70. Old. Time, 49. Reaction, old town. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 71. Flower. Time. 51. Reaction. Nosegay. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 72. Strike. Time. 30. Reaction. Stroke with hammer. Reproduction. Blank. Stimulus word 73. Basket. Time. 21. Reaction, 
clothes basket. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 74, wild. Time, 21. Response, wild duck. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 75, family. Time, 26. Reaction, family party. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 76, wash. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 77, cow. Time, 10. Reaction, cow's milk. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 78, foreign. Time, 30. Reaction, foreign book. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 79, happiness. Time, 53. Reaction, congratulations. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 80, to narrate. Time, 15. Reaction, stories. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 81, deportment. Time, 55. Reaction, lesson in deportment. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 82, narrow. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 83, brother. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 84, malice. Time, 10. Reaction, malicious joy. Schadenfreude. Stimulus word 85, stork. Time, 26. Reaction, stork's nest. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 86, false. Time, 37. Reaction, falsity. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 87, dread. Time, 20. Reaction, feeling of dread. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 88, kiss. Time, 65. Reaction, sisterly kiss. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 89, fire. Time, 28. Reaction, huge fire. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 90, dirty. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 91, doors. Time, 21. Reaction, lock of door. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 92, choice. Time, 55. Reaction, choice of comradeship. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 93, hay. Time, 19. Reaction, hay wagon. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 94, still. Time, 39. Reaction, peace. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 95, ridicule. Time, 10. Reaction, ridiculous price. Ridiculously cheap. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 96, sleep. Time, 17. Reaction, sleeplessness. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 97, month. Time, 15. Reaction, monthly meeting. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 98, colored. Time, blank. Reaction, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 99, dog. Time, 15. Reaction, dog faithful. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 100, speak. Time, 67. Reaction, consultation. Reproduction, blank.
This test was made at the consultation. Let us first of all consider the associations from the statistical point of view. I content myself with the classification into inner and outer associations, clang associations, faults, and indirect associations. See Chapter 2. This summary classification suffices for our purpose. These are inner associations, 16%, outer associations, 60%, clang reactions, 9%, faults, 14%, indirect associations, 1%, reproduction anomalies, 14%. The outer associations are the most numerous, predominating in a most unusual degree. The patient is not without intelligence, but she has not been highly educated. She only went through the elementary schools, and this with many intermissions. A glance at the reactions shows that the outer associations consist chiefly of verbal motor connections, of word combinations. Side by side, we find a good many word completions, clang reactions. The number of faults is striking. Compare the figures with these. Average figures of educated women, see page 146. Inner associations, 35%. Outer associations, 58%. Clang reactions, 3.3%. Faults, 1.4%. And we see that the figures for this patient show a much more superficial mode of association. They approach the figures of the distraction test. Average of the distraction test with 100 metronome beats per minute. Educated women excluding the predicate type. Inner associations, 20.8%. Outer associations, 62.8%. Clang reactions, 13.2%. Faults, 0.4%. One might believe that there had been distraction of attention during the test. The question then arises to what the distraction must be referred or what factor this disturbing influence had upon the attention. There were no external causes, so that we are led to consider some psychological disturbance. We need not seek very far for the patient is entirely occupied with one thought which extinguishes every kind of interest in her surroundings. She is absorbed entirely in the presentation complex of her illness. Her whole attention is focused on the symptoms of her illness so that only a small remainder is left at the disposition of the association test, hence the superficial reaction type. Her illness makes so great a claim upon her that she scarcely allows the meaning of the stimulus word to reach her. As a general rule, she contents herself simply with apprehending the outer form of the words, and her intellectual work is limited to finding some ready-made connection to the stimulus word. Hence she only listens with half an ear, and allows the stimulus words almost to slip off of themselves. She cannot rouse herself to direct her attention to the experiment. Obviously, this is far too unimportant to her compared with her disease complex. Her slight degree of self-control sinks from time to time to zero fault. Not infrequently, just where some ready-made verbal connection is not at hand. This also occurs frequently when the stimulus word has aroused emotionally toned connotations, as we shall see later. As soon as she noticed that the reaction was not immediately at hand, she abstained entirely from enforcing one. We have here an experimental expression of the clinically remarkable abulia, which, as usual, consists in the surrender of the entire interest to the disease complex the hysterogenic complex which is at the root of her symptoms. Hence, nothing remains over for what is going on around. A similar case of distraction phenomena is referred to on page 69, where, however, the cause of the disturbance was a quite recent effect. 
The probable mean time of this test was 5.2 seconds, a very high figure. We believe that such prolongations rest upon certain emotional inhibitions. Just as in the case reported in Chapter 7, an analysis of the patient was impossible, for she was utterly indifferent and would not enter into any questions which did not refer to her symptoms. The repression or the inhibition arising from the pathogenic complex was obviously too strong at that time. After the consultation when this test was made, the patient returned home, and as mentioned, her illness rapidly got worse. Three months later, she was admitted to the asylum. Test 2. October 5th, 5 p.m. Stimulus word 1. Head. Reaction. Headache. Time. 1.6. Stimulus word 2. Green. Reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Stimulus word 3. Water. Reaction. Water carriage. Time. 2.8. Stimulus word 4. Prick. Reaction. Thorn apple. Time. 2.7. Stimulus word 5. Angel. Reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Stimulus word 6. Long. Reaction. Longing. Time. 2.2. Stimulus word 7. Ship. Reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Stimulus word 8. Plow. Reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Stimulus word 9. Wall. Reaction. Cotton wall. Time. 2.2. Stimulus word 10. Friendly. Reaction. Friendliness. Time. 3. Stimulus word 11. Table. Reaction. Table companion. Time. 2.2. Stimulus word 12, ask. Reaction, note of interrogation. Time, 6.6. .6. Stimulus word 13, state. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 14, stubborn. Reaction, person. Time, 3.2. Stimulus word 15, stock. Reaction, flower stock. Time, 6. Stimulus word 16, dance. Reaction, dancing floor. Time, 4. Stimulus word 17, water. Reaction, water lily. Time, 9. Stimulus word 18, ill. Reaction, illness. Time, 3.4. Stimulus word 19, proud. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 20, to cook. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 21, ink. Reaction, ink eraser. Time, 4.6. Stimulus word 22, wicked. Reaction, Wickedness. Time. Blank. Stimulus word 23. Needle. Reaction. Pincushion. Time. 2.4. Stimulus word 24. Swim. Reaction. Swimming pool. Time. 4. Stimulus word 25. Travel. Reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Stimulus word 26, blue. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 27, bread. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 28, threaten. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. At reaction 28, the patient refused to proceed declaring that she could not hold out any longer. She could not be persuaded to remain any longer in the examination room. It was also impossible to add a reproduction test or any analysis. 
nevertheless, certain results may be noticed. First of all, there is the strikingly peculiar character of the associations. They are mainly word combinations, and there are numerous faults. Comparing the two tests, we find inner associations, test 1, 16%, test 2, blank. Outer associations, test 1, 60%, test 2, 46.4%. Clang reactions, test 1, 9%, test 2, 14.2%. Faults, test 1, 14%, test 2, 39.2%. Indirect associations, test 1, 1, test 2, blank. This is a most unusual record. The patient's behavior during the examination was characteristic. She supported her head with both hands and sighed from time to time about the unbearable heat in her head, which the heated room caused her, 13 degrees. It did not trouble her in the least that in summer she found a temperature of 13 degrees pleasantly cool, whilst the same temperature in winter was unbearable. The part played by the temperature of the air was therefore only due to imagination. She was obviously quite obsessed by her disease complex during the test. It is not surprising that she had no attention left for the dull experiment. We have again an experiment in distraction, but in a much higher degree than in test one. The decline in her condition had increased the distraction of attention, that is, Attention is now more than before directed to the disease complex, so that there is less attention to give to the experiment. It clearly cost her enormous trouble to direct her attention to the tests. She is worn out after 28 reactions and is obliged to relinquish the experiment. The energy at her disposal is reduced to a minimum. The enormous increase in faults is an expression of this fact. They are almost threefold those of the first test. She rejects all stimulus words which do not lend themselves to ready word connections. But all the faults are not absolutely referable to the absence of a ready made word connection. For example, to cook, there are such common combinations as cookery, cooking, to state, state affairs, to travel, traveling bag, etc. Nor are all the long reaction times attributable to verbal difficulties, for example, water with nine seconds, to which there are numerous combinations. We are obliged to think of some effective causes for these disturbances, which may be conditioned by unconscious inhibitions arising from the pathogenic complex which is at the root of the disease complex. The probable mean time of the test was 5.2 seconds, taking the faults at 20 seconds, although one usually waited up to 30 seconds. The probable mean is, therefore, very high. Test 3, October 9th, 5 p.m., with reproduction test. Stimulus word 1, lamp. Reaction, Lamp glass. Time, 1.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 2. Rich. Reaction, riches. Time, 1.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 3. Tree. Reaction, tree trunk. Time, 1.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 4. Sing. Reaction, Choral Society. Time, 5.2. Reproduction, Sing Song. Stimulus word 5, Pity. Reaction, Blank. Time, Blank. Reproduction, Pitiful. Stimulus word 6, Yellow. Reaction, Golden Yellow. Time, 3.2. Reproduction, Blank. Stimulus word 7, mountain. Reaction, mountain chain. Time, 4.8. Reproduction, 
blank. Stimulus word eight, play. Reaction, sing song. Time, 6.6. Reproduction, play at ball. Stimulus word nine, salt. Reaction, salt cellar. Time, 6.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 10, new. Reaction, new moon. Time, three. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 11, habits. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, customary. Stimulus word 12, ride. Reaction, riding school. Time, three. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 13, wall. Reaction, wall paintings. Time, 4.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 14, stupid. Reaction, stupidity. Time, 4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 15, copybook. Reaction, school copybook. Time, 2.2. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 16, to despise, reaction, blank, time, blank, reproduction, despicable. Stimulus word 17, tooth, reaction, toothache, time, two, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 18, right, reaction, blank, time, blank, reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 19, people. Reaction, people's holiday. Time, two. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 20, smell. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 21, book. Reaction, reading book. Time, 3.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 22, unjust. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 23, frog. Reaction, tree frog. Time, 2.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 24, separate. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, conjugal separation. Stimulus word 25, hunger. Reaction, heat hunger. Time, five. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 26, white. Reaction, snow white. Time, two. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 27, cattle. Reaction, drove of cattle. Time, 4.1. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 28, to take care. Reaction, caution. Time, 2.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 29, pencil. Reaction, pencil holder. Time, 6.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 30, cloudy. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 31, plum. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 32, meat. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. This test shows some changes as compared with the earlier ones. The results expressed in percentages are inner associations, test 2, blank. Test 3, 3.1%. Outer associations, test 2, 46.4%. Test 3, 59.3%. Clang reactions, 
Test 2, 14.2%. Test 3, 6.2%. False. Test 2, 39.2%. Test 3, 31.2%. Anomalies in reproduction. Test 2, blank. Test 3, 18.7%. This is, therefore, another experiment in distraction. The probable mean time is first test, 5.2, second test, 5.2, third test, 4.6. There is a certain diminution of the reaction time, which must be chiefly attributed to the relative decrease of the, quote, faults, unquote. It may perhaps be inferred from this result that the patient has pulled herself together a little. This seems also to be expressed by the fact that despite her early abandonment of the experiment, she allowed herself to be persuaded into the reproduction test. This test also went four reactions further than the first one, 28 and 32. The number of Klang reactions has considerably diminished in favor of the outer and inner associations. This must also be regarded as a certain improvement in attention. Test 4. October 17th, 5 p.m. With reproduction test. Stimulus word 1. Law. Reaction. Lawless. Time. 5. Stimulus word 2. Love. Reaction. Loveless. Time. 3. Stimulus word 3. Glass. Reaction, glass chest. Time, two. Stimulus word four, quarrel. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word five, goat. Reaction, goat milk. Time, 2.8. Stimulus word six, big. Reaction, big city. Time, 4.8. Stimulus word 7, potato. Reaction, potato patch. Time, 5.6. Stimulus word 8, pain. Reaction, painting studio. Time, 5.4. Stimulus word 9, part. Reaction, parties. Time, 3. Stimulus word 10, old. Reaction, Old Town. Time, 9.6. Stimulus word 11, Flower. Reaction, Calyx. Time, 2.4. Stimulus word 12, Hit. Reaction, Blank. Time, Blank. Stimulus word 13, Basket. Reaction, Clothes Basket. Time, 5.6. Stimulus word 14, wild. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 15, family. Reaction, family party. Time, four. Stimulus word 16, wash. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 17, cow. Reaction, cow milk. Time, 3.2. Stimulus word 18, foreign. Reaction, foreign book. Time, 3.4. Stimulus word 19, luck. Reaction, lucky wish. Time, 2.8. Stimulus word 20, narrate. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 21, deportment. Reaction, teaching deportment. Time, 2.8. Stimulus word 22, narrow. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 23, brother. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 24, malice. Reaction, Malicious joy. Time, 3.6.
Stimulus word 25, stork. Stimulus word at first misunderstood, then fault. Stimulus word 26, false. Reaction, falsity. Time, 8.2. Stimulus word 27, anxiety. Reaction, anxious feeling. Time, 3. Stimulus word 28, kiss. Reaction, sisterly kiss. Time, 4. Stimulus word 29, flame. Reaction, black flames. Time, 6.8. Stimulus word 30, dirty. Reaction, dirty speck. Time, 7. Stimulus word 31, door. Reaction, door trap. Time, 4.8. Stimulus word 32, vote. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 33, hey. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 34, quiet. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. This test was carried out at a time when the patient was not feeling so well, one of those variations which are not uncommon in the course of hysteria. This test looks, likewise, as if it were a distraction test. With the exception of a few individual reactions, kiss, sisterly kiss, the patient never enters into the meaning of the stimulus words, but contents herself with apprehending the outer form of the word. There were no disturbances in reproduction. The test went two reactions further than the previous one, 32 and 34. Expressed in percentages, inner associations, test 2, blank. Test 3, 3.1%. Test 4, 2.9%. Outer associations, test 2, 46.4%. Test 3, 59.3%, and test 4, 58.8%. Clang reactions, test 2, 14.2%, test 3, 6.2%, test 4, 5.8%. Faults, test 2, 39.2%, test 3, 31.2%, and test 4, 32.3%. Reproductive anomalies, test 2, blank. Test 3, 18.7%. Test 4, blank. The probable mean time is test 2, 5.2 seconds, test 3, 4.6 seconds, and test 4, 5.4 seconds. There is an increase of the reaction time referable to the temporary unfavorable condition of the patient. The absence of reproductive anomalies may be accidental in such a small series of reactions, but may be also attributed to the fact that the patient did notice the reactions this time so as to make no mistakes in the reproduction. End of section 39, read by Steve Hazard, August 10th. 2021. Section 40 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Steve Hazard. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung Translated by M. D. Eder Test 5, October 9th, 5 p.m. With Reproduction Test Stimulus Word 1, Scorn Reaction, Blank Time, Blank Reproduction, Blank Stimulus Word 2, Sleep Reaction, Rest. Time, 1.8. Reproduction, tired. Stimulus word 3, month. 
Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, time. Stimulus word four, colored. Reaction, painter. Time, 6.1. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word five, dog. Reaction, domestic animal. Time, 3.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word six, talk. Reaction, narrate. Time, 4.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word seven, coal. Reaction, to iron. Time, 4.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word eight, moderate. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word nine, song. Reaction, singing. Time, 3.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 10, suppose. Reaction, facts. Time, 10. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 11, pain. Reaction, ill. Time, 5.2. Reproduction, illness. Stimulus word 12, lazy. Reaction, work. Time, 5.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 13, moon. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 14, laugh. Reaction, jolly. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 15, coffee. Reaction, breakfast. Time, 2.2. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 16, broad. Reaction, measure. Time, 3.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 17, air. Reaction, warm. Time, 5. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 18, frighten. Reaction, dread. Time, 7.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 19, plate. Reaction, eat. Time, 7. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 20, tired. Reaction, sleep. Time, 4.4. Reproduction, bed. Stimulus word 21, aim. Reaction, injure. Time, 7.4. Reproduction, question mark. Stimulus word 22, fly. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 23, I. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 24, strong. Reaction, powerful. Time, 2.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 25, fruit. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 26, create. Reaction, industrious. Time, three. Reproduction, work. Stimulus word 27, sail. Reaction, ship. Time, seven. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 28, modest. Reaction, content. Time, 6.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 29, floor. Does not understand the stimulus word at first. Reaction, land. Time, 10. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 30, Whistle. Reaction, tune. Time, 6.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 31. Purpose. Reaction, cause. Time, 
3.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 32, hot. Reaction, yes, yes, in there. Time, 4. Reproduction, light. Stimulus word 33, hand. Reaction, limb. Time, 3. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 34, wake. Reaction, awake. Time, 3. Reproduction, get up. Stimulus word 35, apple. Reaction, don't know. Time, 15.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 36, bad. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 37, mouth. Reaction, teeth. Time, 7.2. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 38, drink. Reaction, fluid. Time, 4.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 39, bed. Reaction, tired. Time, 7.2. Reproduction, sleep. Stimulus word 40, beautiful. Reaction, pretty. Time, 4. Reproduction, question mark. Stimulus word 41, danger. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, terrible. Stimulus word 42, visit. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 43, artisan. Reaction, occupation. Time, 6.4. Reproduction, make. Stimulus word 44, high. Reaction, mountain. Time, 4.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 45, axe. Reaction, wood. Time, 9.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 46, notice. Reaction, take care. Time, 2. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 47, way. Reaction, walk. Time, 5. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 48, round. Reaction, ball. Time, 2.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 49, blood. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, red. Stimulus word 50, to yield. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 51, caution. Reaction, take care. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 52, jolly. Reaction, stories. Time, 4.8. Reproduction, laugh. Stimulus word 53, market. Reaction, Buy. Time, 3.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word, 54, forget. Reaction, thoughts. Time, 5.4. Reproduction, stories. Stimulus word, 55, thunder. Reaction, noise. Time, 5. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 56, free. Reaction, outspoken. Time, 6.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 57, carriage. Reaction, drive. Time, 3.2. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 58, eat. Reaction, appetite. Time, 5. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 59, impudence. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 60, quick. 
Reaction, go. Time, 2.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 61, chimney. Reaction, smoke. Time, 2.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 62, enjoy. Reaction, pleasure. Time, 3.2. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 63, vicar. Reaction, preach. Time, 2.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 64, light. Reaction, wait. Time, 3.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 65, neck. Reaction, slender. Time, 7. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 66, wish. Reaction, present. Time, 5.6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 67, stone. Reaction, hard. Time, 8.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 68, superior. Reaction, rich. Time, 1.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 69, tube. Reaction, rubber. Time, 2.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 70, love. Reaction, beautiful. Time, 9.4. Reproduction, question mark. Stimulus word 71, slate. Reaction, roof. Time, 3.4. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 72, mild. Reaction, temperature. Time, 4.8. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 73, avarice. Reaction, miser. Time, 6.4. Reproduction, question mark. Stimulus word 74, seek. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 75, cover. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 76, good. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 77, leaf. Reaction, blank. Time, blank. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 78, complain. Reaction, illness. Time, 6. Reproduction, blank. Stimulus word 79, railway. Reaction, travel. Time, 4.8. Reproduction, blank. This test presents a very different association type from the others. It is as if the patient had suddenly found another adaptation. Footnote 1. But in fact, this is not the case. For in test 1, the patient had shown tendencies to a less superficial association type. End a footnote. The percentage relationships are inner associations, test 2, blank, test 3, 3.1%, test 4, 2.9%, test 5, 56.9%. Outer associations, test 2, 46.4%, test 3, 59.3%. Test 4, 58.8%. Test 5, 18.9%. Clang reactions. Test 2, 14.2%. Test 3, 6.2%. Test 4, 5.8%. Test 5, 1.2%. Faults. Test 2, 39.2%. Test 3, 31.2%. Test 4, 32.3%. Test 5, 
21.5%. Indirect associations, test 2, blank. Test 3, blank. Test 4, blank. Test 5, 1.2%. Anomalies in reproduction, test 2, blank. Test 3, 18.7%. Test 4, blank. Test 5, 21.5%. We see from these figures that the patient has now achieved a normal type. She now enters into the meaning of the reaction word, linking with it a preponderating number of inner associations. Footnote 2. This patient now exhibits a type which we not infrequently see amongst the uneducated. Very many inner associations, few outer, and very few clang reactions. End of footnote. The abnormal components have been pretty well abandoned, so that, for example, the clang reactions do not exceed the normal mean. The number of faults remains high, but has also considerably decreased. The patient is now able to hold out much longer, for this test exceeds the others by 45 reactions. The mean time is 5.4 seconds, as in the previous tests. It thus remains very long. This test was made three weeks after the previous one. Meanwhile, treatment had much improved the patient's condition. In the earlier tests, we pointed out the absence of entering into the meaning of the stimulus word, the dominance of outer associations, the enormous number of faults, and the rapid fatigue as pathological signs showing her extreme subjection to the disease complex. The improvement of the condition is psychologically shown, particularly by the patients having acquired an interest in objective processes, although her interest was quickly exhausted. The treatment had assuaged the tyranny of the complex. Her personality gradually became free from the tyranny of her illness and able to assimilate objective facts. In other words, she could now adapt herself to her environment. Certain hysterical stigmata were maintained, the enormous number of faults, the long reaction times, and other signs of a complex, signs of pathological emotivity which, as we know, is the psychological foundation of hysteria. Test 6, December 1st, 5 p.m., with reproduction test. This test consisted of 100 reactions, concluded at this number not on account of the patient's exhaustion, but because 100 reactions seemed to me sufficient for analysis. I will, therefore, give a critical review of the test in sections. The probable mean time of this test, I will begin by remarking, was 5.2 seconds, not longer, therefore, than the previous tests. Despite this apparent agreement, the time relationships are, on the whole, quite different from the earlier attempts. To bring out these relationships, I have split each test up into a series of 6 to 10 reactions and calculated the arithmetical mean time of each series. Footnote 1. The faults have each been reckoned as 20 seconds. End of footnote. The results of the six tests would show curves of the following nature. Test 1. The curve shows a strong fluctuation. At first, a level of relatively, quote, short times, unquote, is soon reached, which after various fluctuations keeps ascending higher. Towards the end, very strong prolongations of time occur, which, to some extent, are again made up for, but never quite reach the first level. The curve gives one the impression that the patient had noticed the long times and had, in consequence, pulled herself together during a few reactions. Test 1 was carried out at the first consultation. As already mentioned, her condition afterwards got worse. This aggravation is seen in the curve of test 2 where the curve begins pretty high, and after a brief recovery, 
is rapidly followed by a collapse. In test three, the curves begin low. The patient had, as she then said, made the good resolution to take every pains to react quickly. But the energy so painfully aroused is not long maintained. The times become progressively longer until very high figures are reached. The perception of this weakness probably determined in the patient a slight final effort which, however, exhausts her last trace of energy. Test 4. The curve begins rather higher than last time. As stated, the patient was having a bad turn at the time of the experiment. There occurred here also an uninterrupted rise in the reaction times. Tests 1 through 4 had furnished predominantly outer associations and faults. We see from the curves that this mode of assimilation is linked with rapidly rising reaction times. Test 5. The curve begins very high, perhaps because the patient had been greatly discouraged by the previous tests and had thus resistances towards the experiment. The curve rapidly falls and after one strong variation is maintained at a moderate level, which, however, slowly ascends. There follows a strong and a final effort maintained for a long time, which ends in a rapid and uninterrupted ascent of the, quote, times, end quote. The final effort had entirely exhausted her energy. Test 6. In this last test, after two months' treatment, the curve begins at a moderate height and then rapidly sinks to a very low level, which is maintained, more or less, during the whole experiment without noteworthy fluctuations, only towards the end showing a tendency to rise. Test 5 shows, at least in its middle parts, a tendency towards stability, which is fully expressed in Test 6. But tests 5 and 6 are those which exhibit a normal mode of association. The normal type occurs here with a tendency to stability in the reaction times. At the same time, a very low level is reached and maintained in test 6. The 100 stimulus words, which are the basis of test 1, were employed also in tests 2 and 4 and in test 6. As the curves show, we cannot perceive any shortening of the reaction times from the repetition of the same stimulus words. From test 2 to 4, we might rather suppose the opposite. According to Kraepelin's investigations, we should rather expect a fixation of the reactions to produce a relatively rapid abbreviation of the time. In test 6, there are, however, not only no fixations, but quite other reactions corresponding to the new adaptation whose beginning was seen in test 5. The prolongation of the reaction times is seen to be connected with a great loss of energy, that is, with an entire inability to withdraw attention from the disease complex. It costs the patient great trouble to direct her attention for any length of time upon anything else than her illness her fatigue corresponding with her endeavor. The curves which exhibit the prolongation of time are, therefore, curves of want of energy. This becomes clear if we turn them round and read them from right to left. Then they look rather like the work curves of a very exhausted neurotic, exhaustion of will. In curves 1, 5, and 6, we notice the increase due to practice and the reactive rises in curves 1, 3, and 5, which is the final effort. In curves 1 and 6, this progressive fatigue is clearly marked. Thus, the association experiment gives us information in certain cases about energy and fatigue. Analysis of the associations in test 6 I place the associations of test 6 parallel with those of 1 through 6 for analytical comparison. Stimulus word 1, head. Test 1, reaction, ache. Time, 1.2. Test 2, 4, and 5, reaction, headache. Time, 1.6.
Test six, reaction, pain, pains in the head. Time, 1.8. Stimulus word two, green. Test one, reaction, corn. Time, 6.6. Tests two, four, and five, reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test six, reaction, forest. Time, 5.2. Stimulus word three, water. Test one reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test two, four, and five reaction, water carriage. Time, 2.8. Test six reaction, deep. Time, 1.4. Stimulus word four, prick. Test one reaction, B. Time, 1.8. Test 2, 4, and 5 reaction, thorn apple. Time, 2.4. Test 6 reaction, B. Time, 2.8. Stimulus word 5, angel. Test 1 reaction, hotel. Time, 2.1, question mark. Footnote 1. Absence of reproduction is shown by the brackets. End of footnote. Test two, four, and five reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test six reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word six, long. Test one reaction, knife. Time, nine. Test two, four, and five reaction, longing. Time, 2.2. Test 6 reaction, street. Time, 5. Stimulus word 7, ship. Test 1 reaction, steamship. Time, 7. Test 2, 4, and 5 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, C. Time, 4. Stimulus word eight, plow. Test one reaction, field, garden. Time, 4.2. Test two, four, and five reaction, blank. Test six reaction, demand, give. Time, 7.4. Stimulus word nine, wool. Test one reaction, knit. Time, 1.5. Test two, four, and five reaction, cotton wool. Time, blank. Test six reaction, stimulus word not understood, knit. Time, 10.2. Stimulus word 10, friendly. Test one reaction, ness. Time, 2.2. Test two, four, and five reaction, Friendliness. Time, three. Test six reaction, men. Time, blank. Stimulus word 11, table. Test one reaction, does not understand stimulus word at first. Cloth. Time, six. Test two, four, and five reaction, table companion. Time, 2.2. Test six reaction, room. Time, nine. Reaction one, head, naturally arouses the disease complex, for the patient has localized her chief symptoms in her head. The times are not long, but we find in test six a disturbance through a slip of speech. The two earlier reactions have the superficial character which is not infrequently seen in complex reactions, which the patient would like to slide over lightly. Reaction three, water, seems to have the well-known signs of perseveration of an emotional tone. Reaction five, angel, has complex signs. The patient is not religious, but is still very childish. In the last few months, she had frequent thoughts of death. She had hallucinations in the evenings of a, quote, black skeleton, unquote, stretching out his hand to her. 
That is reason enough for a complex disturbance. But we must go deeper. The patient has an inner and intimate relationship to her mother. The two women have another link in common through illness. Her mother suffers from osteomalacia and is a complete cripple. Her daughter takes her mother as her pattern, not only from a moral point of view, but perhaps also as presaging her own fate. The fear of a fate similar to that of her mother is never very distant. Finally, it must be remembered that young girls in hysterics talk of death when they wish to have love. Disturbances proceed from angel to reaction eight. In test one, there even occurred a slight amnesia here. At reaction eight in test six, another stimulus word was inserted in order to bring out the complex demand. It requires 7.4 seconds for the reaction, and the succeeding stimulus word, wool, is at first not understood and requires 10.2 seconds. To demand, I obtained some further thoughts. In her own words, quote, I thought that you demand too much of me. It is too much when you always want me to be well, unquote. It seemed to me that the patient was here rather sliding lightly over something although thoughts about the doctor who is treating her seem to be accompanied in hysterics by a strong emotional tone, transference to the doctor, see Freud. I therefore simply said, quote, the demand, unquote. The patient jerked herself slightly together and said, quote, I don't know what you mean. I can't make out what you are now wanting of me, unquote. Then she suddenly broke out into loud laughter, flushed, and said nothing more. The course of this bit of analysis is as follows. At first the patient complains that I am demanding too much from her. Then the well-known negative subterfuges appear, and finally a strongly emotional thought with laughter, the cause of which is not difficult to guess. Laughter is of diagnostic importance. In psychoanalysis, it often shows that one has struck a complex. It is clear that it is not anyone but the patient herself who is demanding too much. Freud, footnote 2, Der Witz, quote, Wit and its relation to the unconscious, unquote, by Professor Sigmund Freud, London, Fisher Unwin, end of footnote. says, quote, Many of my neurotic patients are, during psychoanalysis, regularly want to show by a laugh that one has succeeded in correctly showing to their conscious perception what the unconscious had concealed. They even laugh when the content of what has been concealed has nothing in it to justify their laughter. This happens when the physician, having recognized the condition, has prepared the way for the patient to recognize himself this bit of his unconscious when it looms up. Unquote. Reaction 10, friendly, seems to be critical in test 2, but not in tests 1 and 6. Analysis. At first, strong resistances. Quote, I don't know anything, unquote, etc. Then, quote, I thought of you, doctor. Recently, you were not very friendly to me, unquote. This reminiscence refers to a definite event when the patient transferred her ill humor to me and afterwards maintained that it was I who was in a bad temper, transference of effect. This reminiscence seems sufficient to explain the disturbance. I have already pointed out that the patient transferred the, quote, demanding too much, unquote, to me. She also endows me with her own ill humor and complains that I am not friendly to her. Her, quote, demand, unquote, is therefore that I should be friendly with her. And as I always am, then that I am not friendly enough, for she still complains of my unfriendliness. 
she is ever wanting greater friendship from me, which means that I am indifferent to the patient in an erotic sense. Naturally, I cannot agree to this demand. Thus the patient is demanding too much. This piece of complex she only acquired here, and so the complex disturbances were bound to increase at friendly. Stimulus word 12. Ask. Test one reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Tests two through four reaction. Note of interrogation. Time. 6.6. Test 6 reaction. Answer. Time. 5.8. Stimulus word. 13. State. Test 1 reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Test 2 through 4 reaction. Blank. Time. Blank. Test 6 reaction. State buildings. Time. 11.6. Stimulus word 14, stubborn. Test 1 reaction, stubborn person. Time, 8. Test 2 through 4 reaction, stubborn person. Time, 3.2. Test 6 reaction, character. Time, 6. Stimulus word 15, stalk. Test 1 reaction, flower stalk. Time, 2.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Flower stalk. Time 6. Test 6 reaction. Flower stalk. Time 10.6. Stimulus word 16. Dance. Test 1 reaction. Dancing floor. Time 2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Dancing floor. Time 4. Test 6 reaction. Ball. Time, 5.4. Stimulus word 17, water. Test 1 reaction, Zurich. Time, 5.8. Test 2 through 4 reaction, water lily. Time, 9. Test 6 reaction, deep. Time, 7.2. Stimulus word 18, ill. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 2 through 4 reaction, sickly. Time, 3.4. Test 6 reaction, hospital. Time, 6.2. Stimulus word 19, proud. Test 1 reaction, haughty. Time, 3.8. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, longing. Homesick. Time, 7.4. Stimulus word 20, cook. Test 1 reaction, cookery school. Time, 2.6. Test 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, kitchen. Time, 3.6. Stimulus word 21, ink. Test 1 reaction, Ink bottle. Time, 1.8. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Ink eraser. Time, 4.6. Test 6 reaction. Write. Time, 2. Reaction 12. At ask, there were obvious complex disturbances which affect the subsequent reactions also. Analysis. Quote, I thought that you asked me a lot but I know absolutely nothing. I certainly know nothing more, unquote. The patient says this with emphasis and with a nasty, ill-tempered expression contrasting strikingly with her usual good nature and submissiveness. She then broke out into loud laughter, which she tried to suppress by the expression of her ill humor. Quote, oh, what a nuisance. That won't do. I never thought of that at all, unquote. At the moment of the reaction, she had not thought of the peculiar meaning of the word ask, so fraught with meaning to any young woman. She believes that this meaning has only just occurred to her. Quote, she really never thinks about anything of the kind. Unquote. We have here another hint of the presence of an erotic complex. 
Reaction 16, stubborn, is well adapted for ego relationships. If the reaction is character or trait or a bad habit, reference may be suspected to the patient under examination. The ego relationship occurs clearly in character, and thus we get stronger disturbances than in the earlier reactions. Analysis Quote, People are often stubborn. I was as a child. Once I was awfully stubborn and wouldn't go to school at all. I think I was about twelve then. After that, I did not go to school again. Unquote. It will be remembered that the patient attributed her inability to go to school to the St. Vitus's dance. Now she is regarding this illness as naughtiness and even says it was from stubbornness that she stopped going to school. But if during the course of another conversation she is asked why she stopped going to school, she says that she was then very ill. We can be content with this explanation. But her twelfth year has another significance of much greater import, as we shall see later. Reaction 16, Dance, Dancing Floor also gets away from the deeper meaning. It is only with the reaction ball, which shows a deeper penetration into the meaning of the stimulus word, that we rouse the complex. Dancing, saloon, is something that horrifies the circle in which the patient lives, whilst ball is quite a legitimate occasion for erotic relationships. The patient was obliged to laugh directly she was asked what came into her mind about ball. Erotic thoughts were again to the fore. To reaction 19, the stimulus word in test 6 was longing. Analysis. Patient declared obstinately and with obvious resistance that nothing except homesickness occurred to her at longing. I maintained that something would occur to her. There was then suddenly loud laughter which was at once angrily suppressed. Quote, no, no, this disgusts me. It's a bore. Unquote. We had the same reaction as at demand. There was certainly some strongly repressed erotic desire. Stimulus word 22, wicked. Test 1 reaction, wickedness. Time, 7.8. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, wickedness. Time, 3.8. Test 6 reaction, disobedient child. Time, 7.6. Stimulus word 23, needle. Test 1 reaction, pincushion. Time, 2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, pincushion. Time, 2.4. Test 6 reaction, child, work, love. Time, 7.8. Stimulus word 24, swim. Test 1 reaction, swimming school. Time, 9. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, swimming pool. Time, 4. Test 6 reaction, bathing place. Time, 6.4. Stimulus word 25, travel. Test 1 reaction, Traveling rug. Time, 12. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, railway. Time, 4.8. Stimulus word 26, blue. Test 1 reaction, blue street. Time, 7. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, color, time, 1.8. Stimulus word 27, bread. Test 1 reaction, breadless, time, 4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank, time, blank. Test 6 reaction, baker, time, 2. Stimulus word 28, threaten. Test 1 reaction, does not understand the stimulus word. Punishment. Punish. Time, 12.
tests two through four reaction blank. Time blank. Test six reaction expect visit. Time three point six. This was the end of test two. Test three. Stimulus word twenty nine. Lamp. Test one reaction lampshade. Time two point two. Tests two through four, reaction, lampshade, time, 1.8. Test six, reaction, light, time, four. Stimulus word 30, rich. Test one, reaction, riches, time, 4.2. Tests two through four, reaction, riches, time, 1.8. Test six, reaction, money. Time, 6.8. Stimulus word 31, tree. Test 1 reaction, fruit tree. Time, 4.6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, tree stem. Time, 1.4. Test 6 reaction, garden. Time, 3.6. Stimulus word 32, sing. Test 1 reaction, Choral Society. Time, 3.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, Choral Society. Time, 5.2. Test 6 reaction, Concert. Time, 5.2. Reaction 22, Wicked, is taken personally. Disobedient seems to express the complex most clearly. Analysis. Quote, recently I was angry with you. Formerly I was often wicked and disobedient at school, unquote, etc. Association 23, child, work, is peculiar and could not be explained by the patient. In reproduction came the more appropriate association, love. The school complex comes first, which is most deeply bound up with the idea of, quote, work, unquote. Remember that the stimulus words create and artisan in test five caused complex disturbances. Moreover, the patient is always insisting that she is not, quote, lazy, unquote. She would like to find some real work. She also complained about certain relatives who said she was only suffering from laziness. The stimulus word child is a word which as a rule has a critical effect in erotic complexes among women. Reaction 25. At travel, there are complex indicators. Analysis, quote, I am thinking of a beautiful journey to Italy which I should so much like to make one day, unquote. A long pause, then with great embarrassment, quote, honeymoon journeys are made to Italy, unquote. Reaction 28, test 6, expect, analysis, quote, I am expecting nothing, absolutely nothing, health and, unquote, again loud laughter, which the patient, annoyed, tries to suppress. The same reaction again as at demand and longing. Reaction 30, rich. Analysis, quote, I should like to be rich. Then I could remain longer here under treatment. Unquote. Then a block occurred which stopped all further flow of thought. Quote, longer under treatment, unquote, means, quote, Remain longer in the present relationship to the doctor. Unquote. Stimulus word 33, pity. Test 1 reaction, regret. Time, 7. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, full of pity. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 34, yellow. Test 1 reaction, yolk of egg. Time, 4.8. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, golden yellow. Time, 3.2. Test 6 reaction, canary bird. Time, 5. 
Stimulus word 35. Mountain. Test 1 reaction. Utley Mountain. Time 4.6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Mountain Chain. Time 4.8. Test 6 reaction. Mountain Chain. Time 10.8. Stimulus word 36. Game. Test 1 reaction. Chess. Time, 3.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Singing, game of ball. Time, 6.6. Test 6, game of ball. Time, 6.8. Stimulus word 37, salt. Test 1 reaction, salt cellar. Time, 2.4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, salt cellar. Time, 6.8. Test 6 reaction, cook. Time, 2.2. Stimulus word 38, new. Test 1 reaction, newberry. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, new moon. Time, 3.8. Test 6 reaction, house. Time, 7. Stimulus word 39, custom. Test 1 reaction, propriety. Time, 9.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Decorum. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, expect. Happy. Joy. Time, 8.2. Stimulus word 40, ride. Test 1 reaction, riding school. Time, 33. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, riding school. Time, 3. Test 6 reaction, path. Time, 1.8. Stimulus word 41, wall. Test 1 reaction, Spanish wall. Time, 2.4. Tests 2 through 4, reaction, wall paintings, time, 4.6. Test 6, reaction, room, time, 5.2. Stimulus word 42, stupid. Test 1, reaction, stupidity, time, 9. Test 2 through 4, reaction, stupidity, time, 4. Test 6, reaction, Understand. Time, 7.2. Stimulus word 43. Exercise book. Test 1 reaction, school exercise book. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, school exercise book. Time, 2.2. Test 6 reaction, exercise book. Time, 5.2. Reaction 33. Pity. Analysis. Quote, I can't think what pity has to do with me. Oh, perhaps with my illness, people ought to have pity on me. Unquote. I have only given a sample of the resistance the patient had at this word. In reality, the resistance lasted much longer and was expressed also mimetically in her sorrowful face. The tendency to evoke pity has great significance in the history of the patient's illness. Through her illness, she managed not to go to school anymore. Later, she is the central figure for the pity of the whole family. The patient must have some consciousness of this, even if obscurely. The strong inhibition is probably referable to this. Reaction 35. Mountain. Analysis refuses to acknowledge anything. She has had nothing to do with mountains. The word doesn't concern her at all. She has never been on a mountain. Certainly she would enjoy a tour in the Alps, but that's been impossible on account of her illness. Besides, she could not travel by railway. She could not bear that. The patient seeks here in negations as if a mountain tour had no meaning for her. A few days before this test, I had been away on an excursion to the mountains. The patient was afterwards unhappy because I had not taken her. 
She had never seen the mountains in the neighborhood, etc. She suppresses this circumstance altogether, for which there is no obvious ground if travel had not some complex import. She has all kinds of imaginary relationships to the doctor. A journey with the erotic, quote, symptomatic figure, unquote, is a metaphor for, quote, honeymoon journey, unquote. This is certainly the reason why this event takes part in the sexual repression. Reaction 38. New. Analysis. The patient has been intimate with a lady who has moved into a new house for which the patient exhibits an extraordinary liking. She envies the lady her whole household. Quote, I should like to have something of the sort. Unquote. The interest appears to be symptomatic. The analysis discovers great resistances. Quote, People often move into a new house. We have also got a new room at home. Unquote, etc. I now ask pointedly, quote, when does one move into a new house? Unquote. This apparently most general question causes the patient great confusion. She blushes and admits, quote, when they marry. Unquote. She has assimilated the quote, new house unquote, to her erotic complex. Reaction 39, test 6, expect. The analysis arouses at once laughter, which says enough. The laughter is here quite appropriate. Reaction 23, child, likewise caused a disturbance. We shall return to this complex at reaction 69. Reaction 42, stupid. Analysis brings out self-reproaches relating to the time when she left school, aged 12. She reproaches herself that from one of energy she learnt too little and is therefore stupid. Stimulus word 44, despise. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, despicable. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, People. Time, 7.2. Stimulus word 45. Tooth. Test 1 reaction, eye tooth. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, toothache. Time, 2. Test 6 reaction, mouth. Time, 3.6. Stimulus word 46. Correct. Test 1 reaction, arrange. Time, 5. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, control. Time, 6.6. .6. Stimulus word 47, people. Test 1 reaction, people's paper. Time, 4.6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, people's holiday. Time, 2. Test 6 reaction, crowd. Time, 5. Stimulus word 48, smell. Test 1 reaction, sink. Time, 10. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, die. Cemetery. Time, 3.4. Stimulus word 49, book. Test 1 reaction, reading book. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, reading book, time 3.8. Test 6 reaction, read, time 2.2. Stimulus word 50, unjust. Test 1 reaction, blank, time blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank, time blank. Test 6 reaction, marriage, church. Time, 3.2. Stimulus word, 51, frog. Test 1 reaction, tree frog. Time, 5. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, tree frog. Time, 2.4. Test 6 reaction, green. Time, 2. Stimulus word, 52, separate. Test 1 reaction, divorce. 
Time 6.4 Tests 2 through 4 Reaction Divorce Time blank Test 6 Reaction Divorce Time 4 Stimulus word 53 Hunger Test 1 Reaction Eat Time 3.8 Tests 2 through 4 Reaction Violent Hunger Time 5.6 Test 6 reaction, dog, bark. Time 6.8. Stimulus word 54, white. Test 1 reaction, snow. Time 3.6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, snow white. Time 2. Test 6 reaction, snow. Time 3.2. Stimulus word 55, cattle. Test 1 Reaction, Herd of Cattle. Time, 6.4. Tests 2 through 4 Reaction, Herd of Cattle. Time, 4.2. Test 6 Reaction, Herd of Cattle. Time, 9.4. Reaction 44, Despise. Patient feels herself always at a disadvantage. Her want of education she regards as something for which people must despise her. People also despised her on account of her illness, which they regarded as laziness. Perhaps there is something else in the illness which makes her peculiarly despicable. We know that sexual self-reproaches are readily made here. Reaction 46, correct, also shows disturbances. The analysis gave nothing but generalities, which are difficult to interpret. Perhaps there is something in her actions which is, or was not, Correct. Reaction 53, dog, test 6, has a very long reaction time, 6.8 seconds. Analysis, patient dreamt about two dogs, which probably have an erotic meaning. See below. Stimulus word 56, take care. Test 1 reaction, esteem, time 6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, esteem, time 2.4. Test 6 reaction, esteem, time 2.8. Stimulus word 57, pencil. Test 1 reaction, pencil holder, time 6.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, pencil holder, time 6.6. Test 6 reaction, black, time 5. Stimulus word 58, cloudy. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, weather. Time, 2. Stimulus word 59, plum. Test 1 reaction, plum jam. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, cat, domestic animal. Time, 8. Stimulus word 60, meat. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, protection. Time, 3.6. This is the end of test 3. Test 4. Stimulus word 61, law. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, illegal. Time, 5. Test 6 reaction, illegal. Time, 5.4. Stimulus word 62, love. Test 1 reaction, Loveless. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Loveless. Time, 3. Test 6 reaction. Child. Time, 2. Stimulus word 63. Glass. Test 1 reaction. Tumbler. Time, 1.6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Glass cupboard. Time, 2. Test 6 reaction. Bottle. Time, 8. Stimulus word 64, to quarrel. 
Test 1 Reaction, Dispute, Time, 4.6. Tests 2 through 4 Reaction, Blank, Time, Blank. Test 6 Reaction, Want of Peace, Time, 7.8. Stimulus Word 65, Goat. Test 1 Reaction, Goat's Milk, Time, 2.4. Tests 2 through 4 Reaction, Goat's Milk. Time, 2.8. Test 6, Reaction, Fire, House. Time, 3.8. Stimulus Word 66, Big. Test 1, Reaction, Generous. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4, Reaction, Big Town. Time, 4.8. Test 6, Reaction, C. Time, 11. Stimulus word 67, potato. Test 1 reaction, potato meal. Time, 4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, potato patch. Time, 5.6. Test 6 reaction, food. Time, 6.8. Reaction 57, pencil. Analysis. The patient thinks of the attempts at work when I sat opposite to her and from time to time during the additions marked her copybook with a blue pencil. Nothing else occurred to her. These attempts took place shortly before beginning test six. It may, however, only have to do with some past memory which must be constellated somewhere. There is perhaps some masturbation complex or some other sexual fantasy. I avoided the sexual theme as far as possible during the whole time of her treatment and only got her to speak about it at the end. If there was some masturbation or other physical sexual complex, this was not aroused during the treatment, that is, before test six, but was more or less dormant, especially if it was not actual at the moment. Tests 1 through 4 took place at the beginning of the treatment when the complexes were more strongly stimulated. Test 6 only occurred in the third month. This perhaps explains the absence of complex indicators at this point in test 6. In test 1, the after effects could be seen up to reaction 61. In reaction 62, love, the more obvious child has stronger perseveration than the earlier and more superficial reaction, loveless. Stimulus word 68, paint. Test 1 reaction, oil paintings. Time, 4.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, studio. Time, 5.4. Test 6 reaction, picture. Time, 2.4. Stimulus word 69, part. Test 1 reaction, part payment. Time, 5.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, participate. Time, 3. Test 6 reaction, birth, difficult. Time, 4. Stimulus word 70, old. Test 1 reaction, old town. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, old town, time, 6.6. Test 6 reaction, gray beard, time, 3. Stimulus word 71, flower. Test 1 reaction, nosegay, time, 10.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, calyx, time, blank. Test 6 reaction, garden, time, 5.4. Stimulus word 72, strike. Test 1 reaction, stroke with hammer. Time, 6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Stimulus word 73, basket. Test 1 reaction, clothes basket. Time, 4.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, clothes basket. Time, 5.6. Test 6 reaction, room. Time, 7. Stimulus word 74, wild. Test 1 reaction, 
Wild Duck. Time, 4.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, lion. Time, 3.4. Stimulus word 75, family. Test 1 reaction, family party. Time, 5.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, family party. Time, 4. Test 6 reaction, pig. Time, 5.2. Stimulus word 76, wash. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, kitchen. Time, 6. Stimulus word 77, cow. Test 1 reaction, cow milk. Time, 2. Test 2 through 4 reaction, cow milk. Time, 3.2. Test 6 reaction, man, father. Time, 8.8. Stimulus word 78, foreign. Test 1 reaction, foreign book. Time, 6. Test 2 through 4 reaction, strange book. Time, 3.4. Test 6 reaction, guest room. Time, 5. Stimulus word 79, happiness. Test 1 reaction, congratulations. Time, 10.6. Test 2 through 4 reaction, congratulations. Time, 2.8. Test 6 reaction, joy. Time, 5.2. Stimulus word 80, narrate. Test 1 reaction, stories. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, stories. Time, 3. Reaction 69, test 6, birth, difficult. Analysis, quote, My mother had difficult childbirths. She told me her illness came from these, unquote. Recall reaction 23, child, love. Reaction 39, expectant, happy. Reaction 69 does not show any outer complex indicators at all striking, but it contains a definite designation of the complex. Her mother's fate was a warning example to the daughter, and she may readily fear that she may also suffer from osteomalacia if she were to marry. It is not to be wondered at if her sexual ideas are accompanied by very gloomy emotions and can only be dwelt upon with a certain reservatio mentalis, that is, with repression, for they were not linked with any joyous expectation, but, on the contrary, with a strong feeling of unpleasantness. This knowledge came perhaps very early in life and had a share in the formation of the illness. Reaction 76, wash, may have been constellated by the obvious disturbance from family or by her obsession of cleanliness. See the dream analysis. Reaction 77, that it is somewhat connected with family is seen by man, father of family. 8.8 seconds. Stimulus word 81, deportment. Test 1 reaction, lesson in deportment. Time, 11. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, teaching of deportment. Time, 2.8. Test 6 reaction, habits. Time, 2.4. Stimulus word 82, narrow. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, place. Time, 3.6. Stimulus word 83, brother. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, brothers and sisters. Time, 7.8. Stimulus word 84, malice. Test 1 reaction, malicious joy. Time, 2. 
Tests 2 through 4 reaction, malicious joy. Time 3.6. Test 6 reaction, loss. Time 8.2. Stimulus word 85, stork. Test 1 reaction, stork's nest. Time 5.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, does not catch the stimulus word. Time blank. Test 6 reaction, fly. Time, 7.4. Stimulus word 86, false. Test 1 reaction, falsity. Time, 7.4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, falsity. Time, 8.2. Test 6 reaction, men. Time, 3.2. Stimulus word 87, dread. Test 1 reaction, feeling of dread. Time, 4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, feeling of dread. Time, 3. Test 6 reaction, trembling. Time, 3.8. Stimulus word 88, kiss. Test 1 reaction, sisterly kiss. Time, 13. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, sisterly kiss. Time, 4. Test 6 reaction, sisterly kiss. Time, 3.8. Stimulus word 89, fire. Test 1 reaction, huge fire. Time, 5.6. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, cinders. Time, 6.5. Test 6 reaction, house. Time, 8.8. Stimulus word 90, dirty. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, dirty spec. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, street. Time, 1.8. Stimulus word 91, door. Test 1 reaction, lock of door. Time, 4.2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, door latch. Time, 4.8. Test 6 reaction, door lock. Time, 2. Stimulus word 92, choice. Test 1 reaction, choice of comrade. Time, 11. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, blank. Time, Blank. Stimulus word 93, hay. Test 1 reaction, hay wagon. Time, 3.8. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, barn. Time, 2.2. Stimulus word 94, still. Test 1 reaction, peace. Time, 7.8. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, peaceful. Time, 6.8. End of test 4. Test 5. Stimulus word 95. Ridicule. Test 1 reaction, ridiculous price. Time, 2. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, laugh. Time, 2.8. Stimulus word 96, sleep. Test 1 reaction, sleeplessness. Time, 3.4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, peace. Tired. Time, 1.8. Test 6 reaction, night. Time, 6.8. Stimulus word 97, month. Test 1 reaction, monthly meeting. Time, 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, time. Time, blank. Test 6 reaction, long. Time, 6.4. Stimulus word 98, colored. Test 1 reaction, blank. Time, blank. Tests 2 through 4 reaction, more. Time, 
6.8. Test 6 reaction. Painter. Time. 2.6. Stimulus word 99. Dog. Test 1 reaction. Dog. Faithful. Time. 3. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Domestic animal. Time. 3.4. Test 6 reaction. River. Broad. Time. 3. Stimulus word 100. Speak. Test 1 reaction. Consultation. Time. 13.4. Tests 2 through 4 reaction. Narrate. Time. 4.8. Test 6 reaction. People. Time. 6.2. Reaction 81, deportment, readily arouses sexual complexes. Reaction 85, at Stork, there are obvious disturbances which may refer to this stimulus word, whose erotic significance is well known, or to the previous malice. Reaction 88, kiss, is covered by the innocent sisterly kiss and clearly shows the naive impulse at repression, Similarly, stork, fly. But perhaps sisterly kiss had a deeper meaning. One could not suspect at the time. Compare with the dream analysis. Reaction 89, fire, shows long reaction times throughout. It is one of the expressions that the patient uses for her headaches. The reaction house is constellated by the dreams of fire, where she often saw houses burning. Reaction 92, choice, arouses the far-off reaction choice of comrade. Analysis, quote, many things can be chosen, for example, a town councillor or anybody else, unquote. Block, then laughter and confusion. We know very well what a young woman associates with choice. It is indeed an election of membership for life partnership. This explains the subsequent reactions, for that is the burning question par excellence. Reaction 97, month, frequently arouses in women the idea of the periods, and this has a special significance in this case, hence the complex disturbances. Summary of the Analysis the association experiment and its analysis have given us some impressions about a number of processes which are, however, very obscure as a whole. The analysis was carried out under peculiar difficulties, for very few reactions in the three series presented normal relationships. Complex signs abound, and this is further evidence of how greatly the patient is under the yoke of her complexes. It might be almost said that it is not she, but her complexes, which carry out the reactions. Great as are the difficulties of analysis from the unwanted extent to the complex signs, the task is even more difficult when it seemed necessary to get further help from the patient as to what was going on within. The patient frequently stops short after a few generalities, and her laughter alone betrays the idea that is coming up. There are rarely any suggestions which the patient can confirm. She is so greatly under the influence of her complex that where she should be able to appraise its emotional value, she is unable to form any judgment about it and does not know whether it is important or not. We are therefore driven to suppositions which, however, do allow of certain conclusions. It has been probably noticed that I have only seized upon certain complex constellations, although a good many others were present. These relationships are, however, only of secondary importance, so that for the sake of brevity I leave aside their analysis. There are a whole series of associations which show complex signs in all the tests and these may therefore be regarded as constant complex constellations. A fairly thorough interpretation is possible in the majority of these cases. For instance, it cannot be doubted that erotic ideas play a great part. Here and there they can be recognized in relationship to the physician. 
The disease complex comes next. These two complexes, apparently independent of one another, have side chains which are connected. Analogous to the patient's illness is that of her mother's, which in its turn touches the daughter's sexual complex, birth, difficult, etc. There are also certain signs of a possible physical sexual complex. Finally, there is a school complex. These are the threads which can conduct us through the patient's labyrinth of thoughts. The patient, however, raises barriers. By her want of self-control, by her impotency toward these complexes, she makes it difficult for us to find the confirmation of our suppositions, and we must discover other help for this. Nature has a mechanism which works up the complexes into a concentrated essence and brings them into consciousness in an unrecognizable and therefore non-dangerous form. This mechanism is the dream. As I thought I had only discovered general ideas from the association experiment, I collected the patient's dreams. Earlier ones that could be remembered were only the stereotyped dreams of blood and fire, and these were very indistinct. Naturally, one could not rely on obtaining from the past anything but a carefully selected material, from which the strong inhibition would have blotted out everything at all obvious. The patient dreamt very little during the treatment. That is, she remembered very few dreams. The material is therefore less voluminous than might be wished. End of section 40 Read by Steve Hazard, August 21st, 2021. Section 41 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Steve Hazard. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 9 Association, Dream, and Hysterical Symptoms. Part 3 The Dreams. In the first months of her treatment, I frequently asked for dreams. Apparently, there were few. Now and then, the patient said that she had again dreamt of fire or of blood. Quote, the whole room was full of fire or blood. Unquote. Occasionally she dreamt that blood was spurting out of all the orifices of her head, or she dreamt this about another patient whom she saw in a dream in her room. She did not mention any other dreams. These dreams of fire and blood seem to me to be stereotyped expressions for the dream, like the feelings of heat in her waking life mainly a symbolic expression of her way of speaking, that she had too much blood in her head, the blood was too hot, it was forty degrees, she wished she could have a good flow of blood, her whole head was on fire, everything was withered up and burnt out, etc. In the second place, these stereotyped dreams are, as usual, symbolical expressions of the complex which we have not yet clearly described. To mitigate these dreams, which were often attended with anxious dread, was my therapeutic aim, and to see whether she could forego these stereotype dreams, replacing them by something else, was my theoretical aim. I therefore determined to experiment and said to the patient, quote, Blood is red. Red signifies love. Fire is red and hot. You know the verse, no fire, no coal can burn so hot, etc., Fire also signifies love, unquote. This explanation made a strong impression on the patient. She could no longer control her laughter and was extremely embarrassed. My explanation had therefore found a re-echo. The simplicity of my dream interpretation was based on the supposition that the dream symbolism of anyone with the mentality of the patient would be simple and childish. The explanation was given in the middle of November. The following dreams occurred in the latter half of November. First dream, November 27th. Quote, the room is full of cats, which are making a horrible noise, 
unquote. During the dream, great dread and anger, further details were denied, there remained but this rather general setting. The analysis was conducted in the same way as the associations, avoiding all suggestive remarks. I obtained the first ideas that came up and only urged the patient when she seemed to be laboring under some stronger inhibition. The decline of energy before a complex thought is just the same as the absence of any reaction at critical places. In the following analysis, the conclusion is placed first and the material afterwards in small print. Anyone only interested in the conclusions can omit the material. Results of the Analysis She lived for eleven years at a place where she was frequently disturbed by the noise of cats. The noise arose from the combats of the animals when pairing. Ideas of pairing are concealed in the dream picture. Material Cats Quote, The last few nights cats were in the garden in front of my room. Otherwise I can't think of anything, absolutely nothing. Unquote. Note the strong negations, which are preparatory to intense resistance. I insist. Quote, Nothing at all occurs to me. Oh yes, once we had a fine Angora cat, which, unfortunately, was stolen from us. End quote. It is odd why such a simple reminiscence is subject to such strong inhibitions. One supposes that this reminiscence has another side of some more personal significance. I beg her to go on with her ideas. In a tone of annoyance, quote, There are lots of cats which run about in our garden, yellow, black, white, I can't make out what you want, end quote. Becomes very indignant, as if one were forcing her to something repugnant. Quote, well, nothing more occurs to me, end quote. This decided refusal had to be parried. I therefore asked her, quote, were you ever disturbed at night by cats? Unquote. Quote, no, that was impossible, for where I slept at home we could not hear the cats. As I've said, I was never disturbed by them. Then in a superficial tone, as if, by the way, quote, Oh yes, I do remember that when I was about ten or eleven, oh, no, nine years old, we were living at a place where there were always such lots of cats making such a noise at night time, we thought the house would tumble down. Sometimes there were about sixteen cats together, that made this horrible noise at night, unquote. I then asked, quote, how long did you remain in that place, unquote. Quote, eleven years from my twelfth to my twenty-third year, end of quote. The patient was now twenty-four, so for eleven years until last year she was living in a place where she was disturbed by the noise of cats. The inhibition at the reminiscences of the cats is so extremely strong that it leads her to the most obvious contradictions. It is to be noted that the patient's voice, usually so amiable and unassuming, became irritable and aggressive during the analysis. At the same time, her face grew more and more mournful until it was one of extreme suffering. It took on the mask which belonged to her disease complex. I next asked her if she knew the meaning of the nightly noise of the cats. This she indignantly denied. I insisted, but there was only instant refusal. A normally intelligent young woman of twenty-six who has herself kept cats and, moreover, has had plenty of opportunity of learning all about their habits, does certainly know the meaning of these meetings. If she is a hysteric, her ego complex may not know it but her sexual complex certainly does. Footnote 1. Refer to Blulet, Chapter 6. End of footnote. I thereupon explained to the patient that the noise meant pairing. Visible excitation followed this explanation. She did not answer, blushed, and looked out of the window. So far as concerned the dream, I said to her the cats were really symbols. She would discover the explanation later. Dreams about cats or dogs always mean something definite. The next few days, the patient frequently asked about the meaning of the dream as it interested her. Second Dream, November 30. 
Quote, the whole room is full of mice, which are running about everywhere, making a great noise. The mice look very peculiar. Their heads are bigger than ordinary mice, more like rats, but they have great black ears, and they also have remarkably brilliant hot eyes. End quote. Result of the analysis. The mice covered reminiscences about two dogs, a male and a female, which the patient has often seen playing together. She has noticed how dogs jump upon one another. She had also seen a dog standing up on a maidservant. It is again a question of pairing. Material. This dream repeats the general situation of the last one, the cats being replaced by mice, which, however, do not appear to be ordinary mice. The, quote, brilliant hot eyes, unquote, seem to be part of the fire dream. I make the patient review the text of the dream. She has nothing to add. Thoughts about the mice. Quote, it struck me that the mice all ran out of small wooden houses. Unquote. This essential modification was obviously dependent upon some inhibition and therefore could not be reproduced beforehand. Quote, the little houses look like dog kennels. Unquote. This is a new track, for dogs do not occur in the dream. But in the last dream, I called the patient's attention to dogs. The idea of, quote, dog, unquote, seemed to be hinted at indirectly, that is, repressed in the dream. So I made, quote, dog kennels, unquote, the starting point of the analysis. Ideas called up by, quote, dog kennels, unquote. Quote, there are lots of dog kennels, unquote, annoyed. Quote, I don't know what you mean. No one in our neighborhood had a dog. You can see dog kennels anywhere, in gardens and in yards. I can't understand what you can imagine about that. What could be behind that? For instance, a garden was just at the back of our house where there was a dog kennel. There were two dogs, two black ones. I think they were setters, perhaps a male and a female, but the female was soon got rid of. They used to play together. They used to tear up paper or wood or they barked, unquote. Then came a complete block with extreme ill humor. She does not want to speak anymore about dogs. After much resistance, it at last comes out that she often saw how the dog jumped upon the maidservant when she went into the garden. She vehemently denies that the male dog ever jumped upon the female. But we know that it is impossible for the patient to say certain things because the inhibitions are too strong. It is extremely probable that she did see it. That may be concluded not only from the way in which the thing was said, but from the situation as a whole. I said, quote, but one often sees a dog jumping on the back of another, unquote. Quote, yes, I've often seen that in the street, but the two dogs did not do it, unquote. I asked her what this jumping meant. She said it was a kind of play. She did not know any other meaning. The last was said in a tone of irritation. As of the last dream, so of this we may remark that it is inconceivable that she did not know the meaning. At all events, we are obliged to consider the influence of the sexual complex upon perceptions of the ego complex. In this wise, the dream may be reconstructed somewhat as follows. The mice are cover figures, which at various places are broken into by the elements of the cat dream. Mouse is a ready association to cat. The two words can replace one another in dreams, in a condition of diminished attention. Footnote 1. We have proved that in conditions of distraction, the indirect associations are increased and that some very ready or current association replaces either the stimulus word or the reaction, so that it often seems as if the stimulus word had been misheard or the reaction misspoken. See chapter 2. End of footnote. The mice, like the cats, make a noise in a room and are very numerous. The mice have big heads, so they are not really mice, but bigger animals. They have great black ears like the black setters. The mice jumped out of dog kennels. The analysis leads to a very ambiguous situation, the interpretation of which is not difficult. 
it is pairing again as in the former dream. That the dog jumps up on a maidservant seems to be a delicate hint as to the person to whom these thoughts of pairing refer. There was no such hint in the first dream. It is not unreasonable to suppose that the patient's sexual complex was aroused by the first analysis, so that she herself was more markedly dragged into the next dream. Note also that, just as in the earlier blood and fire dreams, the whole room was full of blood and fire, so here the whole room was full of cats and mice. The analysis took place on December 1st, after the third dream, which I now give. I did not inform the patient about the result of the second dream, so that at her third dream she had received no explanation about the content of dream two. Third dream, December 1st. Quote, she goes into town to a shop to buy something. A great black dog comes in which is fearfully hungry and jumps up on her as if she might be giving him something to eat. Unquote. Result of the analysis. In this dream, the patient takes the place of the servant in the previous dream, thus expressing the idea that the pairing concerns herself. Material. After the analysis of the previous dream, the form of the dream is enough to betray its meaning. The patient is now in the servant's position, so that the critical point which remained unexplained in yesterday's dream is cleared up, and exactly in the form which the patient could not understand the day before. Had she understood this symbol, it would probably not have been used, like the cats, the significance of which had been brought home to her. Thoughts about, quote, the dog jumping up, unquote. At first, as usual, we get generalities, evasions and blockages, which in order to save time, I will not repeat. Finally, the scene between the dog and the servant occurs to her. Naturally, this was the first scene that occurred to us in considering the dream. With the patient, it was different. She was seeking for a long time, as if for some memory which had been long forgotten and buried. She had first to overcome all the resistances which gathered round this reminiscence. We had not these resistances. Her dream analysis is just like the association experiment, where at critical places, exactly the same hindrances occur at a second or repeated repetition, although one would really think that a reaction obtained at such great pains would remain more fixed than an indifferent one. The same night I carried out the analysis of her chief symptoms, see below. That night she had the following dream. Fourth dream, December 2nd. She is standing in the corridor of her section and sees a great black man coming. He is leading somebody through the corridor, but she does not see whether the person led is a man or a woman. Result of the analysis. The black dog becomes a black man the scene is shifted into the asylum. The black man is the sexual complex which had formed her illness and has led the patient into the asylum. It is to no purpose that she seeks to still her craving for love by falling in love with her doctor, for he is already married. Material. In form, the dream recalls the dog scene, only the big black dog is now changed into a big black man. The servant from the dog scene the patient herself, has become indistinct. She does not know whether it is a man or a woman. The patient does not seem to participate further in the dream. We must look for her, therefore, in some dream figure, and are probably correct in supposing that she is this vague figure. Thoughts in regard to the, quote, black man, unquote. Quote, the man is coming from the entrance door as if leading someone to the section. He is dressed like a Weimrichter, whom she had once seen on the stage. He looks like a ghost, like the black man whom I once saw as I fell asleep, unquote. I asked her if she was afraid then, quote, No, I was not afraid at that. Oh, yes, I wanted to flee into a room through fear. A nurse called out, Stop, that's not allowed, the room is occupied, unquote. There was obviously an inhibition at, quote, fear, unquote. We have now led the, quote, black man, unquote, of the dream back to the, quote, black man, unquote, of her vision. 
In the vision, the black man was stretching out his hand towards her and wanting to take her, and she experienced great fear. The vision was a stereotyped, complex expression like the blood and fire dreams. It is a stable, psychical formation, which it is not very easy for analysis to overcome. The analysis does now really impinge upon powerful obstacles which the patient cannot break through. Hence, we find the way out in some combination. The black man who approaches wants to seize her and is analogous to the black hungry dog which jumps upon her. The dog had a strong sexual background which must apply also to the black man. The vision arose at the crisis of her illness when the patient had frequent thoughts of death and feared that she would die from her illness. As was hinted in the analysis of the associations, thoughts of death by no means exclude the sexual background. On the contrary, they can stand for sexuality. As we have seen from the analysis of the associations and the previous dreams, the patient is utterly possessed by a sexual complex. It is therefore highly probable that in this dream, also, there are thoughts about pairing. But we will leave this aside for the moment and consider the action of the black man more closely. At the height of her illness, she feared she would die and expressed this belief symbolically. The hand of death is stretched towards her, that is, the illness will carry her off into the grave. The black man in the dream is leading a shadowy figure into the asylum and to that section where the patient really is herself. The illness, it is true, has not brought the patient to the grave, but it has led her to the asylum. The black man arises from the sexual dog and the disease from the sexual complex. For the understanding of this sentence, we must recall all that has been established up till now. In the associations, the distinct and intense reality of her sexual complex was brought out, in the dreams, we have hitherto found nothing but metaphors for this sex complex. At first, we have the stereotype dreams of blood and fire, which are naively symbolic. They say, quote, My blood is hot. I have strong sex feelings of love. Unquote. The dreams speak of pairing. Her illness is obviously connected with the monthly periods. The patient recognizes herself that the illness is connected with the first period. Thus, everything that we have hitherto been able to establish speaks in favor of the sexual origin of the illness. What the patient is longing for is obviously the man. She would like a husband, but has an illness instead, and as long as she is ill, she cannot marry. Does she want to be ill? We know the will to be ill of the hysterics, from some ground or other, they take refuge in illness. They wish to be ill. That is a truth which is forced upon the observer in many cases of hysteria. From the asthenic nature of the patient, who for no obvious reason broke down in a simple and non-fatiguing association experiment, I could not help inclining to the view that she was at no pains to react normally or to be healthy. On the contrary, she behaved in such a way as to make one bound to see how ill she was and how slight was her interest to be well. The illness must stand for her as a hindrance to marriage. Her choice is therefore between illness and a husband, so far as her relationship to her surroundings is concerned. A choice then between the joy of sexual love and the protected mothering of a sick child which to a naively feminine disposition is not without its advantages. Some days before I had explained to her that she wanted to be ill because she dreaded marriage and health. Her dream is the answer. Scores of times I had said to her, quote, You are again fleeing into your illness. You mustn't. That's forbidden. Unquote. I said this whenever she wished to keep back something that was unpleasant to her, hiding it away behind a headache or feelings of heat. What does the dream say? Quote, a nurse called out, Stop, that's forbidden. Unquote. The nurse, therefore my representative, 
called this out when the patient wanted to rush into a room from fear of the black man. This part of the dream, as was obvious from its telling, is fraught with peculiar obstacles. It was only reproduced whilst the analysis was going on. Fear of her sex future and of all its consequences is too great to enable the patient to decide on abandoning her illness. As hitherto, she prefers to be ill, that is to say, in practice, to be nursed and cosseted by her mother. But this is not the whole of the chain of thoughts in the dream. She cannot flee into the room. It is occupied. As our analysis shows, we take it that, quote, to flee into the room, unquote, is a symbol for flight into the illness. Therefore, quote, room, unquote, equals, quote, illness, unquote. But the patient is occupied by her illness so that it cannot be occupied by someone else. But we must remember that the, quote, illness, unquote, has a double meaning. Her illness is the sex complex, the repressed sex feelings. The prohibition, therefore, runs, it is forbidden to have sex feelings because something has already, quote, taken possession, unquote, of sexuality. From want of time, I was obliged to break off the analysis here, postponing it to the next day. I had intended her to tell me what room it was in the dream. The next day, I at once asked the patient which room it was. She promptly answered, quote, Number seven, unquote. So as not to spoil anything, I asked the patient before beginning the analysis about her dreams of the previous night. She had had dreams again. Fifth dream, December 3rd. Quote, I was outside standing next to Miss L. We both saw that a house was in a blaze. Suddenly, a white figure came behind the house. We were both afraid and exclaimed as with one voice, Lord Jesus, unquote. Result of the analysis. The black man is changed into a white figure. The burning house is the sex complex. Miss L is a patient who gushes about the writer. Like the patient, she had become ill through an erotic complex. Miss L is used by the patient to express her having fallen in love with the writer. The patient has now replaced the too affectionate relationship to her mother, so harmful to her willpower, by the erotic relationship to the doctor. Material. The form of the dream shows us that by reason of our earlier explanations, the black man must now assume another garb. He is changed into a white figure, who, however, plays the same terrifying role as before. The situation is somewhat the same since the patient is suddenly prevented from doing something which she had begun. It may be presumed that in the burning house we get the ardor of her sex feelings. As a guide to the analysis, we make use of the bit of the former dream which was not concluded yesterday, the room number seven. In this room, Miss L lives, who is of the same age as the patient. This is a new starting point for the earlier dream the dream idea running like this. Quote, I go into Miss L's room. I'm doing the same as Miss L. Unquote. A marked feature of Miss L is that she is in love with the writer and that it is hopeless since he is already married. Thus, in a double sense, the patient finds the room is occupied. One, Miss L is already in love with the writer so that there is nothing left for the patient. Two, the writer is married so that any tender feelings are out of question. In today's dream, this idea of yesterday's dream is carried further. Throughout the dream, the patient is doing exactly the same as Miss L. She sees the burning house. She has therefore red-hot desires or burning love. The patient knows that Miss L became ill through an unhappy love affair. Here is a further and alluring analogy. That is why they both see the white figure alias the black man, alias the illness, suddenly emerging behind the fire, alias love, and they are both frightened, for both have become ill through love. Miss L suffers from sudden attacks of depression when she behaves quite confusedly and senselessly. 
The patient was often struck by this, and often maintained with joy that she was not so ill as to behave like that. I had often told her, our patient, that if she had allowed herself to go on much longer, she would have become much worse. In her wild jealousy of Miss L., it was easy for her to think that Miss L. had allowed herself to go further, and that was why she became so ill. This would be a further reason for, quote, room number seven, unquote. This point was not settled at the time, therefore we meet it again later on. The content of this dream throws light upon the former ones in the same kind of way. Fear of the black man, the sex future, drove her to flight in her illness, but that is forbidden. Therefore, seeking some fresh outlet, she finds it with Miss L. She falls in love with the doctor, who knows what estimate to place upon the illness. He is a man not sexually dangerous, so the dream finds a lucky compromise. It replaces her mother, who gives her tenderness but causes her illness, by a man who can cure her and is also of sexual significance. But there is a difficulty. The patient is poor and will not be able to remain much longer here because she has not enough money. Miss L., however, is very rich and can remain a long while if she wants to. So she takes Miss L.'s place and occupies the, quote, room, unquote. This rendering remained unsolved also and therefore usable. When I discussed the content of the dream in cautious terms, she made a disappointed and sad face. The explanation was obviously too crude, and said in a tone of suffering, quote, Oh, if my mother knew what things are being brought out of me, unquote. This reaction was noticeable, for these fine shades of feeling on the daughter's part were hardly noticed by her mother. But the answer portrays the cooling off and turning away of her infantile sexual need for affection from her doctor, and her return for security to her mother's love, a sure sign that the compromise was untenable and that the patient could not rid herself of her infantile relationship to her mother. Sixth Dream, December 6th, quote, My father is here, and I am showing him the asylum, and am going through all the sections with him, unquote. Result of the Analysis this satisfies her wish to be able to remain longer under the treatment of the writer whom she hopes will cure her. Material The patient states that this is only a fragment of a much longer dream of which she can remember no more. The dream is not difficult to understand. It represents an unfinished piece of yesterday's dream. In this dream, she behaves as if she were more or less at home in the asylum, I had occasionally asked her if her father was not going to visit her, whereupon she would suggest that, since she would be only here for a short time, it would not be worthwhile for her father to travel so far. In the dream, a situation is accepted, which has made the visit worthwhile. She can therefore remain longer here, which she also wished. The dream also shows the patient in an unexpected position of trust. She has the master key by which she can open all the sections, from which we must conclude that she enjoys the full special confidence of the doctors. It is not difficult to guess the meaning of this position of trust in regard to the doctor. Seventh Dream, December 6th, the same night as the last one. Quote, I am at home. My mother is at table. You, doctor, are opposite to her and are eating. There is an empty chair between you and mother. I want to sit on this empty chair and eat also. Whereupon my mother has a hot flat iron which she pushes towards me so that I get hot in the head. I tell mother she ought to put the flat iron away. It makes me hot so that I can't eat. I wanted to eat with you. You, doctor, then stand up and shriek at me. Then I need not eat now at all. I can very well eat later. Unquote. Result of the analysis. The patient is desiring a sexual affair with the doctor, hoping by this to rid herself of her mother's influence, which induces her illness. But since the doctor is married, the wish cannot be fulfilled. Therefore, she must remain ill. Material. The symbolism of this dream is very obvious. 
Through the indications obtained from dream four, we can solve it without difficulty. In that dream, we saw that she had begun to make a compromise between her infantile relationship to her mother and her sex relationship to a husband, the doctor appearing clearly in the role of husband. The animal symbolism was dropped in the latter dreams because it had been explained and had become too obvious. She must therefore create other coitus symbols. So the dream begins by the patient being at home. This is the main question which she places before me every day. Quote, how will it be when I get home? I'm afraid it will all go wrong again at home. Unquote. At home the danger means, of course, her mother, who as the too tender guardian and pattern of her early childhood had brought the patient to hysteria. The question therefore again arises concerning her life at home. Quote, Am I to play again the role of the sick child who needs a nurse? Or shall I, following the doctor's advice, courageously trust myself to a sex future? Unquote. She is therefore between doctor and mother. The doctor is eating. She would like to join him. But how far can she do the same as the doctor? There is only one possibility, and that is the one so frequently considered, marriage. She would like to sit on the chair next to me, that is, to sit at my side, which is again nothing but assimilating me in the sense of, quote, husband, unquote. Does eating stand for the conjugal function? We know the Freudian basic principle of displacement from below upwards. What takes place in the mouth, in dream, in hysteria, in dementia precox, is taking place at the genitalia. In the act of eating, something is placed in the mouth. An early case of dementia once expressed this idea in her delirium when she asked that the man she wanted as her bridegroom should give her something to eat with a spoon so that she might become pregnant and beget a child. She would like to enter into sexual relationship with the doctor, whereupon her mother makes her so hot with the flat iron so that she cannot sit down at the table. Her mother again calls up her illness, feelings of heat in her head, and so prevents her marriage. The fear that she will get worse when she goes home here plays its part. Up till now the doctor had only played a passive part. It was only her mother who was preventing her carrying out her inclination towards the doctor. But now he stands up and repulses her rudely, forbidding her to eat with him, that is, to have sexual thoughts about him, and consoles her at the same time by telling her she will be able to marry later. This passage refers to a conversation that I had with her a few days before, when I cautiously hinted that later, when she was quite well, the question of marriage would not be so difficult. We see that the patient deals again in the dream with the scene of the occupied room, plus a few variants. To this is added the deep impression which the earlier analysis had made when I pitilessly disturbed her illusions. By this refusal she finds herself thrown back upon her mother, and in the company of her mother she becomes ill because her mother does not wish her to marry. See below. Hardly had I finished this analysis when she said, quite unprompted, quote, I just recall a dream that I often used to have. I used always to dream about worms, red and white ones, the floor and the whole room was full of them, like the blood, the fire, cats, etc. It seemed, also often, as if someone was pulling an enormous worm out of my mouth. Unquote. The dream in this connection can hardly be anything else than one of those penis dreams, as frequent among normals as among the sick. Early demands often have particular neologisms for this, such as snakes, stalks of a lily, etc. The mouth is again the displacement from below upwards. It is improbable that her mother's objection to marriage was the fundamental hysterogenic event. With the patient's vivid eroticism, one would rather expect some sexual trauma. I explained to the patient that I was not yet satisfied. There was some event which she had not yet told me, which must have been of great importance. Perhaps she would disclose it in her dreams. Perhaps the event was connected with her obsession about cleanliness. 
During the next eight days, she could not remember a single dream, although she was aware that she had dreamt. During this time, I tried, as always, to get her to take an interest in some occupation and was planning with her to find some way by which she could earn something. At the end of eight days, she remembered a dream. Eighth Dream Quote, I am at home and am gathering up small gold coins on the floor. I also find some beautiful stones which I wash. I then place the money and stones on the kitchen table and show them to my brothers. End quote. Result of the analysis. The patient is thinking about returning home. She has various good resolutions and is thinking that she may find in her family, particularly among her brothers, compensation for her impossible relationship to the doctor. But the background of the dream remained unexplained. Material. In this dream, she realizes that she will be earning money in the future. The, quote, beautiful stones, unquote, are a new factor. She washes them, a cleanliness obsession, and shows her brothers what she has washed on the kitchen table. This perhaps is called up by the dining table. The analysis only resulted in generalities. The strongest obstacles prevented any deeper penetration into this dream. What are the brothers doing at the kitchen table? Do they perhaps stand for the doctor at the dining table of the earlier dream? I could not solve the question. Eleventh Dream, December 12th. Quote, I go for a walk in Zurich, but suddenly it is my home. In front of my house, I see standing a rural policeman who is speaking to some shadowy-looking man. The policeman has a fearfully sad expression and goes into the house. Then Miss L. suddenly goes along the street, also with a fearfully sad expression. Then we are together in a room and sitting at a dining table. Suddenly we know there is a fire. Miss L. says, I'm going to bed now. I can't make that out at all, rush into the corridor, but then it appears nothing is the matter. It was only a false alarm. I now go in again and find myself at home with mother, and my two brothers are also there. A basket with splendid apples is there. One brother says, that's something else for me. End quote. Result of the analysis. Like Miss L., the patient is disappointed in her expectation about love. She understands this in Miss L., whose minor defects she mockingly emphasizes. Therefore she goes home, where she enters into a suspiciously intimate relationship with one of her brothers. Material The general situation of the dream resembles that of Dream 7. There is again the appearance of the dining or kitchen table, in the first part of the dream, there is a, quote, policeman, unquote, with a fearfully sad expression. Immediately thereupon, Miss L. appears with the same traits. The policeman goes into a house, whereupon the patient is eating together with Miss L. in a room. Obviously, Miss L. and the policeman stand for one another. Why and how is it that Miss L. is changed into a policeman? I ask her about any striking characteristics of Miss L. She replies that Miss L. has such peculiar ways she is only half a woman. Besides, she is very thin. In Switzerland, we have a long, thin sausage which we call a, quote, dried-up policeman, unquote. Footnote 1. Refer to our English term soldier for a red herring. End of footnote. This word is also used as a nickname for thin people. The patient has symbolized the less striking sides of Miss L. The reason for her doing this is seen in the fact that the policeman is speaking to a shadowy man. When Miss L. is speaking to a man in a dream, that man is certain to be the writer. Probably the patient is therefore jealously emphasizing Miss L.'s feelings for the writer and depreciating Miss L., then she sits down at table with Miss L. That is, she enters into some sexual situation with her. We are not to think, however, of anything homosexual, for the sexual significance of, quote, dining table, unquote, has already been exploited for the doctor. 
Thus it would be too obvious. Here it merely means, quote, I have sexual feelings like Miss L., unquote. The alarm of fire which follows has the same meaning. The patient goes out to see what is happening, but Miss L. goes to bed, that is, becomes ill from love. To understand this, it must be known that whenever Miss L. gets excited, she goes to bed. At the beginning of the dream, the patient depreciates her rival, and as soon as the sexual situation, the fire alarm, develops, Miss L. even becomes ill, and hence quite innocuous. So the rival is overcome. But the patient now finds that it is only a false alarm. That is the disappointment. Quote, the room is occupied, unquote. Quote, she cannot join in eating, unquote. The writer has destroyed her illusions. The transference of her need for affection towards a man has not succeeded. So she must go back to her mother where at least she will find an equivalent for her need of love. So the scene changes in the second part of the dream. She is suddenly at home. Instead of at the dining table, she is in the kitchen with her mother. Were it only a question of her relationship to her mother, her brothers would be superfluous. But two brothers are here, as in dream eight, at the kitchen table. Instead of the, quote, beautiful stones, unquote, there is only a basket with, quote, beautiful apples, unquote. One brother says, quote, that's something else for me, unquote. The scene of the dining table in Dream 7, like the one in this dream with Miss L, is scarcely susceptible of other than a sexual meaning. And immediately following the sexual scene, we get a very similarly constructed picture, quote, dining table, unquote, being replaced by, quote, kitchen, unquote. First of all, the beautiful apples look like the quote, beautiful stones, unquote, which lay on the kitchen table. And secondly, they are also something edible, compare with Eve's apple. That is, something for the brother, he gets something. We must realize this picture. In the first part of the dream, a sexual wish is destroyed. The second part can hardly refer to her mother only. Some sexual element plays a part somewhere. I asked for her thoughts about the, quote, apples, unquote. Quote, I thought about the apples, which I saw yesterday in a shop where they sell southern fruits. I was there with your wife, unquote. This opens up a track. The analysis now stops and cannot be further followed up. So I go to the brother, quote, it was my brother who lives in Italy, he has often invited me to make a journey to Italy and pay him a visit, unquote. Recall here reaction 25, test 6. Travel. Patient supposed a nice journey to Italy, honeymoon journey. Her brother had no share in that, and yet the apples are intended for him. Here I must add a dream which the patient had right at the beginning of her treatment. She dreamt that I came into the room, and she said to me, quote, It's a pity we can't gather the nuts yet, but at home there is a whole basket full, unquote. In this dream, she offers me the fruit, nuts. Nuts are hard stones. They have to be opened to be eaten. We recall the, quote, beautiful stones, unquote. The, quote, splendid apples, unquote, which are now intended for her brother. What her erotic hopes at first promised me is now given to her brother after she has turned away from me. Here I think there is obviously something connected with the brother which proceeds from some brother-sister relationship. The importance of the brother to his sister seems suspicious, compare with kiss, sisterly kiss. And we cannot forbear the suspicion that here is something we have long sought which might explain much if it could be known. Footnote 1. We may also recall that in the dream of the occupied room, it is said, quote, stop, that's forbidden, unquote. Perhaps this expression became fixed because it aroused a complex and expressed something of great significance to the patient. End of footnote.
some adventure of childhood where her brother played some role which left a deep impression seems to lie at the root of this, a Freudian trauma. The secret was, however, well guarded, and the analysis brought out nothing. I only communicated the results of the analysis very superficially to the patient so as to avoid giving any hints of a sexual nature. I wish to prevent an explanation of the symbolism leading to greater concealment in the next dream. The inner development of the patient which this dream suggested, that is, the alienation from the writer, the renunciation of his standpoint, and the invalidation of his advice and teaching, manifested itself, apart from any objective setback, in the important fact that she now began dreaming of fire and blood. She, quote, heard the fire horn every night. The alarm was raised, unquote. The time for her departure was now fast approaching, and I was hoping for some decisive dream, but she did not remember any more dreams with the exception of the fire dreams, save for a small fragment which said nothing on the morning of the day she was to leave. I asked her, as usual, if she had dreamt. She said, quote, yes, unquote, but quickly added, quote, but I know already what the dream means. I saw it at once, but I couldn't tell it to you. It is something about earlier times which I can perhaps only tell mother, unquote. All my requests were fruitless. She maintained it was something of a kind that she could only tell her mother. Finally, I said to her, quote, then it's a very unpleasant sexual matter, unquote. She did not answer, but stared out of the window. More, I dared not. So, unfortunately, our dream analysis and the analysis of the illness as a whole remained incomplete at this point, which seems, however, narrowly circumscribed. Summary of the Dream Analysis Although none of the dreams reached the complete understanding that was wished, and the last broke off at an important point, we have obtained a series of valuable suggestions. We see that the dreams fully confirm the complex of the association tests. The associations exhibited an intense sexual complex, and the dreams, it may be said, treat only of the theme of pairing. We recognize that the complexes which constellate the associations of her waking life constellate likewise her dreams. The dream analysis presents the same obstacles that occurred in the association experiment. By the analysis of the dreams, the sex complex was made clear. Its displacement to the writer, the disappointment and the falling back of the patient upon her mother, and again, the resumption of some mysterious childhood relationship to her brother. The next section shows the sex complex and the hysterical symptom as the cause of her illness. End of section 41. Read by Steve Hazard, August 31st, 2021. Section 42 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Steve Hazard. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Section 3. The Hysterical Symptom it remains to turn the knowledge gleaned in the two previous sections as to the form and content of her sex complex to the symptoms of her illness. We will begin with the St. Vitus's Dance. According to the anumnesis as given by the patient, this simply began from reasons unknown. She answered all questions as to its origin in the negative and it seemed as if it were impossible to arrive at the cause because this was unknown to the patient. But we know fully the resistances which are put forth to the reproduction of all complex ideas. 
Hysterics are only able to carry out mental introspection insofar as indifferent matters are dealt with. Where it is the question of a complex, they are powerless. The complex does not belong entirely to the hierarchy of the ego, conscious ideas. By reason of its powerful emotional tone, it is, like moreover every strong effect, more or less autonomous, and drives the association in its direction even when the ego complex strives to think and to act in its own way. For this reason, we cannot reproduce intimate things with the same certainty and quietness that we can objective things. The impetus to the concealment of intimate things can amount to an almost total incapability of reproduction, as we saw in the case given in Chapter 7. To obtain information from a hysteric about intimate things, about a complex, we must make a flank attack. Freud has built this into a method. It is psychoanalysis. First of all, we liberate all the general cover ideas which stand in any kind of associated, often symbolical, relationship to the complex ideas. And then we gradually approach the complex from different sides. At bottom, the method is the same as used by a clever examiner towards some shy candidate. The candidate cannot answer specific and direct questions. He is too excited. So the examiner first gets answers to a series of general and easy questions where the emotional feeling is not so great, and then the desired answer comes of itself. Were I to ask the patient directly as to the cause of her St. Vitus's dance, I should get nothing. I therefore first obtain her answers to simple indifferent questions and arrive at the following. She liked going to school and liked her teachers. She did not like all the lessons, although she does not recollect that there were any which she especially disliked or that there were any teachers she especially disliked. She did not like the writing lesson. Indeed, she disliked going to these. It was during a writing lesson, her second school year, that her right hand first began to tremble. The trembling grew gradually stronger so that she was unable to write, so she had to miss the writing lesson. Then the tremors began in her right leg, so that very shortly she could not go to school at all. Thus the St. Vitus's dance gradually arose. She remembered also that she could not help crying fearfully and was afraid to go into the streets when it rained, so that she often missed school on this account. The attacks were sometimes stronger, sometimes weaker, so that some days she could go to school, sometimes she couldn't. In her twelfth year, the illness became so extreme that she had to give up school altogether. I think that this narrative brings out clearly enough that the patient was an extremely pampered child who used every opportunity to stop away from school, as if on purpose to cut out the hated writing lesson, the tremors began in the right arm, and finally these served to keep the child away altogether. The patient admits that when she took the trouble, she could suppress the tremor, but it suited her to be ill. It seemed to me instructive that at the beginning of the analysis, she spoke with uncertainty of her feelings about her school recollections. At first, it seemed to her that she liked going to school. Then we got the feeling expressed that it was not quite so, and then we got the exact contrary which corresponds to the facts. This inconsequential way of revealing herself points to method in her, reference the earlier analyses. There is nothing to show that the patient was conscious of this inconsistency. On the contrary, it seemed that she believed everything she said at the time of saying it. The school complex, the well-known phenomenon in all asthenic children, led to the formation of a hysterical symptom. It is understandable that the success of an automatism affords a suitable 
locus minoris resistantiae, out of which other automatisms can be developed. The day after this analysis, her tone had changed again. She maintained that she could not say she disliked going to school. She quite liked going. School never made any special impression upon her. Other events occupied her much more. For example, that once a teacher, female, violently quarreled with her. Here again we get the same uncertainty and inconsequence. The St. Vitus's dance got worse in her twelfth year. This was the year when, according to the analysis, the recollections of the sexual cat dreams were produced. In the twelfth year, the first feelings of puberty become distinct in many girls, and they begin to be interested in sexual matters. But her twelfth year had still another significance for the patient. In reference to the mother complex, the following was obtained. It occurred to her, after a long pause, her mother was so ill and still so contented and jolly, if she could only be like that. Her mother always used to say that her osteomalacia came from being married, but she had become ill twenty-eight years ago, and the doctors say the disease is now curable. These remarks caused me to ask, quote, has that any meaning for you? Unquote. Quote, None. I can't think of any meaning it would have for me. I have never thought about it. Unquote. I threw out that it was just possible she had the idea that she might inherit such a disease. Quote, she had never feared that. In spite of that, she could have married. Unquote. I remarked that some kind of fear like that had perhaps arisen at the time of her first period. Quote, That's impossible, for my mother had said to me long before I was twelve years old that I ought not to marry or I might get the same illness. Unquote. We may conclude from this remark that in her twelfth year there were conversations of far-reaching sexual significance which must have made a strong impression upon the patient to judge from the strength of the resistance with which she sought to hide the explanation of this point. At any rate, we find in her twelfth year one of the first components of her sex complex. The first period had two complexes before it, one having a fully developed automatism, the other one associated with sex feelings. The possibility of the transposition of this decisive event into a hysterical symptom is given, but not the necessity for it. For the non-ability to marry seems insufficient. One requires the existence of some event which would prepare the way for the repression of the sex complex, some sexual event of childhood. This would be the right place for a sexual trauma at which the dream seems to hint. With her menstrual period, a new phase in her existence begins, the sexual. It is not surprising that the school complex gives place to the sex complex, although only apparently so. As we have seen, it is still present in the associations, forming a wound which is still scarred and kept up by self-reproaches. That her school complex, the St. Vitus's dance, is still potentially present is seen from the following. One day she felt particularly bad. She described the feelings of heat as unendurable. Whilst speaking, her right arm twitched from time to time, then her left arm. I drew her attention to these movements. Then her legs began slowly to tremble, and she said, quote, It is only with great trouble that I pull myself together, that I am not hitting all round me like before. I've the greatest desire to do it, unquote. We see that at a moment when her energy is quite slackened, the old automatisms are again ready to break forth, a confirmation of Janet's theory. 
Abaisement du niveau mental is accompanied by a flaring up of the automatism. Her first period supplied the provocation for the origin of her present difficulties, feelings of heat in the head and neck, feelings as if there was nothing but blood in the head, that her blood was forty degrees. Her hands, feet, and body are cold. With these feelings, there are always the same obsessional ideas. She is compelled to imagine that she is bleeding from the nose, from all the orifices of her head. She imagines that clots of the blood which came at her first period are in her head. She is always wanting a whole basin of blood to come away from her head. This peculiar symptom complex is undoubtedly referable to her period. It is nothing else than, quote, a displacement from below upwards, unquote. Freud. The mechanism for this displacement is present in the patient. We have already seen it unmistakably in her dreams. The heat, blood and fire in the dream, is certainly the sexual heat which occurs at the period. The periods have stopped for some months after having been previously very irregular. Distinct meteorism arose and a posture which made the lower half of the abdomen more prominent. For Freud, these are imaginary symptoms of pregnancy. Psychological experience speaks to the same effect. In any erotic expectation complex in a young woman, the child plays a definite part in the associations and dreams. Footnote 1 For example, the somnambulic fantasies of the case described in the, quote, psychology and pathology of so-called occult phenomena, unquote, in collected papers on analytical psychology by C.G. Young. Authorized translation edited by Dr. Constance C. Long. London, Bellier, Tyndall, and Cox. End of footnote. It will be recalled that this takes place also in the associations of our patient. Pregnancy has, moreover, for the patient the particular significance of the danger of osteomalacia, a significance that must be repressed. But I cannot adduce any positive evidence from this case in favor of Freud's views. The following symptomatic actions are probably dependent upon sex feelings. 1. The constant seeking for cooling. 2. The cold ablutions. 3. The repugnance to meat in any form. 4. The inability to sit down. 5. The predilection for gymnastic exercises in her room, accompanied by aversion from all other physical exercises. These symptomatic actions correspond exactly to the popular hygienic ideas for decreasing sexual excitement. Positive evidence of the repression of sexual feelings is found in her consequent and obstinate circumlocution in all sex questions. As soon as the examination touched anything related to sex, a full stop was reached and we were generally left with invincible resistances. On theoretical grounds, I was able to be convinced by careful questioning that the patient was correctly informed about sex matters, but she could not tell me whence came her knowledge and stubbornly denied ever having read anything on the subject or hearing anything from anybody. She simply knew it. Just before the conclusion of the treatment, she admitted, after long hesitancies, that once a girlfriend had explained things to her when she was twelve years old. This only serves to show again how strong were the barriers which guarded her sex secrets. I need not go any further into the visions. They have been explained through the analysis of the dreams. The course of improvement was tedious, with frequent relapses. Her energy visibly improved so that her ability to work gradually extended to four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Previously, she was exhausted by ten o'clock in the morning. 
She was again able to read and do normal work, but the feelings of heat remained, although they seemed less intense. In the third month of her treatment, she began not to speak about them anymore to me. She expressed surprise that latterly she had had such frequent depressions, the cause of which she could not understand. Formerly, if anything unpleasant happened, she had no depression but increased feelings of heat. But the patient still spoke about her feelings of heat to my assistant, a lady doctor. After the dream about the dining table where I had cleared up her relationship towards me, the earlier nomenclature returned with me also. She heard the fire alarm in the dreams, and several times, especially in the last week of her sojourn here, the black man returned. He had disappeared after her first analysis. The dream analysis explains these recrudescences. The patient could not give vent to her inmost secret. The sexual compromise, as regards myself, had failed. In me, she could obviously find nothing beyond the sexual as to make it worthwhile to depart from her role of invalid. Unable to tear herself away from her secret, she was obliged to remain with the repressed meaning of the feelings of heat. She was thus driven back to her earlier symptoms and to the corresponding terminology, thus assuring herself that my explanations were all lies, for she could not acknowledge that I was right. This would have jeopardized the apparent genuineness of her illness. About a month after her departure, her doctor wrote to me, that she was as bad as before, and that she was full of abuse of the asylum and the doctor, with hints that the doctor had only sought opportunities to have immoral conversations with her. Her morbid personality, that is, her sexual complex, thus entrenched itself behind an aggressive defense. The complex discredited the doctor's morality as far as possible in order to obtain the normal mental equilibrium. The automatism of the disease creates in this wise a free path for its unimpeded development, for every complex has the urge to live itself out unrestrained. Summary The complex discovered in the associations is the root of the dreams and of the hysterical symptoms. The disturbances caused by the complex in the association experiment are but the resistances found by Freud in psychoanalysis. The mechanisms of repression are the same in the association experiment as in dreams and hysterical symptoms. In hysteria, the complex has an abnormal autonomy and leads to an active separate existence which progressively degrades and destroys the constellating power of the ego complex. A new morbid personality is then gradually created whose tendencies, judgments, and resolutions proceed entirely in the direction of the will to disease. The remainder of the normal ego is absorbed by the second personality and forced into the role of a secondary dominated complex. A practical treatment of hysteria must endeavor to strengthen the normal rest of the ego, which is best done by introducing a new complex, which shall free the ego from the dominance of the morbid complex. End of section 42. Read by Steve Hazard. September 7th, 2021. Section 43 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M.D. Ader. Chapter 10. On Disturbances in Reproduction in Association Experiments The reproduction method which I first described in a short communication in 1905, Sandro Blatt, 
for Nervenheilkunde und Psychiatry has been recently subjected to frequent criticism. Being overwhelmed with other work, I was unfortunately unable till now to supplement my former incomplete communication by means of the statistical results. In 1905, I maintained, if after completing about 100 word associations, the subject is requested to repeat the answers to each stimulus word separately, and any of the following conditions occur. One, memory fails at certain places. Two, the form of reaction word is not given at all. Three, it is given incorrectly. Four, there is silence. Five, it is reproduced with great hesitation. The analysis of the associations distorted in any of these ways in reproduction proved that in most cases this failure was constellated by a complex. As most investigators in this branch seem disinclined to recognize the slightest heuristic value in Freud's psychoanalytic method, I am, unfortunately, debarred from taking the shortest way, which would simply be to give the analyses in support of that statement. In order to exclude that subjective factor in analysis, which is so much feared, there remains no course other than to separate out the objective signs of the complex constellations, the complex indicators, and their relation to the failure in reproduction. This will be untainted evidence. I discovered the complex indicators empirically in the analysis. I saw that in the associations which were distinguished by certain indications, a complex was, as a rule, constellating with particular strength and had sometimes led to a disturbing interference. If these indicators are really characteristic, i.e., if the analytic method has led to a correct result, which will stand proof, the indicators must be in close relation to one another. They will recur, preferably at certain associations. For instance, at failures in reproduction and at delayed reactions. If that is not the case, and if the complex indicators are distributed without any selection of the whole test, Analysis will have led us to a false conclusion. In my former communication, I mentioned further that, one, the failures in reproduction have occasionally an arithmetical mean time, which exceeds the general arithmetical mean, one example. Two, the failures in reproduction are apparently as frequent at the critical as at the post-critical reactions. Three, Occasionally, there is a tendency to disturbances in reproduction, which may be serial or isolated. Four, the theory of this phenomenon was sought in the general characteristics of the complex. I there emphasized one characteristic, repression, Freud, because this seemed to me peculiarly well-fitted to explain the inhibition to correct reproduction. The chief characteristic of the complex is, at all events, its relative autonomy, which may find expression in two directions, by increased emphasis and stability in consciousness, and by repression, that is, resistance to reproduction in the unconscious. Hence, the associations which belong to the complex lack the flexibility of the remaining and more indifferent psychic material. This only holds good of the case when the special complex is inhibited and cannot reach reproduction. The complex itself naturally has complete command of its material. It is even hypermonastic. This reference of the disturbance in reproduction to a more general psychological peculiarity seems to me a helpful explanation. Obviously, the hypothesis is not true of all cases. For one must be first sure that all external sources of disturbance, accidental, have been entirely excluded. My hypothesis is only true for the majority of cases, and, speaking generally, for the majority of complex indicators also. 5. 
the complexes exhibited in the association experiment have usually a tone of unpleasure, so that the exceptional condition in which the complex stands during the test may be well qualified as repression. I must now prove in detail the fundamental principles of this conception, that is, that the disturbances in reproduction are complex indicators and agree as a whole with the other complex indicators. The method adopted for obtaining this proof is not quite simple, for we must remember that the disturbance in reproduction, like all complex indicators, is no necessary accompaniment of the complex. Furthermore, like the other complex indicators, it is not exclusively linked to the critical places, but can arise also in the subsequent reactions. The commonest complex indicator is the reaction time, disturbance in reproduction and reaction time. The readiest method of comparison would be simply to compare the arithmetical mean time of the failures in reproduction with the arithmetical mean of all times or all the rest of the times. But this method would be only adequate if the disturbances in reproduction agreed with the two long times. But that is not the case at all. The relationships are much more complicated. The following very different cases occur. One, critical reaction with too long time, disturbance in reproduction. Two, critical reaction with too long time, post-critical reaction with disturbance in reproduction. Three, critical reaction with disturbance in reproduction, post-critical reaction with too long time. Four, post-critical reaction with too long time. Disturbance in reaction. 5. Disturbance in reaction at a critical and post-critical reaction. Two limb series of disturbances. 6. Disturbance in reproduction at a critical reaction and at three or more subsequent reactions. Three or four limb series of disturbances. The method has to take account of these complicated relationships. In Chapter 5, I made use of the probable mean for the definition of the too long reaction time, with due regard to the fact that the arithmetical mean, as a rule, is disproportionately high in consequence of the influence of the exceedingly long times. These cannot be compensated by exceedingly short times, for the reaction time is only infinitely variable at the top. The probable mean, therefore, gives, on the whole, a far better picture of the average rapidity of the reaction. Whatever exceeds this average should be regarded, as a rule, as not quite normal. But the probable mean should be only used for long series of figures. It becomes too inexact otherwise, for it is considerably affected by slight accidents. In small series of numbers, we must use the arithmetical mean. I start, therefore, from the probable mean of the whole test, and first of all, count how many reaction times with absence of reproduction exceed, how many agree with, and how many are below the probable mean. If any previous suppositions are correct, we should expect to find that the majority of disturbances in reproduction exceed the probable mean. Those disturbances in reproduction which exceed or are below the probable mean may be perseverations and may directly follow a too long time. In these cases, the reaction time immediately preceding cannot be examined. Properly speaking, the reaction time immediately following should be investigated because the prolongation of time might only follow afterwards but that would take us very far. I have hitherto not attempted this examination because it seemed to me that such cases are not very frequent. We will first see how far we get with the above two methods. Be it noted that in these methods, my subjectivity is entirely excluded. This makes any re-examination perfectly safe. 
The material selected as the basis of my investigation consists of 28 cases, which were all picked out considerably earlier and for a purpose quite other than the examination of this particular question. Rather less than a third was selected by myself. The other two-thirds were selected by various assistants, some of them many years previously. Among the persons tested, there were only three mentally healthy. The others were nervous and mental patients of different kinds and of the most diverse reaction type. The material is thus as varied as could be desired, presenting the fewest possible chances of any uniformity in the results. I summarize the results in the following table. Association reproductions with absence of reproduction. G. Heberphrenia. 100 associations. Probable mean PM equals 8.5. Arithmetical mean AM equals 9. 35% failures in reproduction. FR. Above the probable mean, 22. At the probable mean, 5. Under the probable mean, 8. The figures in these two columns, 1 and 2, give the arithmetical mean of the reaction times of the associations immediately preceding the reproductions that failed. 1. The associations in reproduction absent at the probable mean. 2. For those that were absent below the probable mean. 1. 10.6. 2. 12.5. A. Moral Insanity. 100 associations, PM 12.30, AM 15.2, 45% FR, above the probable mean, blank, at the probable mean, 6, under the probable mean, 9, 1, 14.1, 2, 10.2. R, female, heberphrenia, 100 associations, PM 13.5, AM 20.6, 15% FR. Above the probable mean, 11. At the probable mean, blank. Under the probable mean, 4. 1, blank, 2, 11.7. P, paranoia. 100 associations, PM 11, AM 12.9, 22% FR. Above the probable mean, 13. At the probable mean, 2. Under the probable mean, 7. 1, 13. 2, 13.2. H. Catatonia. 100 associations. PM 22, AM 30.3. 53% FR. Above the probable mean, 33. At the probable mean, 1. Under the probable mean, 19. 1, 25, 2, 31. G, female, hysteria and imbecility. 50 associations, PM 14, AM 17, 16% FR. Above the probable mean, 6. At the probable mean, blank. Under the probable mean, 2. 1, blank, 2, 16. W. Female. Dementia precox. 100 associations. PM 10.5. AM 11.3. 53% FR. Above the probable mean 29. At the probable mean blank. Under the probable mean 24. 1 blank 2 10.2. G. Organic feeble-mindedness, 100 associations, PM 47, AM 57, 67% FR. Above the probable mean 34, at the probable mean 2, under the probable mean 31, 1, 165, 2, 67.4. Z, female, dementia precox. 100 associations, PM 10, AM 14.4, 51% FR. 
above the probable mean 32, at the probable mean 6, under the probable mean 13, 1, 14, 2, 16.7. H, female, dementia precox, 100 associations, PM 10, AM 11.5. 41% FR, above the probable mean 22, at the probable mean 5, under the probable mean 14, 1, 9, 2, 10.3, V, imbecility, 100 associations, PM 11, AM 11.1, 28% FR, above probable mean 16, at the probable mean 5, under the probable mean 7, 1, 10.2, 2, 16.1. E, moral insanity, 100 associations, PM 15, AM 18.1, 30% FR. Above the probable mean 21, at the probable mean 5, under the probable mean 4. 1, 17.8, 2, 18. K, female, dementia precox, 100 associations, PM 17, AM 21.8, 38% FR. Above the probable mean, 23, at the probable mean, blank. Under the probable mean, 15, 1, blank, 2, 24.4. K, Female Dementia Precox, 100 Associations, PM5, AM7.1, 25% FR. Above the Probable Mean, 18. At the Probable Mean, 4. Under the Probable Mean, 3. 1, 4.7, 2, 9.6. A. Paranoia, 100 Associations. PM 13.5, AM 13.9, 14% FR, above the probable mean. 7, at the probable mean, blank. Under the probable mean, 7, 1, blank, 2, 10.4. B, psychopathia, 113 associations, PM 18, AM 19.5. 27.4% FR, above the probable mean, 16, at the probable mean, 2, under the probable mean, 13, 1, 19, 2, 17.6. S, catatonia, 100 associations, PM 11, AM 14.3, 32% FR, above the probable mean, Above the probable mean, 24. At the probable mean, 3. Under the probable mean, 5. 1, 11.6, 2, 16.6. H, imbecility. 104 associations. PM 18, AM 30.4. 27.8% FR. Above the probable mean, 14. At the probable mean, 4. Under the probable mean, 11, 1, 56.7, 2, 24.4. S, psychopathia, 100 associations, PM 12, AM 17.4, 37% FR. Above the probable mean, 26, at the probable mean, 4, under the probable mean, 7, 1, 19, 2, 16.4. R, dementia precox, 50 associations, PM 32, AM 38.3, 36% FR, above the probable mean 14, at the probable mean 2, under the probable mean 2, 1, 12.5, 2, 33.5. R, female cerebral syphilis. 100 associations, PM 14, AM 17.3, 46% FR, above the probable mean 23, 
at the probable mean 3, under the probable mean 20, 1, 12.6, 2, 15.3, S, imbecility, 100 associations, PM 26, AM 37.5, 21% FR, above the probable mean 13, at the probable mean blank, under the probable mean 8, 1, blank, 2, 55.8, J, female, normal, 100 associations, PM7, AM7.9, 8% FR, above the probable mean, 8, at the probable mean, blank, under the probable mean, blank, 1, blank, 2, blank, H, alcoholism and imbecility, 100 associations, PM10.5, AM13.5, 37% FR, above the probable mean, 28, at the probable mean, blank, under the probable mean, 9, 1, blank, 2, 13.3, P, normal, 100 associations, PM7, AM7.9, 33% FR, above the probable mean, 20, at the probable mean, 6. Under the probable mean, 7. 1, 7.7. 2, 8.6. A, normal. 100 associations. PM7, AM7.8. 15% FR. Above the probable mean, 11. At the probable mean, blank. Under the probable mean, 4. 1, blank. 2, 8.1. S, moral insanity, 100 associations, PM 12, AM 13.9, 40% FR. Above the probable mean, 27, at the probable mean, 2, under the probable mean, 11, 1, 9, 2, 13.3. W, neurasthenia. 100 associations, PM 15, AM 17.2, 31% FR, above the probable mean 21, at the probable mean 1, under the probable mean 9, 1, 9, 2, 16.8. We may conclude from these figures that, on the average, 62.2% of the absent reproductions lie as regards the reaction times, above the probable mean, 7.5% coincide with it, and 30.2% are below it. This agrees with expectation. On the average, 33% of the associations were not reproduced. The mean time of the two last columns must be considered with the critique mentioned above. They contain cases of very different import. As we have said, we have only taken note of the reaction time which immediately preceded the disturbance in reproduction, and that, moreover, only in those cases where the disturbed reproduction itself was below the general mean time. But it is quite possible that the disturbance in reproduction is itself no perseveration, but takes place at the critical reaction with a short reaction time and that the long reaction time only follows subsequently. This occurrence would make the results much worse, so we must here work with minimal figures. Still the time of the disturbed reproductions here under review exceeds, on the average, the common probable mean by 7.8 and the common arithmetical mean by 4.1. The values which form the basis of this calculation vary extraordinarily. The series of figures of the last column are more uniform and yield richer material, but are subject to the same consideration as the figures of the last column but one. We find here also that, on the average, the reaction time which precedes this disturbance in reproduction exceeds by 4.2 the probable mean, and by 0.4 the arithmetical mean. 
we must remember that the arithmetical mean tends to be displaced upwards out of all proportion, as our figures sufficiently demonstrate. In my opinion, these figures also speak in favor of, not against, expectation, if it be remembered how infinitely complicated psychical processes are and how difficult to control, especially in the region of association. We cannot help being astonished at the relative regularity of the results, which are not to be impugned by an incomplete scheme. Disturbances in series and reaction time. In my material, 63.9% of all failures in reproduction are arranged in series. This fact shows that there is every reason to relate the failure to the complex, for the complex with its perseveration is in the association experiment a factor par excellence for the formation of series, just as it is in ordinary psychological life, which according to the opinion of some ought not to be brought into connection with psychology at all. If this deduction from analogy is correct, the serial disturbances should exhibit the same complex indicators as the series of complexes, that is, before all, delayed time. Not to accumulate tables unnecessarily, I omit the tables of the individual series. The percentage numbers already furnished show that the material is large enough for statistical averages. The number of disturbances in reproduction, which serve as the foundation of these statistics, amounts to rather over 600. We calculate the arithmetical mean of all failures in reproduction associations, which follow directly on one another, and we compare the mean figure with the individual probable mean and arithmetical mean of the subject in question. Two limb series of disturbances are, on the average, 7.7 .7 above the PM. Two limb series of disturbances are, on the average, 3.6 above the AM. Three limb series of disturbances are, on the average, 9.6 above the PM. Three limb series of disturbances are, on the average, 6.3 above the AM. Four limb series of disturbances are, on the average, 11.6 above the PM. Four limb series of disturbances are, on the average, 6.4 above the AM. Five limbed and over series of disturbances are, on the average, 6.7 above the PM. Five limbed and over series of disturbances are, on the average, 2.4 above the AM. There is a rise of the time values up to the series of 4. Series of 5 and over are again lower. This result does not agree badly with the analytical considerations. We not infrequently find a strong complex, perseverating over three or more terms, with a final stepladder-like decrease of the reaction times. The stronger the complex that is aroused, the stronger become cum grano salis, the disturbances preceding from it. In longer series, however, which are also much rarer, other kinds of experimental disturbances often enter into play. We can summarize the foregoing by saying the main disturbance in reproduction occurs at a too long reaction time. If it does not coincide with this, the previous reaction time is wont to be too long in the majority of cases. The question as to the subsequent reaction time we leave unsolved, as it is of slighter importance. Another method, perhaps even more instructive, can be used to demonstrate the higher time values of the series of disturbances. Taking the 24 cases with well-developed series, I arrange them in two classes, one with another, in the following way. First, I take those series which begin with the reaction time, longer than the association immediately preceding, e.g., 
association correctly reproduced. 9, 10, 6, 12. First disturbance, 10, 82, 92, 35. Second disturbance, 8, 15, 15, 16. Third disturbance, 6, blank, 8, 16. Fourth disturbance, 6, blank, blank, blank. Association correctly reproduced at the end of the series. 7, 11, 8, 14, and so on. In this way, I arranged 119 series of this class, one upon another, added together the individual columns, and divided by the number of the terms of the sum. The second class relates to those series where the disturbance first set in, with a reaction time that is shorter than the association, correctly reproduced, that immediately preceded. For comparison, I take the reaction time of the two previous associations. It is a matter of indifference whether this is correctly or incorrectly reproduced. I have excluded from the calculation all those complicated by faults, although such series would have supported my results much more strongly. This class can be thus summarized. Previous association, 14, 12, 8. Correct reproduction with increased time, 17, 15, 40. First disturbance, 8, 13, 12. Second disturbance, 21, 55, 20. Third disturbance, blank, 12, blank. Correct reproductions at end of series, 10, 13, 9, and so on. There were 56 series in this category. A few series with the correct reproduction and the first disturbance in the series had the same reaction time I have divided equally among the two classes. The results are as follows, given in the arithmetical mean and in one-fifth seconds. Class 1, correct reproduction, 14.8. First disturbance, 37.2. Second disturbance, 22.8. Third disturbance, 23.9. Fourth disturbance, 33. Fifth disturbance, 27. Correct reproduction at end of series, 17.9. Class 2. Previous association, 18.3. Correct reproduction with long RT, 22.5. First disturbance, 13.3. Second disturbance, 22.7. Third disturbance, 30. Footnote. I omit the fourth and subsequent disturbances because they are based upon too small a series of figures, under 20. But they are all considerably above the general arithmetical mean. For this reason alone, that the number and the series of disturbances in reproduction frequently increase with the length of the reaction time. End of footnote. Correct reproduction at end of series, 17.6. The average arithmetical mean time of the 24 cases made use of here amounts to 19.8. We thus see that with one exception, all the times considerably exceed this mean. The exception is in those disturbances in reproduction class 2, which immediately follow on a longer time. Disturbances in reproduction and probable mean time. If, as seems proved by this investigation, the disturbance in reproduction occurs chiefly in connection with the two long times, we may venture to suppose that the number of disturbances increases with the longer individual mean times. That seems, at least, to be the fact in my limited material. With a p.m. time of 5 to 10, there are, on the average, disturbances in reproduction 29.7. With a p.m. time of 10.5 to 15, there are, on the average, disturbance reproduction 31.8. With a p.m. time 15.5 to 20, there are, on the average, Disturbance reproduction, 31.8. With a p.m. time of 20.5 and over, there are, on the average, 
Disturbance Reproduction 44.2. But for the elucidation of this question, a far larger material is required. Disturbances in reproduction and complex indicators with the exclusion of the too long reaction times. Besides the too long reaction times, I have found as complex indicators a reaction with two or more words where the subject usually reacts with one word, repetition of the stimulus word, misunderstanding of the stimulus word, faults, slips of speech, translation into a foreign language, reaction with an otherwise unusual foreign word, interpolation of yes, or some other exclamation before or after the reaction, unusual content of the reaction, perseveration in essence and in form, estimation of the unusual nature of the content and judgment as to perseveration is open to subjective influences. I have, therefore, omitted these two criteria in the investigation. I only accept obvious perseveration of a reaction word when it appears identically the same in the reaction following. I have selected out of the material the 19 cases characterized by their generally reacting with one word. I count off how many of the complex indicators are present in the whole test and how many of these correspond to the association, which failed in reproduction. The following table presents the results of this investigation in individual figures. Correctly reproduced associations, complex signs. 1. 0. 0. 0.08 Absence of reproduced associations, complex signs. 0. 0.16 2. 0 0.11, 0 0.31, 3, 0 0.03, 0 0.27, 4, 0 0.03, 0 0.11, 5, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 6, 0 0.11, 0 0.28, 7, 0 0.37, 0 0.40, 8, 0 0.08, 0 0.26, 9, 0 0.06, 0 0.16, 10, 0 0.12, 0 0.42, 11, 0 0.27, 0 0.39, 12, 0 0.03, 0 0.18, 13, 0 0.06, 0 0.15, 14, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 15, 0 0.06, 0 0.33, 16, 0 0.23, 0 0.29, 17, 0 0.04, 0 0.15, 18, 0 0.31, 0 0.54, 19, 0 0.18, 0 0.29, if it be remembered that all complex reactions do not necessarily lead to absence of reproduction, and that the absent reproductions only occur in one-third of all the associations, the result shown by the above table is sufficiently striking. We see that, without exception, in every case more complex indicators occur at the associations with absence of reproduction, so that, as a rule, they are signaled out beforehand. Those associations with absent reproduction exhibit, on the average, rather more than twice as many complex indicators as those which are correctly reproduced. Summary. There is, in my diverse material, an undoubted connection between absence of reproduction and too long reaction time. The main disturbances in reproduction occur when the reaction time has been too long, and sometimes partly also subsequent to too long reaction times. Moreover, the association which afterward fails to be reproduced has, on the average, double as many complex indicators as those correctly reproduced. 
we have excluded complex indicators which depend upon the subjective estimation of the content of the reaction and the corresponding perseveration. We learn from this that the complex indicators have a tendency to group themselves round certain definite associations. Without analysis, we cannot, of course, perceive what is the origin of the relationship between these very diverse complex indicators. End of section 43. Section 44 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M.D. Eder. Chapter 11. Statistical Investigations on Word Associations and on Familial Agreement in Reaction Type Among Uneducated Persons by Dr. Emma Fjörst Part 1 At the instigation of Professor Bluler and Dr. Jung, I undertook a statistical investigation of the associations that chiefly occur among normal persons and as to modifications in these associations due to age, education, and family. For practical reasons, the work divides itself into two parts. The first part deals with the results obtained among the uneducated. Arrangement of the Experiment Associations were obtained in 24 families comprising 100 subjects, 42 males and 58 females, aged between 9 and 81 years. Those taking part in these tests were four families, each consisting of two subjects, six families, each consisting of three subjects, three families, each consisting of four subjects, four families, each consisting of five subjects, three families, each consisting of six subjects, two families, each consisting of seven subjects, one family, consisting of ten subjects. So far as language is concerned, the material is very much the same, only the last family of ten being of Austrian nationality. All the other subjects are Eastern Swiss, with dialect as their usual speech. But, so far as regards intelligence and education, the material is very unequal. The subjects were of all degrees of intelligence and class, from the quite unintelligent class up to the highly intelligent and educated persons. 29 of the subjects had only an elementary and 35 a secondary schooling. 14 had gone through an intermediate school, and 8 had an education corresponding to this. 14 of the subjects had had a university career. Out of the 24 families, all the subjects in 13 of these families had about the same degree of education. In 11 families, it was pretty equal as to some members, very diverse as to others. In 11 families, all the members lived together. The experiment was carried out among normals, Nevertheless, among these persons there were some of a very low degree of intellect, with imbecile traits. A few others, especially women, showed slight hysterical symptoms, whilst among the older subjects were some with the physiological changes of age. But all were capable of living in society. Care was taken not to carry out the tests in conditions of fatigue, after a heavy meal or late in the evening. In two cases where the tests could only be carried out late at night, quite abnormal results were obtained. One subject always saw the stimulus word as if written before her, but could find no associations. With another, the experiment was made at 10 o'clock at night, after a heavy day's work and moderate indulgence in alcohol. For external reasons, no second test could be made. Naturally, these two results are not included in the statistical averages. A man of 81 had also to be excluded because he proved to be suffering from dementia senilis, with hallucinations of persecution and gave 61% clang reactions. These three cases were all men, so that the number of men was reduced to 39 and the total number of subjects to 97. Before beginning the tests, an explanation was given by means of a few examples of the various possibilities of association, and the subject was enjoined to react with the first word that occurred. With 90 persons, 200, with 10 persons, 400 associations were made. As a rule, 200 associations were carried out at a session. 
In two cases with high definition figures and very long reaction times, the test had to be carried out in two sessions, both on the same day. The tests were carried out with each individual quite alone, that is, not in the presence of any other member of the family. The stimulus word was called out in literary German. Jung's list of words was used, the peculiarities of which have been described in Chapter 2. The total number of associations carried out and used amounts to 22,000 in round numbers. With 81 persons, I carried out the tests personally. Another 19 were investigated by four colleagues, men or women. They were their nearest relatives. Unfortunately, time measurements were not made. The experiments began in 1903, when the importance of time in the reaction was not so well known. That my investigations are but little, sometimes not at all, concerned with the effects of the complexes, although these are of chief importance as regards to the constellation, be attributed to this circumstance. Part 2. Classification I have classified the material according to the kreppelin oschaffenberg method, as improved by Jung. The same criticism has been made against Jung's classification, as was formerly made against the kreppelin oschaffenberg classification. Despite Jung's express warning, some critics, for example Watt, made the mistake of thinking that Jung claimed to have found, by his classification, the intrapsychical association. There is no suggestion of this anywhere, as any attentive reader of the second chapter in this book can convince himself. Jung's classification is entirely logical verbal and in no wise prejudges the intrapsychical association. Nevertheless, taking the result as a whole, some conclusions can be drawn as to the general intrapsychical process. Thus, in Chapter 2, a conclusion was made as to attention. The outer classification cannot of itself settle anything about the inner conditions of the association. It does not, indeed, deal with the question. That belongs to the psychoanalytic method as demonstrated in Chapters 7 and 9. That a classification based upon logical points of view does not afford merely accidental and arbitrary results is best seen by the changes of the reactions in disturbed attention, changes which follow certain laws and can be expressed in figures. Naturally, the classification does not bring out everything. Still, it brings out a great deal which makes the investigation valuable. In spite of the many difficulties of this classification, I decided on it because no better one is known to me. For its principles, I refer the reader to Chapter 2. Part 3. Results of the Tests As the following investigations show, the subjects showed a preference for certain association forms. This is particularly true of the predicative relationship, substantive adjective, and inversely, predicate type. According to the frequency of the different kinds of associations in a subject, five types of association may be distinguished among which there are transition types. In 50 subjects, we found two or more kinds of associations about equally represented. For example, coordinations and motor reactions, or coordinations and predicates, or predicates and motor reactions. These I grouped as mixed types. In the rest of the subjects, one definite kind of association predominated over the others, amounting approximately to more than 40% of all the associations. In nearly every subject I came across more or less well-marked complex phenomena. A detailed investigation of these was not possible in all cases on account of the amount of the material, the absence of time measurements, and the absence of analyses. In the following descriptions of individual families, a particular description of the individual subject is often necessary. I have begun with those families standing lowest in the scale as regards to intelligence and education in order to show the change in association type with increasing education. This procedure is justified by the fact that education is one of the factors which most seriously influences the nature of the reactions. All the figures in the tables are given in percentages. In several families, a striking agreement was found between the members of the family as regards the nature of the associations. To express this agreement or this difference, as the case might be, by a simple figure, Dr. Jung devised the following calculation. The individual figures of any two members of a family who are to be compared are placed together. The differences are written out. These differences are added together, and the sum is divided by the number of classes in the classification. D gives, not perhaps in the most ideal way, the typical measure of the difference. 
In practice, it is a very useful figure, considerably abbreviating the exhibition of the differences and avoiding much repetition. The calculation of this difference was not based upon Jung's detailed classification, first, on account of greater simplicity, and secondly, because a nicer classification increases the number of unavoidable vagaries. Therefore, all divisions which seemed uncertain or were infrequent were grouped in one class. All coadjuncts with the same superconcept, similarity, inner and outer relationship, by example, and causal dependence, were included in the class of coordination. Similarly, the verbal motor connections and quotations were put together. The inclusion of indirect associations, faults, and meaningless reactions in one class is justified by the fact that these are, as a rule, all to be regarded as disturbances. Their individual estimation is unimportant in this inquiry. The distribution of the associations among these 15 groups is, on the whole, very simple if one keeps to certain logical norms. And it should lead to approximately satisfactory conclusions. The following results seem to justify this view. Description of the individual test families. Family 1. Daughter, 16 years, polisher. Mother, 45 years, laundress. Father, 47 years, tailor. All three test persons are very unintelligent and very badly educated. Stimulus word 1. Green. Father. Color. Mother. Joy. Daughter. Is nice. Stimulus word 2. Water. Father. Bluish. Mother. Good. Daughter. Is useful. Stimulus word 3. Prick. Father. With a knife. Mother. Disagreeable. Daughter. Is not good. Stimulus word four, angel. Father, appearance. Mother, good, always good. Daughter, nice. Stimulus word five, long. Father, measure. Mother, correct. Daughter, it's long. Stimulus word six, table. Father, furniture. Mother, is nice. Daughter, is useful. Stimulus word seven. Haughty. Father, question of the heart. Mother, unpleasant. Daughter, is not nice. Stimulus word eight. Proud. Father, vulgar. Mother, bad sign. Daughter, is also not nice. Stimulus word nine, wicked. Father, not good. Mother, disgusting. Daughter, is wicked. Stimulus word ten, friendly. Father, good feeling. Mother, is pleasant. Daughter, is nice. Stimulus word 11, bear. Father, a burden. Mother, is good, is pleasant. Daughter, is nice. Stimulus word 12, state. Father, the people's laws. Mother, is proper. Daughter, useful. Stimulus word 13, stock. Father, licorice root. Mother, must be so. Daughter is nice. Stimulus word 14, ink. Father, black. Mother, good, useful. Daughter, also useful. Stimulus word 15, rich. Father, private income. Mother, good in all cases. Daughter is also nice. Stimulus word 16, mountain. Father, high. Mother, oh, beautiful. Daughter, nice. Stimulus word 17, salt. Father, marriage. Mother, very good. Daughter, useful. 
Stimulus word 18, habits. Father, of the people. Mother, very good, good habits. Daughter, nice. Stimulus word 19, stupid. Father, silly. Mother, it's stupid. Daughter, it's stupid. Stimulus word 20, tooth. Father, in the mouth. Mother, is good, is useful. Daughter, is nice. The daughter is an extreme predicate type. Throughout the whole experiment, she makes use almost exclusively of the same reactions. Good, nice, useful, and their negatives. In many places, the form of the reaction is quite unsuitable and without meaning. As, for example, bear is nice, part is nice, month is nice, broad is nice. Very characteristic of her limitations are the identities she makes which vividly recall imbecility. She even notices herself her frequent repetitions and tries to find another association, finds none, and simply repeats the stimulus word in sentence form. Long is long. Probably a slight emotional stupor had a share in this, although at the time of the tests, she did not seem embarrassed. Still, the general impression is that of embarrassment. We may recall the difficulties of adjustment that Wehrland's imbeciles had. Chapter 3. There seems to be something of the sort here. Comparing the examples we have given, a high degree of resemblance between daughter and mother will be noticed. The mother shows the same disposition towards the finer peculiarities of the reactions as her daughter, but she has a freer choice of predicates, which is further expressed by the existence of a few objective predicates. Still, she also has a very limited vocabulary. Thus, we find good, is good, very good, always good, is not good, 54 times. Beautiful, is beautiful. 17 times, useful, 10 times, necessary, 7 times, must be, 5 times, also right, twice. In contrast with the daughter, in whom we find, it is true, judgments as to value, but without strongly pronounced subjective valuations, her mother does show rather more distinct traces of her own personality. Examples. Stimulus word, yellow. Daughter, not nice. Mother, no. Delicate color. Stimulus word, new. Daughter, nice. Mother, much better than old. Stimulus word, book. Daughter, useful. Mother, I like a good one. Stimulus word, frog. Daughter, not nice. Mother, I don't like. Stimulus word, plum. Daughter, good. Mother, I like. Stimulus word, coffee. Daughter, useful. Mother, I love my coffee. This rather freer way of reaction suggests a lesser degree of embarrassment. Many awkward reactions is nice, pleasant, unpleasant, etc., point to her very low intellectual level. The father belongs to the mixed type, deviating in behavior both from his wife and his daughter. We get, nevertheless, 29.5% of predicates, which show, however, but slight agreement in kind with those of the other two persons. His intellectual and educational level is well expressed in the following figures. Designation of place, time, etc., 11%. Definition of place, time, etc., 11%. As is well known, imbeciles prefer the use of these forms. There are, besides, many awkward and affected reactions. Examples, fear, pressure over the heart. Kiss, delivery of love. Family, consists of parents and children. Cow does chew the cud. Sofa, pleasant piece of furniture. Understanding, lies in the brain. This kind of reaction is very similar to that found by Wehrlin, Chapter 3, in slight degrees of imbecility. 
In this case, as in his, the adjustment is towards the meaning of the stimulus words, with a tendency to explain the meaning of the stimulus word and to give the reaction in sentence form. But there are essential differences. We have a greater wealth of ideas, better powers of abstraction, greater verbal facility, all shown by the quite appropriate predicates, which are external and rather objective, and by verbal reminiscences, quotations, and word formations, which are almost entirely absent in imbeciles. Examples, soldier, servant of the state, love, affection, I, of the law, book, of life, laugh, in one's sleeve, prudence, is the mother of wisdom, folk, crowd of people, moon, a heavenly body. This family shows various types. The two females belong to one type with a difference between them in the subjective and egocentric apprehension of the stimulus word. The husband belongs to an objective type. So far as age is concerned, the relationship of inner to outer associations discloses no laws. In mother and daughter, the classification is almost the same. The father, as the oldest test person of the family, has fewest inner associations. Common to all three is a verbal want of facility corresponding to their low level of intellect and education. This is noticed in the frequent sentence form, the many repetitions, and the clumsy reactions, partly in dialect, partly new formations. Average difference of the reaction types. Father and mother, 11.5. Mother and daughter, 0 0.5. Father and daughter, 12.1. Agreement between father and mother is extremely slight, be it remembered that by the method of calculation used, the greatest difference could only be 13.3. It is still less between father and daughter. On the other hand, there is an extraordinary agreement between mother and daughter, the daughter proceeding still further in the direction of the maternal reaction type, withdrawing still more from the father. It is difficult to say on what the difference, on the one hand, between father and mother and the agreement, on the other hand, between mother and daughter are founded. One is inclined to think first of all that the female sex of the experimenter has an effect upon the adjustment of the subject. We need only think here, of course, of a phenomenon of adjustment, for the type of reaction is not necessarily constant, as Jung and Ricklin have already proved. It is conceivable that the subject would have had a different attitude towards another experimenter. Again, the fact that the experimenter, a woman, is of higher intellectual and social grade than the subject may influence the result. Experience shows that such factors are of great importance in the reaction type. We must, above all, realize that we are here only dealing with relative values, which are in no wise chiefly connected with the intellectual qualities of the subject, but mainly with the emotions. Jung and Ricklin have shown that, influenced by relaxation of attention, the reaction type can undergo considerable changes in the same experiment. But attention is, after all, but a fragment of affectivity. We must consider the possibility that the experimenter, by reason of her sex, her intellectual and social class, touched specific complexes in the subjects which condition the peculiar phenomena of the adaptation. Finally, the striking differences between husband and wife would also find its explanation in factors concerned with the test persons themselves. Such an explanation would require information about the spiritual bond between the couple and about their complexes. Obviously a very delicate and complicated investigation. That perhaps some repelling complex was here in question seems suggested by the fact that in other married couples, there is a striking agreement in type between husband and wife that many other complicated mental factors do enter into consideration is, of course, perfectly obvious. But these are beyond our present knowledge. The explanation of the agreement between mother and daughter we are disposed to find in their common life and milieu, as well as in the mental dependence of the child upon her mother. But it is questionable whether the matter is quite so simple, for there are cases where this assumption does not hold it would rather seem as if greater importance must be attributed to the individual complexes and their more or less accidental agreements. End of section 44. Read by Rochelle Bereni.
Section 45 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 11. Statistical Investigations on Word Associations and on Familial Agreement in Reaction Type Among Uneducated Persons, Part 2. Family 2. The associations were carried out in two sisters and three brothers aged 31 to 43 years, and, for comparison, in the wife of the youngest brother. All belong to the artisan class and are uneducated. Their intelligence varied from weak to moderate. Stimulus word. Head. Subject number one. Big. Number two, hard. Number three, hair. Number four, brain. Number five, hair. Number six, neck. Stimulus word green. Subject number one, grass. Number two, grass. Number three, carpet. Number four, blue. Number five, field. Number six, red. Stimulus word water. Subject number one, cold. Number two, thin. Number three, to wash. Number four, wine. Number five, cold. Number six, cloud. Stimulus word, prick. Subject number one, needle. Number two, pain. Number three, needle. Number four, to lighten. Number five, holy. Number six, sensitive. Stimulus word, long. Subject number one, short. Number two, short. Number three, meter measure. Number four, short. Number five, no response. Number six, short. Stimulus word, ship. Subject number one, big. Number two, round. Number three, sail. Number four, anchor. Number five, sea ship. Number six, water. Stimulus word, plow. Number one, nice. Number two, nice. Number three, lie. Number four, field. Number five, hero. Number six, field. Stimulus word, bear. Subject number one, heavy. Number two, heavy. Number three, children. Number four, lie. Number five, ill. Number six, lift. Stimulus word, state. Subject number one, big. Number two, big. Number three, hat. Number four, Swiss. Number five, taxes. Number six, republic. Stimulus word, haughty. Subject number one, wild. Number two, not. Number three, when angry. Number four, soft-hearted. Number five, Anna. Number six, soft-hearted. Stimulus word, to dance. Subject number one, difficult. Number two, jolly. Number three, shoddishy. Number four, jollity. Number five, no response. Number six, jump. Stimulus word, lake. Subject number one, big. Number two, big. Number three, vivi. Number four, sea. Number five, Zurich lake. Number six, river. Stimulus word, ill. Subject number one, heavy. Number two, heavy. Number three, nose bleeding. Number four, healthy. Number five, Mrs. X. Number six, healthy. Stimulus word, proud. Subject number one, wild. Number two, not nice. Number three, calling. Number four, unpleasant. Number five, M. Number six, high spirited. Stimulus word, wicked. Subject number one, peaceful. Number two, not nice. Number three, often. Number four, good. Number five, an. Number six, good. Stimulus word, swim. Subject number one, difficult. Number two, jolly. Number three, water bird. Number four, sing. Number five, not I. Number six, water. Stimulus word, travel. Subject number one, nice. Number two, nice. Number three, often. Number four, pleasant. Number five, I should like to, to Italy. Number six, nice. Stimulus word, blue. Subject number one, green. Number two, color. 
Number three, nice. Number four, green. Number five, lake. Number six, red. Stimulus word, threaten. Subject number one, danger. Number two, not nice. Number three, often. Number four, obedient. Number five, no response. Number six, punish. Subjects number one and two, both very unintelligent and uneducated artisans. The similarity between these two, husband and wife, is very striking, both in the chief and in the subclasses. In both, the predicates are high, 67.5 and 69%. There are very few motor reactions, coordinations, and coexistences. The agreement extends to the more subtle peculiarities of individual reactions. Both react to the same stimulus word 30 times with the same reaction. The associations are very simple and obvious, and refer, especially in the wife, to their immediate surroundings. The predicates mainly give color, form, and size, or some very general estimate of the stimulus content, such as good, nice, without subjective estimate. They are frequently repeated. The wife more especially reacts to verbs by general concepts, as mankind, child. The agreement is seen not only in the general quantitative relationships, but also in both persons having a strong tendency to repeat certain words. The husband reacts with the word big 23 times, his wife 15 times, and the other members only, on the average, 0.7 times. Beautiful is repeated by the husband 11 times, by the wife 25 times, by the other members, on the average, thrice. The word difficult is repeated nine times by the husband, four times by his wife. It does not occur at all among the others. In both subjects, there are distinct complex constellations, which are rather more numerous in the wife. To stimulus words suggesting a certain agility, the man who is physically weak and clumsy reacts several times by difficult. Dance, swim, take care, meet, sing. A few other reactions are constellations from the family and household life of the subjects, worried by economic troubles. The wife's complexes are mainly economic worries, a great number of children and quarrels with her husband's relatives. She feels herself despised and unjustly treated. The complex reactions are sometimes expressed very openly, sometimes by motor and meaningless reactions, and particularly by general concepts. The latter are found exclusively in response to stimulus words with an emotional tone, as unjust, despise, stranger, etc., to which mankind is always the reaction. But we cannot hold the complexes altogether responsible for the frequency of these general concepts in the uneducated, as contrasted with the educated. The verbal want of facility among the uneducated is partly responsible whilst educated persons are usually able to find a motor reaction when there is a momentary blockade to the activity of association evoked by some emotionally toned stimulus word. No such motor reaction occurs to the uneducated and unintelligent who then employs some general concept which means nothing. The want of education in these two subjects is again shown by reactions that are inappropriate or make no sense by taking the stimulus words in their dialect sense, and by reactions in clumsy or dialect forms, by the use of numerous designations of place, time, purpose, and means, with the preposition, by the small number of motor reactions. The wife shows this, furthermore, by her numerous, though extremely simple, general concepts, and her difficulty in reacting to rarer words, especially abstract. A fire, difficult, thick smoke. Color, wild, deaf. Bull, taub, deaf, in dialect, equals mad. Hatchet, cutting. Dog, free, in dialect, equals good-natured. View, of the dog. Subject number three, elder brother of number one of medium intelligence and slight education, holds a responsible position as warder in a house of correction. Quantitatively, there is great resemblance to number one, 
but there is a very essential difference. In his reactions, number three shows himself influenced to a large extent by indifferent recollections and by emotionally toned events of the past and present. The associations thus receive an extremely individual turn. In other words, were we to reckon up with how many other ideas this subject makes the like reaction to the same reaction word, we should obtain a great number of associations, which were entirely individual. Thus, this subject was the only one out of 100 subjects who reacted proud, occupation. We shall be certainly right in assuming that by this reaction, he expresses joy at his present position, which means an advance for him, which he made great efforts to obtain. A few other emotionally toned chains of thought may be gathered from the associations. In the following associations, he touches upon the relationship to his superiors. Modest. Question of occupation. Trust. With a certain treatment. People. Civil servant. Choose. Authority. Honor. Yes. Haughty. When angry. Seek. Large orders. The strongest emotional tone is found in his feeling of responsibility for the criminals, in his fear of their attempts at escape, and especially in his apprehension of the danger of his being attacked. The latter very intensive effect constellated a whole series of associations. Wild. Interned. To take care. Of the interned. Danger. Every day. Meet. Unfavorable. Fear. Little. Blood. Human blood. Door. Open. Caution. Master. Locksmith. Proper guard. Pipe. Weapon. Besides these, there are a number of more or less emotionally toned reactions part of them arising from his former occupation of tailor, part from narrower or wider surroundings. Bring, on requisition, public house, little, paper, examine, write, much, wagon, three pieces, travel, often, forget, what, already, angry, often, free, a little, pity, maybe, soldier, none, Luck, seldom. Smell, air of cells. Family, three in family. Pencil, pocket shaped. Lake, bevy. Copy book, examine. Full, anger. Punish, often. Threaten, often. Railway station, best when near. Brother, two. His want of education is documented by some awkward, coarse expressions with formation of new words or word combinations. For example, purpose, family purpose, by dialect expressions and by the wrong use of words. For example, eat, with good taste, in the sense of enjoyment. Neck, formerly tainted, had a goiter. Fireplace, necessity for a Russian. He belongs to the complex constellation type described by Jung and Ricklin, in whom a stimulus idea arouses a whole memory complex. We recognize in this case that the feeling of responsibility and fear of his own life, perhaps also the thought that he is not quite adequate to his position, determine the subjective constellation of the associations. The divergence from these two subjects, four and six, is clearly seen in the eldest brother and the youngest sister, who both belong to the mixed type and agree with each other in many respects. For instance, in the classes superconcept, similarity, contrast, coexistence, and motor reactions, as also in their common tendency towards reaction with the same grammatical form. The sister, 54.5%, and the brother, 66.5%, corresponding with the greater number of coordinations. Whilst both subjects had to the same stimulus word the same reaction in 28 cases and a very similar reaction in 38 cases, 
the brother has the following reactions in common with the rest of his family. With subject number one, 11 reactions. With subject number two, seven reactions. With subject number three, one reaction. With subject number five, three reactions. The number of predicates is considerably less in both these subjects. The number of coexistences and motor reactions much greater than in subjects one and three. Still, there are considerable differences between subjects four and six. The brother, who is the most uneducated and rather imbecile, gives a very objective but slightly individual impression quite unaffected by personal memories, and this despite the many value predicates. Beyond the predicates big, beautiful, good, friendly, pleasant, and unpleasant, the associations are mainly coexistences, slang phrases, and contrasts. There is very little that is individual. Subject number six. Unmarried sister, 32 years old, no better educated, but rather more intelligent. Her reactions are rather more superficial than her brother's. She has far fewer coordinations and objective predicates, but more verbal reminiscences. In contrast with her brother, she shows more complex indicators, which are sometimes quite open and expressed by very frank subjective judgments, whilst sometimes they are concealed in faults and very long reaction times at emotionally toned stimulus words. Beloved, grand, suppose, one can, make, I like. Kiss, nice. False, hateful. Quarrel, hateful. Decency, one must have. Love, nice. Beat, hateful. Dirty, hateful. Stupid, no response. Wild, hateful. Right, no response. Choose, no response. Pain, suffer. View, to have. Modest, be. Fear, to have. Visit, we can. Understand, understood. Worthy, be. Separate, hurts. Caution, to have. Hunger, hurts. Forget, we can. The reactions are likewise very simple with many familiar phrases. There were no affected or meaningless reactions. Subject number five, elder sister, unmarried, 43 years old, of medium intelligence, secondary education, fairly read, vivacious and energetic, with many interests. The relationship of inner to outer associations is the same as her sisters, with whom she has most similarity, especially seen in the complex phenomena as faults and delayed reaction times. But the association type is much more superficial. Despite the large number of predicates, there are very few value predicates. On the other hand, there were 30% word formations, some very simple, taken from her immediate surroundings, her housekeeping and occupation. Others were more unusual, showing fair reading. The rest of the associations are also simple and appropriate. There were no meaningless, affected, cumbersome reactions. There were 4.5% of faults. It is not impossible that this is connected with the motor type. Faults are chiefly found in persons with a lively complex, but a strong complex demands much psychical energy, leaving less power of concentration at the disposal of indifferent matters. This results in decrease of attention and a superficial type. She is chiefly differentiated from her sister by a greater number of individual associations. The faults are all found at emotionally toned stimulus words. friendly dance, manners, threaten, despise, take care, worthy, impudence. As will be seen from the tables, the ratio of inner to outer associations shows no relationship to age reducible to rule. There is no great similarity in type between the brothers and sisters. They were separated in early youth and only lived together for a time. Although the ratio of the figures is relatively similar, the qualitative relationships are most diverse, dependent principally upon difference in the complex constellation. In one subject, the complex constellation is chiefly expressed by a freer occurrence of individual associations 
exhibiting the chief complex without disguise. In another subject, it was chiefly shown by its effects in causing disturbances in attention and inhibitions to associations. This naturally conditions a great difference in the reactions. According to Dr. Jung's calculations on my material, D equals 5.9 for all uneducated men who are not related. For women, it is 6. The relationship of the husband and wife, 1.8, is considerably below these figures. That of the husband and his eldest brother is 2.7. The intermediate brother and younger sister is 2.8. All the other differences exceed 5.9, sometimes even 6. The familial similarity is thus very limited. But, in contrast with the previous family, there is very considerable agreement between husband and wife. Families 3 and 4 Six subjects the associations were taken in three brothers aged 74, 71, and 63 years, a sister aged 67, and her children, a son of 31 years and a daughter aged 27. Their intelligence in all was but medium. All were uneducated, peasants, or artisans. We must divide this family into two groups. Group 1 with subjects numbers 1 through 3, Group 2 with subjects numbers 4 through 6. Group 1 have all considerably more inner associations and are strongly differentiated from Group 2 in the finer relationships also. They are very similar among themselves. All three have relatively few outer associations. The eldest and the youngest of the brothers are pronounced predicate types, with many value predicates. The intermediate brother is a mixed type, in whom definitions predominate. The eldest has also 11% definitions. All three react extremely slowly with great attention and reflection. This is especially true of subjects 1 and 2, who usually suppressed or did not speak out the first unconscious association in order to give a better response. For example, head, green, who is unskilled. Subject number 1, eldest brother, 74 years old, uneducated. Together with 11% of definitions, there are 40% value and 17% objective predicates. Some of them such as occur in many uneducated or elderly persons. The intense striving to produce something good, clever, leads to a series of affected, studied, awkward reactions to dialect forms and neologisms. Examples of ordinary value predicates. State. Good. Way, wearisome, rich, pleasant, salt, indispensable, quarrel, unpleasant, air, blows away, in other words, violent wind, hay, nice smell, wood, agreeable, bread, tastes good, hit, objectionable, sail, indispensable, deaf, objectionable, dog, pleasant, good, encouraging, Unjust, insulting, fear, fatiguing, law, orderly, skek, deceiving, beloved, uniting, tired, uneasy, brother, amiable, family, widespread, long, sadly, great, remarkable, ill, pitiable, ring, holding together, haughty, disapproving, proud, fatiguing. Flower, nice smell. Although many of these reactions belong to the predicate type, it can be seen that there is an easy transition to the definition type. The predicate, which is largely charged with emotion, gradually assumes an explanatory character. The subject endeavors to make some intellectual addition to his personal estimation of the object designated by the stimulus word. This quite corresponds to the tendency to react as cleverly as possible. The following associations show a further stage of this tendency. They consist essentially of combinations of value predicates with subordinations, some of which are appropriate, some of which are too general. These lead again to true explanatory reactions, such as are found among imbeciles. Blue, beautiful color. Stork, clever animal. Coffee, valuable drink. Ask, valuable answer. Laugh, 
comfortable frame of mind. Market, old custom. Chimney, heavy work, building. Hatchet, dangerous object. Goat, useful animal. Potato, pleasant food. Clergyman, indispensable teacher. Coal, useful substance. Kiss, recognition of friendship. Locksmith, fatiguing work. Plate, necessary object. Pipe, dangerous substance. Month, part of the year. Resin, preparatory substance. Neck, part of the body. Sleeper, part of the railway. Looking glass, reflection. Moon, heavenly body. Bed, household furniture. Stone, material. Railway station, halt for travelers. Sofa, pause for a rest. Write, business matters. Bone, substance. To make, industry. Angel, life. Portfolio, writing stuff. Play for pleasure. In the stress upon the meaning of the word, the far-fetched association, and especially in the tendency to explanation these reactions, resemble those found among imbeciles. The tendency to explanation is particularly expressed by the universal concepts, which are either too narrow or too broad, and by the true explanations. The difference consists in the large number of predicates, which are to a large extent subjective, in the far bigger vocabulary, in the appropriate concepts, and in the rarer use of the sentence form. The reactions of this subject, who is by no means an imbecile and is not a senile dement, are theoretically very remarkable. The question therefore arises, why does this subject react as if he were an imbecile? We have seen that not only does he belong to a family where predicates predominate, but he himself shows an unmistakable tendency to predicates. As Jung and Ricklin have shown, in the predicate type, the stimulus idea is very plastic and thus arouses associations that are very rich in their content. The plasticity of the stimulus presentation depends in the first place upon the adjustment, in other words, upon the question whether the reaction carries with it great strain of attention or not. This increased attention can arise from different emotional considerations. In the first place, the unusual and exciting situation which recalls a school examination plays a part. People mostly conceive the experiment as an examination of intelligence, and so endeavor to react as cleverly as possible, so as not to appear stupid. This feeling is, furthermore, aroused by the fact that many uneducated persons feel themselves mentally inferior to the educated, even if they do not always openly admit it. Many people are, indeed, very sensitive in this respect. We may, then, really speak of an intelligence complex. The like holds true of imbeciles who, moreover, do not all exhibit the typical definition, who frequently have an insight into their own intellectual defects and have therefore a certain ambition not to appear so stupid. Our subject is an old man who obviously fears that he will be regarded as stupid and therefore takes the experiment very seriously. Hence the amount of thought and reflection given to the reactions. This emotional constellation is, moreover, easily read in the associations. For example, knowledge, to wish. This case throws a certain light on the imbecile way of reacting and illuminates something fundamental in the predicate type. We see that between the definition and the predicate type, there is a transition. In the predicate type, it is not a question of an entirely new attitude, but only of something that has been changed in form. The extreme predicate types, really at bottom, also make explanations. Their predication reaction, pleasant, beautiful, to be recommended, always means that is something pleasant, beautiful, etc. These are emotional explanations without any intellectual addition. Subject number two reacted very slowly. The experiment lasted four hours. Despite a quantitative difference, number two has qualitatively a fair resemblance with number one. The attitude is likewise explanatory, the intellectual factor overcoming the more moderate emotional predicates. We therefore find here an increased number of definitions and coordinations 
whilst the value predicates decrease considerably. The following examples show the similarity of the attitude with that of number one. Air, necessary for life. Give, good deed. Bring, kindness. Proud, improper. Needle, of good steel. Mug, beautiful gift. Ride, better than running. Ring, is not square. Big, certain states. Part, of a piece of land. Table, in the room. Sleep, for strengthening. Month, a part of the year. Moon, part of the world. Plate, kitchen utensil. Pain, interrupts sleep. Fruit, healthy food. Pay, a duty. Swim, great advantage. Tooth, advantage for the stomach. Hit, necessity. Head, of man. Basket, for clothes. Mock, improper behavior. Speak, fortunate gift. Laugh, jolly mood. Hot, means of warming. Market, place for sale. Wagon, transport. Chimney, smoke conductor. Portfolio, paper holder. Forget, neglect. Eat, necessary for stomach. Subject number three. Here, the tendency to definition and explanation recedes somewhat and is chiefly replaced by predicates. Among these are many value predicates and coordinate relationships in which the tendency to explanation can be indistinctly recognized. As compared with the two previous subjects, these reactions leave a much more natural and less forced impression. They are not so affected and far-fetched. The individual reactions also show a freer treatment of the stimulus word and much less limitation to the meaning of the stimulus word. Month, to record. Purpose, carry out. Floor, good, guaranteed. Bear, powerful. Haughty, nervous. Husband, intoxication. Fear, unavoidable. Hot, pleasant. Plow, uneven. Lake, melancholy. Play, quarrel. Strong, overspirited. Needle, useful. Tooth, serviceable. Stupid, insufficient. Useful, pleasant. Song, unschooled. Work, difficulties in writing. Coffee, shortly. Broad, spread out. Air, necessary. Wicked, dangerous. Ask, adverse. Flower, costly. Ring, fits. Ink, brilliant. Salt, necessary. Hatchet, dangerous. To cook, troublesome. Narrate, difficult. Law, acceptable. Pride, imperious. Soldier, necessary exercise. Family, comfortable. Hunger, devouring. White, soilable. Intention, accident. Pipe, transport. Duty, responsible. Give, charitable. Subject number four is the married sister of these persons. As the tables show, she does not differ greatly from her brother's type. She is relatively most like her youngest brother, but shows rather more tendency to value predicates. These consist in numerous repetitions of beautiful, useful, painful, etc. There is also a certain tendency to explanation, which is, however, only hinted at in the rather numerous superordinations and frequently partakes rather of the nature of value predicates. Examples, moderate, virtue, coffee, plant, modest, virtue, floor, wood, apple, fruit, clergyman, learned man, deaf, illness, sing, virtue, folk, mankind. There is a distinct tendency to give the material of the object called up by the stimulus word. Example, wall, iron, cover, iron, needle, steel, floor, wood, ship, wood, copybook, paper, portfolio, leather. A like tendency is often very pronounced in imbeciles. Subject number five, the son of number four, deviates somewhat from his mother, for the number of value predicates is considerably less, whilst the outer associations increase. 
He approaches his mother's type for description of the material of the objects plays a part, and predicates are rather numerous. But, in contradistinction to his mother, the predicates are less emotional relationships than some external or objective quality. That his attitude towards the meaning of the stimulus word is less intensive is seen also by the increased coexistences and frequent colloquial phrases. He is an artisan and relatively intelligent, hence his somewhat greater adaptability to the new position. The following comparative list shows how much more objective and unrestrained his reactions are. Stimulus word, goat. Number one, useful animal. Number two, small Malay animal. Number three, useful. Number four, useful. Number five, milk. Stimulus word, potato. Number one, pleasant food. Number two, food. Number three, indispensable. Number four, food. Number five, earth. Stimulus word old. Number one, troublesome. Number two, buildings. Number three, different. Number four, weak. Number five, young. Stimulus word hit. Number one, reprehensible. Number two, necessity. Number three, powerful. Number four, painful. Number five, hammer. Stimulus word family. Number one, widespread. Number two, parents and children. Number three, agreeable. Number four, beautiful. Number five, members. Stimulus word narrow. Number one, unpleasant. Number two, difficult to breathe. Number three, objectionable. Number four, painful. Number five, broad. Stimulus word false. Number one, unpleasant. Number two, unfaithful. Number three, quarrelsome. Number four, vice. Number five, understood. Stimulus word, quiet. Number one, pleasant in old age. Number two, lonely. Number three, lonely. Number four, wild. Number five, the lake is quiet. Stimulus word, speak. Number one, with caution. Number two, happy gift. Number three, naughty. Number four, lovable. Number five, tongue. Stimulus word, rich. Number one, pleasant. Number two, who has much knowledge. Number three, tempting. Number four, beautiful. Number five, money. Stimulus word, mountain. Number one, extensive view. Number two, viewpoint. Number three, great strength to climb. Number four, high. Number five, stone. Stimulus word, stupid. Number one, not clever. Number two, weak-minded. Number three, insufficient. Number four, pity. Number five, clever. Stimulus word, unjust. Number one, injurious. Number two, innocent. Number three, shame. Number four, punishable. Number five, affair. Subject number six approximates more closely to her mother's type, both quantitatively as well as in the finer relationships of the reactions. The tendency frequently to repeat certain predicates is even more pronounced. Such words as big, beautiful, high, naughty are repeated. The following list shows this similarity between mother and daughter. Stimulus word, prick. Mother, to pain. Daughter, painful. Stimulus word, angel. Mother, lovable. Daughter, lovely. Stimulus word, wool. Mother, warm. Daughter, dyed. Stimulus word, dance. Mother, beautiful. Daughter, jollity. Stimulus word, to cook. Mother, good. Daughter, art. Stimulus word, ink. Mother, black. Daughter, black. Stimulus word, wicked. Mother, silly. Daughter, naughty. Stimulus word, swim. Mother, drown. Daughter, dangerous. Stimulus word, travel. Mother, beautiful. Daughter, pleasure. Stimulus word, mountain. Mother, high. Daughter, high. Stimulus word, play. Mother, joy. Daughter, jollity. Stimulus word, habits. Mother, virtuous. Daughter, beautiful. Stimulus word, ride. Mother, art. Daughter, pleasure. 
In 11.5% of like stimulus words, mother and daughter react with the same word. This is a very high concordance in association. The difference between mother and daughter is only 2.5, whilst between mother and son, it is 4.2. Between son and daughter, it is a little higher, 4.4. The mother is differentiated from her brothers by, on the average, 4.4. End of section 45. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Section 46 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 11. Statistical Investigations on Word Associations and on familial agreement in reaction type among uneducated persons. Part 3. Family 5. Husband, wife, son, and sister of the husband, who, however, was not living with the family. Their intelligence is medium. They are all uneducated, an artisan family. Subject number 1 has a large number of predicates. In this family, the predicates increase with age, which, however, disclose the emotional factor far less than, for example, certain subjects in the last family. Subject number two shows more emotionally toned reactions and value predicates than the others. The relationships of the reactions are very uniform in this family, although there are great differences of age and the single sister does not live with the family. The average difference of all the members of the family among themselves amounts to 3.1. Subjects number three and four, nephew and aunt, approach nearest to one another. D equals 2.1. Examples. Stimulus word, prick. Father, pain. Mother, poisonous. Son, hurts. Sister of father, needle. Stimulus word, angel. Father, pure. Mother, heaven. Son, beautiful. Sister of father, innocent. Stimulus word, bear. Father, heavy. Mother, child. Son, heavy. Sister of father, child. Stimulus word, state. Father, kingdom. Mother, greater. Son, great. Sister of father, America. Stimulus word, ill. Father, difficult. Mother, old. Son, difficult. Sister of father, mother. Stimulus word, to cook. Father, good. Mother, good. Son, good. Sister of father, kitchen. Stimulus word, ink. Father, black. Mother, black. Son, black. Sister of father, teacher. Stimulus word to threaten. Father, ambush. Mother, bad luck. Son, insult. Sister of father, storm. Stimulus word, rich. Father, proud. Mother, men. Son, poor. Sister of father, health. Stimulus word, separate. Father, distance. Mother, hurts. Son, parents. Sister of father, sad. Stimulus word, quarrel. Father, like to. Mother, not nice. Son, naughty. Sister of father, men. Stimulus word, old. Father, grandmother. Mother, people. Son, young. Sister of father, Gray-headed. Stimulus word memory. Father, dance lesson. Mother, good. Son, duty. Sister of father, nice. Stimulus word dog. Father, angry. Mother, nicer. Son, St. Bernard dog. Sister of father, faithful. Stimulus word choose. Father, people. Mother, people. Son, president. Sister of father, 
walk. Stimulus word, kiss. Father, girl. Mother, love. Son, mother. Sister, father, mother. Stimulus word, laugh. Father, joyous. Mother, jolly. Son, about nonsense. Sister, of father, gay. Stimulus word, air. Father, cold. Mother, good. Son, good. Sister, of father, clear. Stimulus word, intention. Father, wicked. Mother, good. Son, closed windows. Sister, of father, useless. This family has no other peculiarities worth mentioning. Family six. Husband, wife, three daughters, and two sons, twins. Uneducated but relatively intelligent people. The husband is a merchant in a small way. The female members of this family show an increase in their value predicates with increasing age. With the exception of the mother, however, these value predicates are not strongly marked, although in most cases a pronounced predicate type is present. The more objective type, the opposite of the predicate type, is stronger in the males and in the youngest daughter than in the mother and the two elder daughters. The relationship of the twin brothers should be the most interesting because the conditions are here favorable, one would expect, for a high measure of agreement. But their average difference amounts to 3.7, which is not an especially low figure, and the figures given above suggest a divergent behavior. Son number one approximates most closely to his sister, who is nearest to his age. The difference is here only 1.9. The agreement is thus very great. Son number two approximates more nearly to his father's type, the difference being 2.3. Son number two differs from his father by 2.8. The following examples illustrate these relationships. Stimulus word, head. Son number one, part of body. Daughter number two, part of man. Son number two, man. Father, round. Stimulus word, green. Son number one, grass. Daughter number two, grass. Son number two, forest. Father, frog. Stimulus word, water. Son number one, clear. Daughter number two, wet. Son number two, lake. Father, sugar water. Stimulus word, angel. Son number one, in heaven. Daughter number two, gracious. Son number two, heaven. Father, heaven. Stimulus word, ship. Son number one, warship. Daughter number two, on the lake. Son number two, sea. Father, big. Stimulus word, plow. Son number one, peasant. Daughter number two, peasant. Son number two, field. Father, field. Stimulus word, wool. Son number one, soft. Daughter number two, soft. Son number two, sheep. Father, sheep. Stimulus word, to bear. Son number one, a soldier of a gun. Daughter number two, commissionaire. Son number two, burden. Father, hat. Stimulus word, haughty. Son number one, naughty child. Daughter number two, pupil. Son number two, child. Father, child. Stimulus word, proud. Son number one, high-spirited. Daughter number two, vice. Son number two, horse. Father, fool. Stimulus word, to cook. Son number one, the cook. Daughter number two, the cook. Son number two, mother. Father, coffee. Stimulus word, ink. Son number one, for writing. Daughter number two, fluid. Son number two, write. Father, copying ink. Stimulus word, needle. Son number one, pointed. Daughter number two, fine. Son number two, sew. Father, dull. Stimulus word, journey. Son number one, pleasure. Daughter number two, beautiful. Son number two, business. Father, honeymoon. Stimulus word, bread. Son number one, food. Daughter number two, food. Son number two, eat. Father, black. Stimulus word, to threaten. Son number one, enemy. Daughter number two, enemy. Son number two, war. Father, teacher. Stimulus word tree. Son number one, 
green. Daughter number two, tall. Son number two, forest. Father, cherry. Stimulus word, ride. Son number one, cavalry. Daughter number two, on horseback. Son number two, horse. Father, horse. Stimulus word, wall. Son number one, part of a room. Daughter number two, part of a room. Son number two, room. Father, carpet. Stimulus word, tooth. Son number one, should be white. Daughter number two, hard. Son number two, mouth. Father, contagion. Stimulus word, book. Son number one, means of learning. Daughter number two, square. Son number two, read. Father, Bible. Stimulus word, hunger. Son number one, unpleasant. Daughter number two, the best cook. Son number two, bread. Father, hurts. Stimulus word, pencil. Son number one, writing material. Daughter number two, long. Son number two, right. Father, ink. Stimulus word, big. Son number one, house. Daughter number two, buildings. Son number two, land. Father, tree. Stimulus word, luck. Son number one, gracious. Daughter number two, beautiful. Son number two, in games. Father, advantageous. Stimulus word, manners. Son number one, necessary. Daughter number two, necessary. Son number two, man. Father, beautiful. Stimulus word, kiss. Son number one, the beloved. Daughter number two, the loved one. Son number two, love. Father, bride. Stimulus word, door. Son number one, for opening. Daughter number two, for opening. Son number two, wide. Father, imperfect. Stimulus word, hay. Son number one, dry. Daughter number two, brittle. Son number two, barn. Father, tastes good. Stimulus word, month. Son number one, period of year. Daughter number two, part of the year. Son number two, February. Father, year. Stimulus word, surprise. Son number one, mistake. Daughter number two, event. Son number two, something. Father, stolen. Stimulus word, moon. Son number one, heavenly body. Daughter number two, part of the world. Son number two, night. Father, full. This comparative table, shown on page 430 of the text, shows pretty clearly the similarity between son number one and the second daughter. They have not only several associations verbally alike, but there is a striking harmony in the tendency of their reactions. Their predicate attitude is also shown in the reactions which are not counted among the predicates. There is attention to the meaning of the stimulus word, whilst son number two and his father show a somewhat more objective and superficial adjustment. These examples seem to show that the difference in reaction type does not correspond with any merely intellectual difference, but rather with peculiarity of effect. This probably consists in the two first subjects, son number one and the second daughter, having a particular emotional relationship towards the experimenter, which accidentally is the same in both. It is absent in the other two. Whilst the eldest daughter has but few more value predicates than other predicates, her mother has a preponderance of value predicates. In this family, she exhibits the highest number of predicates. The youngest daughter comes next to her, but her predicates are chiefly objective. Stimulus word, dance. Mother, pleasure. Daughter, in ballroom. Stimulus word, swim. Mother, healthy. Daughter, child. Stimulus word, journey. Mother, pleasure. Daughter, the traveler. Stimulus word, bread. Mother, healthy. Daughter, we eat. Stimulus word, to sing. Mother, beautiful. Daughter, loud. Stimulus word, habits. Mother, good. Daughter, old habits. Stimulus word, ride. Mother, healthy. Daughter, rider. Stimulus word, tooth. Mother, intolerable. Daughter, white. Stimulus word, book. Mother, useful. Daughter, rectangular. Stimulus word, plum. Mother, good. Daughter, blue. Stimulus word, potato. Mother, useful. Daughter, round. Stimulus word, cow. Mother, useful. Daughter, gives milk. 
Stimulus word, hay. Mother, smells nice. Daughter, light. We see that the daughter, with her definite tendency to predicates, expresses these chiefly as positive attributes. Her mother seems to put much more personal feeling into her reactions. The father, with his moderate predicate type, is, on the whole, much nearer the type of the children than the mother. Jung's calculations make the average difference between father and children 2.8, between mother and children 4.2, the relationship between father and sons 2.5, between father and daughters, three. The relationship of the mother shows corresponding but high figures. Between mother and daughters, 3.9. Between mother and sons, 4.7. These figures prove the fact, confirmed by the nature of the associations, that in this family, the sons approximate to the father's type and the daughters to the mother's. This would have been even greater in the case of the eldest daughter if a particular cause of disturbance had not arisen in the second hundred test words. In the second hundred, there was an increase of the motor reactions, especially of the word completions and definitions, to the prejudice of the predicates and coordinations. The cause was as follows. The experiment took place on a day when she was expecting to meet her betrothed at a party in the evening. She was able to keep her attention directed to the experiment during the first hundred, showing no distraction. Her attention wandered in the second hundred, and she reacted very slowly. Being repeatedly requested to take notice of what she was doing, she reacted for a little while with superordinations and definitions, again slacking off into verbal reactions. Family 7 Very unintelligent and quite uneducated artisan family. The peculiarity of this family, which at once strikes the eye, is the sharp division into two different types, the father and son having a definition type, the mother and daughter, a mixed type leaning towards the predicate. The associations of father and son, the ratio of whose figures shows such close agreement, have a very different appearance on the surface, and deserve, therefore, special review. The son's associations. Water. Clear and cold. Lake. Deep and much water. Resin. What's sticky? Stories. To tell. Understand. Arithmetic. Apple. What one eats. Book. What one reads. Visit. To friends. Potato. Grows in the field. Plate. What's flat. Smooth. Feather. Narrow. Close. Stone. Hard. Steeple. What's high. Cart, where sacks are loaded. Station, where trains go. Coffee, people can drink. Tree, what bears fruit. Hay, what the cows eat. Angel is not seen. Buy, cow. Needle, which pricks. Clergyman, who preaches. Punish, if you gossip. Satchel, where you put your exercise books. Bed, when you sleep. Stork, what has a great beak. Cupboard, where you put clothes. Pipe, where water goes through. Sheet, what you write upon. House, where people live in. Sofa, what you sit upon. Soldier, who is in military service. Air, what floats about the earth. Goat, what has horns. Public house, where you drink beer. Lamp, to make it light. Friendly, to greet relatives. Rich, when you get lots of money. Mountain, where you must climb up. Quarrel, when one person says another thing, then the other. Impudence, to take something right away from somebody. Quick, when you run. Sleep, when the eyes are closed. Strong, when you can lift something heavy. Modest, when you don't say much. Locksmith, who works with iron. Free, after being shut in. The form of the association with its numerous sentences, 70%, beginning with what, the, etc., conditions a reaction type which is deceptively similar on a cursory examination to the method of associations Wehrlin found in high-grade feeble-minded. A more thorough examination shows that the similarity is only superficial, 
and that the associations go far beyond that kind. In comparison with the associations of imbeciles and idiots, we have points in common. Number one, in the majority of the associations, the meaning of the stimulus word is apprehended as if it were a question. Number two, the reaction is not automatic, but is thought out with great attention and straining. It has a tendency to explanation. The subject became emotional and reacted very slowly. The experiment lasted three hours. Number three, the reaction is in many words or whole sentences. 70% with where you, when you. Number four, the formation of school sentences. Number five, the circumlocutions. Number six, the large number of associations of purpose and example. Number seven, many definitions, 55%, and many tautologies. Number eight, many associations of activities. Points not in common. Number one, the relatively large number, 35%, of normal, non-explanatory reactions in a single word, or with selected, appropriate, changing, objective, outer and value predicates, which show very few repetitions. These reactions alone show that this subject stands above imbeciles in regard to wealth of words and understanding. For imbeciles, when they use predicates, do so monotonously, using very few words, perhaps black and white, throughout the whole experiment, and using them most inappropriately. Number two, the ordinary coexistences and associations of activities. Number three, the almost complete absence of far-reaching and specialized general concepts, such as tree, portion of, cherry, thing in the garden, of superordinates, simple tautologies, where the stimulus word is explained by a synonym, diminutive, attribute, or by the opposite with the negative such as mountain, a high mountain, flower, a mayflower, flower, a little flower, light is not dark. Number four, the greater developed power of abstraction. The examples and true definitions are more general and abstract and generally explain the meaning of the stimulus word neatly and sufficiently by bringing out the essential. We do not find here instances, as we do in Wehrland's Idiots, where the subject explains the stimulus word by some quite secondary, external and visible attribute. Nor do we find the specially concrete examples of the idiot, such as prison, that's got a little window, father, he once threw me downstairs, hair, what gets cut, mountain, there's a tree upon which cherries grow. Although the father's associations are very near the son's qualitatively, Externally, they differ considerably, but the same tendency is present as the following instances from the father's list show. Head, part of body, wool, factory, snake, reptile, ink, liquid, ship, means of transport, decency, human nature, coal, stuff for burning, ill, natural thing, hay, part of plant, colored, color combination. Talk, human need. Despise, human vice. Clergyman, personality. Book, reading matter. Stock, part of plant. Resin, sap of tree. Soldier, liable to service. State, corporation. Table, furniture of room. Wall, part of house. New, thing just made. Goat, domestic animal. Sail, part of ship's body. Plum, stone fruit. Axe, tool. Tree, plant class. Threaten, human wickedness. Copybook, mass of paper. Angel, unseen being. Bread, daily food. Quick, rapid movement. Folk, community. Law is caution. Quiet, human nature. Right, work. Mountain, a massive. Swim, bodily exercise. Month, calculation of time. Hunger, bodily feeling. The subject is an extreme definition type. 85.5% of the associations have a defining quality, 
60% of these being direct definitions. The subject showed strong emotion during the tests and endeavored earnestly to give correct answers. The reaction times were very long. The experiment lasted two and a half hours. After repeated reminders to give the first reaction, he could not be turned away from his association type. In contrast with the sun, the similarity of the associations with those of imbeciles are here rather in content than in form. Whilst many of the associations sound like those of an affected hebraphiniac, here again we find the apprehension of the stimulus word in the sense of a question, and the tendency to explain or to define it. But the associations differ from those of the imbecile in many respects. The superordinations are generally more appropriate and sufficiently characteristic of the content of the stimulus word. Only occasionally do we come across general concepts, used too specifically, and subordinations used too broadly, giving a very imperfect characteristic of the stimulus word. In contradistinction to the imbecile, the true definitions are more general and more abstract, and really explain the stimulus word. Associations such as family, corporation, fire, mass of heat, song, combination of tunes, sail, part of ship's body, make a curious impression, scarcely explicable by want of intelligence. Such reactions, which one must regard as affected or extravagant, speak in favor of a lively impulse to react in, as educated, a way as possible. In this wise, he seeks to compensate for a vivid feeling of inferiority. C.P. Jung's Psychology of Dementia Precox, page 74. I have seen the same thing among intelligent people, for example, in a student who was also a pronounced definition type, but naturally expressed himself in a more educated way. The young man was somewhat embarrassed and obviously endeavored not to display his intellectual nakedness before me. He could not have found any better way of demonstrating his embarrassment. The comparison of father and son shows much similarity in their tendency of reaction, although the reactions appear outwardly very different. This is again evidence that emotional factors play the chief part in the difference of reaction type. The associations of mother and daughter also show an extreme adaptation to the meaning of the stimulus word, but there was less embarrassment. There was no special emphasis on the intellectual factor so distinctly found in father and son. There is great agreement both in type and in individual reactions, as the following examples show. Stimulus word, angel. Mother, innocent. Daughter, innocent. Stimulus word, haughty. Mother, bad boy. Daughter, bad boy. Stimulus word, stock. Mother, leaks stock. Daughter, stocks for soup. Stimulus word, dance. Mother, couple. Daughter, gentleman and lady. Stimulus word, lake. Mother, much water. Daughter, great. Stimulus word, threaten. Mother, father. Daughter, father. Stimulus word, lamp. Mother, burns bright. Daughter, gives light. Stimulus word, rich. Mother, king. Daughter, king. Stimulus word, new. Mother, dress. Daughter, dress. Stimulus word, tooth. Mother, biting. Daughter, pains. Stimulus word, take care. Mother, industrious pupil. Daughter, pupil. Stimulus word, pencil. Mother, long. Daughter, black. Stimulus word, law. Mother, God's command. Daughter, Moses. Stimulus word, love. Mother, child. Daughter, father and mother. Stimulus word, glass. Mother, light. Daughter, breakable. Stimulus word, great. Mother, god. Daughter, father. Stimulus word, potato. Mother, bulb. Daughter, bulb. Stimulus word, hit. Mother, father. Daughter, bad boy. Stimulus word, family. Mother, several persons. Daughter, of five persons. Stimulus word, strange. Mother, traveler, male. Daughter, traveler, female. Stimulus word, brother. Mother, loves me. Daughter, love. Stimulus word, kiss. Mother, mother. Daughter, mother. Stimulus word, fire. Mother, great pain. Daughter, painful. Stimulus word, door. Mother, wide. Daughter, big. Stimulus word, hay. Mother, dry. 
Daughter, dry. Stimulus word, mock. Mother, shame. Daughter, stupidity. Stimulus word, month. Mother, many days. Daughter, 31 days. Stimulus word, air. Mother, cool. Daughter, moist. Stimulus word, coal. Mother, sooty. Daughter, black. Stimulus word, fruit. Mother, sweet. Daughter, sweet. Stimulus word, make. Mother, father. Daughter, parents. Stimulus word, jolly. Mother, happy child. Daughter, little children. These examples, which show a far-reaching similarity between mother and daughter, are still more striking on comparing the reactions of father and son. According to Jung's calculations, the difference between father and mother is 9.4, between mother and daughter, 2, between father and son, 4, between mother and son, 7. The son, therefore, is more like his father than is his mother by 2.4. Family 8, an artisan family with the usual schooling and of medium intelligence. It includes a sister of the mother who lives with the family. The whole family present a definite predicate type, like families 6 and 7 with their 12- and 13-year-old daughters, the 12- and 15-year-old daughters have a more pronounced predicate type than the mother. The greatest agreement is found between father and the two daughters, D equals 1.2 and 1.65. Then between the two daughters, D equals 1.8. Stimulus word, family. Father, large. First daughter, large. Second daughter, large. Stimulus word, time. Father perishes. First daughter, short. Second daughter, long. Stimulus word, ground. Father, deep. First daughter, deep. Second daughter, firm. Stimulus word, sleeve. Father, long. First daughter, long. Second daughter, wide. Stimulus word, thousand. Father, number. First daughter, big number. Second daughter, big number. Stimulus word, smart. Father, Beautiful. First daughter. New. Second daughter. Big. Stimulus word. Slate pencil. Father. Short. First daughter. Pointed. Second daughter. Black. Stimulus word. Raspberry. Father. Sweet. First daughter. Good. Second daughter. Sweet. Stimulus word. Hedge. Father. Thorny. First daughter. Thick. Second daughter. Long. Stimulus word, vinegar. Father, sharp. First daughter, sharp. Second daughter, bitter. Stimulus word, to crack. Father, glasses. First daughter, egg. Second daughter, egg. These examples will serve as illustrations of their common predicative adaptation. The mother's associations do not differ considerably from these. Her difference from the father is 2.6. Her type is rather more superficial than her husband's, 12.5 more outer associations. Otherwise, we find in her, as in her husband, a preponderance of indirect predicates as compared with high-value predicates. She belongs to the reserved predicate type. It is chiefly in consequence of her more superficial type that she differs by 3.6 from her daughters, who, as mentioned, present an intense predicate type. The mother's sister, living with the family, Likewise shows a similar predicate type, which approximates rather to the type of the daughters, her nieces, than to that of her sister. Difference from her nieces, 3, from her sister, 4.4. The cause of this difference is partly to be found in the fact that she, like her nieces, produces considerably more inner associations than their mother. We shall investigate this relationship more closely in the following family. Family 9. Artisan Family husband and wife of medium intelligence, uneducated. The wife is the third sister of the wife in foregoing family, has been married several years, and lives in another milieu. This family exhibits a type diametrically opposed to the last one. Only traces of predicates are present, whilst we find a surprising number of inner associations, especially of contrasts. While there were practically no contrasts in the last family, 0.4 per subject, here they average 22.5. There is an unusual agreement between husband and wife in their associations, D equals 1.4,
which seems the more remarkable for there is an appearance of the wife having possibly had another type formerly. We may perhaps venture to suppose, from the facts hitherto observed, that members of the same family approximate in type to one another, especially if they are of the same sex. It is likely, therefore, that the wife did belong rather more to the type of her two sisters. It was only subsequently, after her joint life with her husband, that she took on his type, in other words, acquired the same effective factors which produce the type. By the following comparative results of this family and the two sisters of family eight, the reader can judge of the differences in attitude, uninfluenced by any differences of views as to classification. First sister, mother in family eight. Stimulus word, ink, black, bread, fresh, lamp, light, tree, leafless, copybook, dirty, book, thick, pencil, black, sing, nice, tooth, white, flower, scent, water, cool, dance, joy, haughty, naughty child, song, nice, potato, good, threaten, wicked, manners, nice, Family, big. People, big. Foreign, wander. False, bad. Fruit, good. Public house, great. Kiss, child. Blood, red. Love, love God. Second sister, family, eight. Ink, black. Bread, white. Lamp. Light. Tree. Tall. Copybook. Thick. Book. Learned. Pencil. Short. Sing. Entertaining. Tooth. False. Flower. Red. Water. Clear. Dance. Waltz. Haughty. Little children. Song. Hymn. Potato. Frozen. Threaten, stupid. Manners, in company. Family, widespread. People, warlike. Foreign, foreigner. False, snake. Fruit, deer. Public house, frequented. Kiss, fiancé. Blood, red. Love, parents. Third sister, wife in family nine. Ink, water. Bread, sweet. Lamp, flower vase. Tree, shrub. Copybook, book. Book, album. Pencil, pen holder. Sing, jump. Tooth, tongue. Flower, bushes. Water, milk. Dance, jump. Haughty, friendly. Song, music. Potato, bean. Threaten, complain. Manners and customs. Family, congregation. People, town. Foreign, home. False, friendly. Fruit, wine. Public house, shop. Kiss, cuddle. Blood, water. Love, praise. Her husband in family nine. Ink, Indian ink. Bread, potatoes. Lamp, umbrella. Tree, root. Copybook, book. Book, copybook. Pencil, ink. Sing, laugh. Tooth, ache. Flower, grass. Water, cold water. Dance, drink. Haughty, soft-hearted. Song, zither. Potato, carrots. Threaten to adjust. Manners, no manners. Family, sex. People, country. Foreign, livable. False, like a cat. Fruit, vegetables. Public house, restaurant. Kiss, love. Blood, frog's blood. Love, hate. These examples will suffice to show the similarity between the first two sisters and the dissimilarity of the third. 
Jung's calculations show that the first and second sisters differ from the third by 8 to 8.8, whilst their difference from each other is only 4.4. Our classification may have its own defects and vagaries, but such cases teach us that, at least, they suffice to express statistically such differences. Thus, we have an instrument which enables us to reap the first fruits in these still uncultivated fields. End of section 46. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Section 47 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 11, Statistical Investigations on Word Associations and on Familial Agreement in Reaction Type Among Uneducated Persons, Part 4. Summary of the Results The material here reviewed consists of nine families with 37 subjects, aged from 9 to 74 years. With the exception of one person who is rather more highly educated, all the subjects are quite uncultured. Only 10 had attended the secondary schools for two years. The remaining 26 had only an elementary schooling. The persons all lived in an uncultured milieu. We were able to examine the relationship of inner to outer associations in regard to parents and children in six cases. In five families, we experimented with both parents, in one family with the mother only. Let us first of all consider the relationship of mother and child and compare it with the results of Jung and Ricklin. In three families, all the children had more inner associations than the mother. The children were between 9 and 15. In two families, the youngest child, a 13 and a 27-year-old daughter respectively, had more inner, all the others more outer, associations than the mother. We can express these results in a formula. All children under 16 have more inner associations than the mother, and, with one exception, all children over 16 have more outer associations than the mother. The relationship of children to father is somewhat different. Eight children had more inner and three more outer associations than the father. No rule can be laid down as regards the age of the child. Hence, Jung and Ricklin's statement is only confirmed conditionally. A further result is that the husbands tend to have more outer associations than their wives, and, in general, the sons more than the daughters. From this, we may conclude that in my investigations, the attention of the female subjects was less inhibited towards the experiment. A comparison of brothers and sisters shows that in youth, the sisters have a greater tendency towards inner associations. In the intermediate and later years, the brothers have the greater tendency. We are unable, so far as these tests are concerned, to draw any definite conclusions as to the effect of age. We have considered the sisters and brothers, all the male and all the female subjects, and all the subjects in general, and we find enormous individual differences. The conclusion of Ranchberg and Balance seem, therefore, to require revision. The examination of this question in married couples gave no results. In seven families, the husband had more inner associations. The wives were aged between 32 and 44, the husbands aged between 34 and 46. In three cases, the wives, aged between 34 and 46, had more inner associations than their husbands, aged from 33 to 60. On the other hand, the more intelligent and better educated or better read individual of a married couple seems to have more outer associations. The predicate type preponderates among these uneducated persons. Besides the 21 persons of the predicate type having more than 40% predicates, there were 6 persons in the mixed type with a great number of predicates. In them, the number of predicates exceeded the numbers of all the other chief groups, such as coordination, coexistences, and motor speech reactions. If we add these 6 of the mixed type with their predicative tendency to their predicate type, we have 27 persons of the predicate type equal to 72% of the 
of all the subjects. The frequency of the predicate type is rather greater in women, 17 women to 10 men, which corresponds with the findings of Jung and Ricklin. The remaining types are so poorly represented in this material that nothing definite or characteristic can be said about them, with the exception of the definition type, which was seen exclusively in males, both in its pure form and in a mixed form, three cases. Jung and Ricklin have put forward the hypothesis that the predicate type corresponds to a psychological peculiarity, which is even preserved during artificial distraction. Chapter 2, page 160. They hold that the mechanism of the predicate type consists in the primary appearance of vivid pictures, which by reason of their powerful emotional tone, give rise to a corresponding subjectively colored predicative verbal reaction. From my tests, I can but confirm their view of a marked emotional factor, but it is difficult to say upon what psychological factor this predicate attitude rests. An accidental individual complex can hardly be the cause. The type is too common and likewise too familial for that. The most probable supposition seems to me to be that this arises out of a general emotional attitude towards the experimenter. The frequency of the predicate type makes it worthwhile to study its occurrence more accurately. Let us first of all consider its quantitative behavior in males and females. The ratio of value predicates to other predicates is, in males, 1 to 1.55, in females, 1 to 0.84. That means that, among men, the positive predicate predominates as against the subjectively toned value predicates. In women, it is the reverse. How does the predicate type behave as regards different age periods? We will first investigate the ages between 10 and 40, and then between 41 and 80. We get these results. In men, years 10 to 40, value predicates to objective predicates equal 1 to 2.17. Years 41 to 80, value predicates to objective predicates equals 1 to 1.27. In women, years 10 to 40, value predicates to objective predicates equal 1 to 1.14. Years 41 to 80, value predicates to objective predicates equals 1 to 0.38. In both groups, there is seen a greater tendency to value predicates in age than in youth, greater in women than in men. In women, the preponderance of value predicates begins at 41 years. In men, only at 61 years. From 61 to 80 years, the ratio among men is 1 to 0.68. From 41 to 60 years, it is 1 to 2.14. Should these figures be confirmed, we should be able to say that in these experiments, the disposition peculiar to the predicate type, in other words, an increase of the subjective tendency, undergoes a considerable increase in women about the 40th year, but in men much later, about the 60th year. If we venture to regard this tendency as an inflow of more personal emotions, it must be accepted that about this period of life, there are important changes in the effective disposition. In contrast to the work of Jung and Ricklin in Chapter 2, my figures show a considerable preponderance of inner associations. This difference cannot be due to classification, for Dr. Jung confirmed my conclusions and compared my material with his earlier one. Besides, the important differences in those reactions where abnormalities are easily recognized, Klang reactions and remainder group, show that it is not a question of classification. The difference must be in the material. Jung and Ricklin took as their uneducated subjects the male and female attendants of the asylum, whilst my material was gathered from persons less intellectual and of a lower social grade. Another circumstance is probably not without importance. In Jung and Ricklin's experiments, the persons were in the service of the experimenters. This influences the affectivity. The increase of inner associations as the intelligence and social scale decreases are shown by the figures is the expression of a well-known fact, which has been fully explained in earlier chapters. The finding of Jung and Ricklin corresponds to the rather more superficial type of reaction in men as compared with women. Among the inner associations, the greatest difference is in the number of value predicates. Jung and Ricklin pointed out a preference among women, especially among the uneducated, for the predicate type. The difference ought to come out markedly here because I have separated the individual predicates as far as practicable 
whilst they were all reckoned together by Jung and Ricklin. The difference lies, we find, chiefly in the value predicates. Another prominent difference is the preference of the definition type by men. The figures show that the female subjects have a subjective personal attitude, whilst the men have generally an objective intellectual attitude. Whilst in Jung and Ricklin's figures, the remainder group, which chiefly contains the results of disturbance, shows higher figures on the average among men, here the women have the higher figure. Whether this is related to the sex of the experimenter or is a merely accidental difference is hard to say. The familial agreements and the tendency of the reaction, which I found to be qualitative and pointed out in the individual cases, have been worked out by Jung statistically. Based upon 268 comparisons of unrelated men and women in my material, requiring 8,000 single comparisons, the mean difference of non-related men is 5.9 and of non-related women is 6. These mean figures are valuable because they give a measure for the estimation of the intrafamilial differences clearly shown in the following figures. The mean difference of related men is 4.1, that of women 3.8. These figures are considerably lower than the difference of non-related persons, and we may conclude that relations have, on the whole, a tendency to agree in their reaction type. The mean deviation of the series of figures lying at the base of the first figures amounts to 1.2, that of the latter is 1.5. The difference among the men rests, therefore, upon a series of fairly uniform composition, whilst the mean difference among the women is composed of an unequal series. Verbally expressed, some related women differ very strongly, whilst others agree in their reaction type much more than do related men. Mean difference between fathers and children, 4.2, 2.4. Mean difference between mothers and children, 3.5, 1.0. The figure in brackets is the mean deviation of the mean. Mothers and children present a relatively strong and uniform agreement, whilst fathers and children, on the whole, agree less although there are some exceptions where there is close agreement, as the high figure for mean deviation shows. Mean difference between fathers and sons, 3.1, 0.6. Mean difference between mothers and daughters, 3, 1.0. Mean difference between fathers and daughters, 4.9, 3.5. Mean difference between mothers and sons, 4.7, 1.2. The agreement between fathers and sons is almost uniformly even, likewise that between mothers and daughters. The crossed relationships show the same thing by their relatively high differential values. Mean difference of brothers among themselves, 4.7, 14. Mean difference of sisters among themselves, 5.1, 2.4. Brothers show a relatively slight agreement, that of the sisters is still less but the figure for the mean deviation of the mean shows that there are exceptions. This is at once seen when one excludes the married sisters from the comparison. Mean difference of unmarried brothers among themselves, 4.8, 1.0. Mean difference of unmarried sisters among themselves, 3.4, 1.7. Whilst the difference among brothers does not alter essentially, the difference among sisters sinks considerably. This signifies that the married sisters differ considerably among themselves, but not the single ones. It would seem that marriage disturbs the agreement in reaction type, insofar as the husband may belong to another type. Mean difference of brothers and sisters, 4.4, 1.5. In this relationship, a relatively uniform, slight agreement seems to prevail. Mean difference of husband and wife, 4.7, 3.2. Here, we note a fairly slight average agreement, which, however, varies very greatly. In other words, there are cases of higher agreement and others of the greatest divergence. This was already brought out in the presentation of the individual families. The best and most uniform agreement is found among parents and their children of the same sex. The children differ more among themselves than from their parents. They differ more from the father than from the mother. The daughters approximate more to their mothers than do sons to their fathers. Unmarried daughters agree in their reactions among themselves more than do unmarried sons, 
just as related women in general agree more among themselves than do related men. Marriage seems only exceptionally to lead to a greater agreement of the pair. The whole material is too limited for these figures to be regarded as authoritative and final. They should be merely considered as indications. Finally, let me express my best thanks to Professor Bluler for his stimulus in this work, and especially to Dr. Jung for his kind cooperation and valuable advice when carrying it out. End of section 47. Read by Rochelle Bereni. Section 48 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Ader. Chapter 12 on the Psychogalvanic Phenomenon in Association Experiments, Part 1 By Dr. L. Binswanger, Part 1, Introduction, Historical Survey, Technique of the Experiments At the instance of Dr. Jung, I have carried out association experiments as modified at the Zurich Psychiatric Clinic on 23 healthy persons, who, during the entire experiment, were subjected to a very feeble electric current. The source was in most cases one Bunsen cell of not more than 15 volts tension. The electrodes were made of thin brass plates which were placed on the hands. In the current, there was inserted a sensitive to prey darsa balls, mirror galvanometer, constants, 5100 equals 10 to the 10th amperes, 0 0.08 millimeters in diameter, which registered the fluctuations of the current during the experiment. There was also a shunt which reduced the oscillations of the current upon the galvanometer and quickly brought the excursions of the mirror to rest again. A celluloid scale divided into millimeters and centimeters with a lamp upon it, was placed one meter from the galvanometer, the lamp throwing a perpendicular beam of light upon the galvanometer mirror. The variations of the mirror and the variations in the strength of the current are measured by the excursions of the beam of light upon the scale. When associations are carried out with this arrangement, it is noticed that in almost any reaction under normal conditions, the beam of light undergoes a greater or lesser excursion on the scale. At first, this is in the direction of the conducting current, in our tests always from left to right. It then halts a moment, thereupon returning again to the proximity of its first position. This excursion of the beam of light, which corresponds to a change in the strength of the current in our circuit, is called the galvanic deviation. As psychical processes in the subject influence the changes in the strength of the current, we designate the whole phenomenon, after Veraguth, as the psychogalvanic phenomenon. Attempts to connect galvanic changes with psychical processes are not new. The history of these attempts shows two widely separated movements which originally were quite distinct. In these movements, Tarchinov, Sticker, the reactions of the subject towards a current were not investigated, but the currents which occur on the superficies of the skin of the subject during psychical processes were directly measured. For this purpose, unpolarized electrodes were used, by means of which the current is led through the galvanometer. I agree with Tarchinov. Despite Sticker's objection, that this is essentially a measurement of the secretory current of the skin, sweat glandular system. The experiments of Summer and Furstenau form a transition from the first method to the second, to which latter we adhere. They use zinc and charcoal plates as electrodes, but without using any galvanic cell as the source of the current. I speak of this method 
as a transition because it is still partly a question of secretory currents. Footnote. It should not, however, be forgotten that we are dealing here with currents which owe their origin to the potential difference between skin and electrodes, whilst the true secretory currents arise entirely in the living body. End of footnote. To this, however, a second factor is added, which probably plays the chief part, changes in the resistance of the subject to electrical conduction. This method can be combined with the second method by using a galvanic cell, as well as electrodes of zinc and charcoal. Footnote. The latter must then, of course, be placed in the direction of the circulating current. End of footnote. Ferre was the first to make investigations of the effect of psychical processes upon the changes in resistance to electrical conduction. He applied sensory stimuli to his subjects. From a certain point of view, one might include here the investigations begun in 1878 by Romain Vigoureux on hysterics and Graves' disease and those made by his nephew, A. Vigoureux, on melancholics. These works show us clearly the effect of psychic factors upon the electrical resistance of the human body. In 1904, the engineer E.K. Müller made experiments in Zurich upon the changes in physical resistance to the galvanic current. Ferragath learned the phenomena from these experiments to which Jung then drew attention. I cannot enter here into the physical and physiological sides of the phenomenon. So far it seems to me that even with the tests in a conducting current, the sweat glandular system plays a great part. That does not mean that we could only deal with sweat perceptible to our senses, but rather that it is a question of the secretory process brought about by stimulation of the nerves. I am here in agreement with the views expressed by Biedermann in his Electrical Physiology on the electromotor effects of epithelial and sweat cells that the secretion of sweat is intimately bound up with psychical processes is current knowledge, experimentally proved by Adam Kiewitz in 1878. Nevertheless, despite numerous experiments, we are still in the region of hypothesis and do not even know if we really measure the same physiological processes under different arrangements of the experiments. All these investigators noticed the influence of psychical action upon the galvanic processes. Tarchinov, who seems to have been the first to confirm the connection of sweating with psychical activity, concludes, Nearly every kind of nerve action, although there may be a time limit, from the simplest impressions and sensations to the highest mental activity and spontaneous motor expression, is accompanied by increased activity of the sweat glands. He regards this increased activity of the sweat glands as the cause of the variation in the electric current shown by the galvanometer. Sticker writes, I have repeatedly convinced myself that the origin of the galvanic skin phenomenon is under the influence of exciting mental impressions and that the will has no effect upon it. This reflex could be used with great advantage for the discovery of words and pictures that influence the emotions. In a word, which will be listened to by many without any reaction, whoever takes the meaning of something to heart will react with the strong galvanic skin phenomenon. Whoever is from any cause emotionally roused on looking at a picture will react with the definite increase of the current whilst whoever is unmoved by the picture, or in whom it arouses no memory, will have no skin excitation. Sticker calls attention to the forensic importance of the phenomenon. Summer, on the other hand, writes, We have not observed with any certainty that psychical processes have any influence, such as Tarchinov has noticed upon the current, apart from the reaction phenomena after tickling. When some psychical influence does occur, as after fright, 
It is conditioned, according to Summer and First Denial, by the muscular contractions that arise and the contact changes thus caused in the electrodes. We shall see later that such muscular contractions do now and then play a part in the psychogalvanic experiment, but they do not explain the whole phenomenon. A. Vigoru, referring to Ferre on this point, says, Si dernier observe qui la resistance électrique de ses subjets. He is dealing with hysterics. A. diminué par la fête d'excitations sensorials diverses. Visionnels, various colores, auditives, diaspason et pots, gustatives, olfactives, etc., and adds, on pourrait également reprocher de ces fêtes le diminution de la résistance chez le malade à tens de maladie de Bassadeau, une émotivité extrémiste en effet, la caractéristique de la tête mentale de ces malades. Muller writes, « Toute influence psychique, proper ou étranger, a pour effet immédiat, le cas et chance, une norme différence dans le résultat de ma zirage. » Diminution de la résistance jusqu'à à one third to one fifth. Farragut insists as clearly as possible upon the effect of psychical factors, especially of the emotions, in sensory and psychical stimuli causing changes in the current. But when he says, it is not the emotional tone alone which conditions the strength of the galvanic reaction. In higher psychical stimuli, further factors to be considered are their actuality. I must admit that the division of these two factors does not seem necessary. The only concept we can frame about actuality is surely its increased emotional tone in regard to non-present things. It is noticed that stronger deviations occur when a stimulus word arouses a presentation which is actual, for the subject, i.e., one which occupied him just before or during the test. It is stronger than when a complex is touched which years ago played some part. But actuality is not an addition to the emotional tone. The actuality is the emotional tone. It is only another expression for increased emotional tone. I have myself avoided the word actual because we can always replace it by the less dubious expression, emotionally toned. In many cases, moreover, it is difficult to say whether a complex is really actual for the subject, in very good sense. The analysis in many cases discloses undoubted relationships of an old complex to the present. In the same way, an apparently actual complex which momentarily seems very much to occupy the subject, may derive its essential effect from events of long ago. Both will come to light quite clearly in Test 1. For this reason also, I have avoided the designation actual. This survey of the views of other authors shows us that they nearly all have observed deviations and emotionally toned psychical processes only. Tarchinov, alone claims to have found galvanometric changes in every kind of nerve action. At all events in our experiments with the conducted current, we could only perceive that the psychogalvanic phenomenon occurred in effective processes, with associations indifferent to the subject, which aroused no emotion. There was no deviation, any more than when reading something indifferent an observation that Farragut had already made, or on adding up easy figures which entail no effort. In the same way, purely intellectual sensations produce no deviation when their emotional tone is lowered, e.g. by repetition. This we shall call attention to in the section on physical movements and deep inspiration. Naturally, the expressions, not emotionally toned, purely intellectual, 
must be taken cum grano salis. They are entirely relative to the order of the research as a whole, and particularly to the sensitiveness of the galvanometer used. Reactions which evoke no response in one galvanometer, which are for us therefore not emotionally toned, may evoke response in a more sensitive instrument. Hence it is very important to consider the sensitiveness of the galvanometer. With an extremely sensitive instrument, we could receive responses during an indifferent reading, addition, etc. For we are never in a state of completely devoid of emotion, free from innervations altogether. To Veragath, our due, our thanks for having been the first to take associations with the galvanometer. He noticed that the association curve moved in an ascending line, in contradistinction to the rest curve, which is obtained when the subject sits quietly, taking as little part as possible. That in the same person, different words evoke extremely different changes in the curves. That those stimulus words which touch an actual emotional complex produce stronger fluctuations than indifferent words. He also observed that the excursions are stronger when the subject reacts by words than when he does not, and that the first indifferent stimulus words usually evoke stronger fluctuations than the later indifferent ones. Tarchinov had previously determined the influence of expectation upon the galvanic phenomenon. Beregoth noticed its occurrence in association experiments, fluctuation from expectation. Besides the psychological effects upon the galvanic phenomenon, there are a great number of physiological and physical effects which we cannot here consider. Insofar as they influence the experiment, they will be discussed later. We shall just mention the enormous effect of cold and warmth and the degree of moisture of the epidermis upon the conducting powers of the skin. If, despite these effects, we still regard the psychogalvanic phenomenon as an invaluable instrument in the analysis of the emotions, it is because we were able to convince ourselves in the course of months of investigations that the psychological factors can generally be separated pretty easily from the others. When the former are at all pronounced, we may disregard the physical and physiological influences. Of course, the psychological factors, in order to be noted by the galvanometer, must of themselves produce physiological and physical changes, which will be of an extremely fine kind. In the striking promptness and exactitude found in the connection between the galvanic phenomenon and the psychical processes, there can be no question of gross physical or chemical processes interpolated between the two. Above all, it is no question of processes which, once aroused, pursue their path independently of psychical events. Rather, are we constrained to admit processes whose course is continually controlled, furthered, or stayed by the central organ. The experiments demand no further detailed description. Of the 30 subjects, tests in 23 were undertaken with the conducted circuit and brass or nickel electrodes, in 2 with the conducted circuit and water contact, in 5 with the sum of first and now arrangement, zinc and charcoal electrodes, or galvanic cell. We shall return to this in reviewing the single groups. Reading off and registering the galvanometer deviations. Determining and marking the reaction time. The subject is instructed, as usual, how to react and is requested to avoid all movement as far as possible. This is not asking too much, but the sitting only lasts 30 to 40 minutes and the patient can rest quite comfortably. The test is then begun. Before calling out the stimulus word, a glance is given at the scale, and the place noted with a beam of light, its right margin, persists. The stimulus word is called out, and as a rule, a galvanometer deviation follows at once. The deviation is taken to be the greatest excursion 
which the beam of light makes in a positive direction on the scale. As soon as the positive fluctuation returns again, i.e. becomes negative, the beginning and end of the excursion are written down. Footnote. It is not infrequently occurs that whilst writing it down, the negative deviation again changes into a positive one. This arises from perseveration or from fresh emotional tone and would in any case be noticed in the subsequent reactions since these would begin with a higher figure. If the subsequent positive fluctuation is again followed by a negative one, it is best to correct the lower figure that has been written down by adding the second positive movement to the first. End of footnote. The reaction word is then noted, and then, last of all, the reaction time. The latter is fixed by the one-fifth second watch, whilst the two former data must be kept in the memory. The reaction time is determined by pressing on the button of the watch, held in the left hand, at the moment the stimulus and reaction words are pronounced. At first, it is easy to forget this, because the experimenter's attention is taken up with observing the beam of light. But it soon becomes automatic. At the reproduction test, it is best to calculate the difference in the figures noted for the deviation and to write it down. For each reaction, there is the following schedule. Stimulus word, head. Deviation, 12.5 to 14. Reaction word, nice. Time, in one-fifth second, nine. Deviation absolute in millimeters, 15. Reproduction, plus or minus. Footnote. Here we only give the absolute value of the deviation. Its height on the scale can be read off on the accompanying curves, at least for the big analyses. In the reproduction test, the negative sign will be given or the incorrect reaction. No sign means that the reproductions are correct. End a footnote. At the conclusion of the test, the reproduction test is at once carried out. When the subject does not remember the reaction word, or states it incorrectly, or when he has to reflect about it a long time, it is nearly always a question of disturbance from some emotionally toned presentation complex. We then speak of disturbances of reproduction. It may be here said that the complex which causes the disturbance in reproduction need not necessarily be contained in the particular reaction. It may have been incited in one of the previous reactions. It must not be, therefore, assumed that in the reaction where there is disturbance in reproduction there is a complex to which reaction the disturbance in reproduction is due must be cleared up by other means. The analysis is then added after the reproduction test. These can be combined. The figures of the movements and the reaction times are exhibited graphically by the bar method, as seen in the illustration. The original curves are shown on two millimeter paper, one millimeter of the paper corresponding to one millimeter of the scale, and each one-fifth second is expressed by one millimeter. In the reproduction of the curves in this work, the relationships have all been reduced by one-half. In the presentation of the galvanometer deviations, it was found necessary, instead of placing the absolute values on an abscissa side by side, to express also their position to one another. This was done by placing the deviations on the paper directly after their course on the scale. It is only in this way that we get a curve of any real use. The reaction times are shown by the bars, placed next one another on the abscissa. The deviation and the time pertaining to it are placed exactly on top of each other. Faults in this method are easily recognized, but it had the greater advantage of showing the individual deviations directly and clearly, and that is the chief thing. Jung devised a very beautiful method for registering the movements, but it was less useful for our purpose. He devised a movable slide which follows the beam of light on the side. A pulley transfers the movements of the slide to a chymograph. 
This method is indispensable for finer investigations, but it has the disadvantage for us that it requires two experimenters and that it does not give a good general view. 100 associations may take up a roll of paper of almost two meters. The tempo of the test, latent time, oscillations due to expectation. The tempo in which the words are called out deserves a few remarks. The pauses should not be too long between the individual reactions, so as to avoid the interpolation of too many fresh ideas, which are not directly conditioned by the reactions. But sufficient time must be allowed for the positive oscillation which sometimes follows the negative one to come to rest. This takes longer with strong than with weak deviations. I took a middle course by only slightly varying the pauses, waiting rather longer when the movements were strong, but not for the negative oscillation to cease entirely, if it did not last too long. In time, one learns fairly well to estimate how far a deviation will follow from the tempo. If the stimulus word is pronounced, whilst there is still a negative oscillation, this will continue for a time until it changes into a new positive one. The time spent between the occurrence of the psychical process and its galvanic expression is the latent time. Footnote. The latent time can be always observed whether the mirror is at rest or in movement. According to our observations, it varies between 1.5 and 5 seconds if the electrodes are placed on the hands. End of footnote. A further reason for not waiting too long between the single reactions is the occurrence of oscillations due to expectation. If there is no stimulus word for a longish time, this suddenly occurs quite regularly with some subjects, an oscillation when the subject believes the next stimulus word is about to be given. These expectation oscillations can be beautifully exhibited on the chymograph, and they show that these occur as a rule just before pronouncing the new stimulus word. Several such expectation waves can be obtained one after another if one waits long enough. Raising one's eyes from the association formula and looking at the scale often suffices to obtain an expectation oscillation. For the experimenter to look at the scale generally means calling out a new stimulus word, and the subject then becomes disposed to concentrate his attention on the coming stimulus word. In other words, he is in a state of strained expectancy. A concentration of the attention upon what is to come. Layman. Footnote. We shall often have occasion to consider the influence of attention upon the psychogalvanic phenomenon. I refer the reader to the section upon attention in Bueller's book, Affectivitet, Suggestivitet, Paranoia, Halley, 1906, where... Bluller is very insistent that attention is nothing but a special case of effect. End of footnote. It is better, therefore, for the subject not to observe the experimenter. By an approximately uniform tempo, the expectation oscillations are for the most part excluded. When they do occur, they can generally be separated from the fluctuations due to the stimulus word itself, for there is a slight pause between the two. The expectation oscillation often falls a little, so that an interval may be noticed between the two on the chymograph curve. It is then that we must separate this expectation oscillation from that due to the stimulus which follows, for it has nothing to do with the stimulus word in question. It only gives us information about the degree of attention which the subject is giving to the experiment. Concerning the effect of bodily movements and deep inspiration on the psychogalvanic phenomenon. We shall here only consider such movements as change the contact between the subject's hands and the electrodes, chiefly then movements of the hands and arms, but of the legs also, if these are of such a nature as to affect the subject's position as a whole. Such fluctuations in the current 
caused by contact alterations to the electrodes are readily recognized, but they are much more brusque than those psychically determined and display no temporal or psychological connection with the particular reactions. It is often a question of negative oscillations. If a disturbing oscillation of this kind arises, one must wait before going on until it has spent itself. For later orientation, I marked it the appropriate place in the list of words, mood. With strong disturbances, the experiment is interrupted. Not to exaggerate the contact changes, it may be added that within narrow limits, their effect is very slight as compared with that, due to psychological causes. On pressing voluntarily, a little harder on the electrodes, so that a distinct movement of the hand is just noticed. One occasionally obtains slighter galvanometer movements than with emotional reactions when the hand is quite at rest. To produce such strong galvanometer deviations, as many persons make it strong complexes, one would have to press with a good deal of force upon the electrodes. Besides these voluntary movements, which occur when the subject finds his position uncomfortable and wants to change it. Involuntary movements may also have a share. Many subjects themselves admit that they had felt that they had pressed now and then more strongly upon the electrodes at complex than at indifferent reactions. We must not regard this kind of movements as false, for they take place quite regularly at any increased stimulus of affectivity. Footnote. We use the term affectivity in Bleuler's sense. He understands thereby not only effects in the ordinary sense, but also slight feelings or tones of pleasure and unpleasure at every possible kind of experience. End of footnote. And increase the fluctuation set up by other processes of innervation. We here quite agree with Summer when he says that involuntary movements affect, in a remarkable degree, the strength of the circuit. But since we know that in the use of water contact, when the hands and electrodes do not touch, the psychogalvanic phenomenon likewise occurs. We cannot regard the changes in contact of the electrodes as the essential condition for the occurrence of the phenomenon. Footnote. Water contact was first used in these tests by the engineer E.K. Muller. End of footnote. Besides increased pressure on the electrodes, the movements of the muscles may also increase the galvanometer movements by exciting the activity of the sweat glands. C.P. Dubois Raymond's experiment and its interpretation by Herman. We are not always justified in regarding what occurs at deep inspirations, laughter and coughing, as faults. We must distinguish between those which are entirely accidental, caused by fatigue, and those that we must regard as complex indicators, standing in close relationship to the affectivity, like the involuntary increased pressure on the electrodes. This occurred very noticeably in a young lady who, whenever she could not find the reaction word, and young has shown that this is almost invariably due to emotion, heaved a deep sigh. The complex reactions in question are strongly shown on the galvanometer curve. Very deep inspirations can so affect the strength of the current that as the whole thorax rises, contact with the electrodes becomes loosened. There is then a brusque negative oscillation. That seldom occurs. Much more frequently, the deep inspiration, sighing, works by and through the emotional tone only which produces it. The emotional tone connected with the sigh can act more powerfully upon the physical expression of that feeling than the sigh by itself would have evoked. But if the sigh is rather accidental, do say to fatigue, it can itself produce a strong emotional tone by reason of its associative connection with ideas of grief, anxiety, worry, etc. That a sigh does not affect the strength of the current, apart from its accompanying emotional tone, follows from the experiments of Jung and Peterson, 
who often cause their subjects to make deep inspirations in quick succession. The first inspirations produce strong deviations. The succeeding ones were smaller and smaller. The last of all, again, became large as the business began to be disagreeable and wearisome to the subject. Passometer changes, evoked by inspirations, are therefore no criterion for the occurrence of oscillations. The deep inspiration behaves exactly like a psychological stimulus. In one of Jung and Peterson's cases, the excessively large deviations in deep inspiration were caused by the reawakening of the subject's fear that he was consumptive. The systematic repetition of one and the same stimulus shows very neatly that it is not the perception of the stimulus itself, but the emotional tone connected with it, which affects the psychogalvanic phenomenon. If the emotional tone of a sensation, e.g., pricking with a needle, can be reduced by frequent repetition, there is no oscillation of the current. What is true of sensations is also true of presentations, as shown in the work of Farragut, and in the experiments made by Jung and Peterson and by the present writer. The material. Our subjects were educated and uneducated men and women, doctors, students, male and female asylum nurses, and three male patients, two of whom were found to be mentally sound and discharged. The third did not show any disturbing deviation from the normal in those experiments. One female subject was an obvious hysteric. There were in all 23 subjects with 2,160 reactions. The smallest number of reactions in one subject was 20, the largest 200. As a rule, between 50 and 100 associations were carried out. With some subjects, second experiments were carried out on different days. End of section 48